It has all been coming down to this. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with the passion. Oh my word! What an incredible moment! We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with the passion. Time short, no time for the action. Be the first and last out, make it happen. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with the passion. Time short, no time for the action. Without further ado, let's get rolling. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship. We are in the March monthly finals in the EMEA region, and I could not be in a finer place to be. Let's start with yourself, Trav. Great to have you back. How are you feeling for today? I mean, no wonder we're in a fine place, Ark. You're in my company, so I mean, it's always going to be a good day. Isn't it? Oh, wow. I'm back with some EMEA today, and I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely so. Teddy, yourself, great to have you back also. How are you feeling for today? And then teams are kind of catching your eye so far. Uh, honestly, all of them. Honestly, all of them. Maybe BHS might catch my eye a little bit more than others just because they've been looking particularly good the last couple of weeks. But, dude, I'm thrilled to see them all at play today. EMEA always delivers. Let's take a look first today at the format. In case you are new, perhaps, to the streams, this is how it will be going down. The power match format in-game, of course, the picks and the bans of that drafting process. Very, very important to get right. It's going to be an eight-team single elimination brackets. And, of course, best of fives uh, for the quarterfinals all the way through until the grand finals. That best of three, best of five, of course, as we all know and love, is going to allow teams that little bit of a chance to call themselves back if they do find themselves falling behind at that first hurdle. Here are the leaderboards for the this region and how things are shaping up to be. At the moment, we can see that Zeta, Reply Totem, and Now or Never are in that world's finals, locking themselves in positions there. A&R, Amapentezi, FA, Mr. Dosa, and Team Kesso are potentially in a position that they could be able to go to the last chance qualifiers if nothing changes from what we see. Of course, the points are going to fluctuate throughout the year, so don't expect to take any screenshots of this just yet, but it gives you some idea as to how the region is starting to shape up to be, Trap. Uh, definitely so. I mean, you know, it can not only shake up throughout the year, but throughout today as well. We've got a lot of these teams here, and a lot of them aren't as well. Here are the teams that are here today. A&R versus BHS will be what we kick things off in the quarterfinals with. After that, we'll have Now or Never versus Foot Esports, which is going to be an absolutely incredible game. Reply Totem versus Mr. Dosa below that. And then finishing things off in the quarters will be Zeta Division versus Ammo Fantasy. It's looking like a very, very stacked day. Cannot wait to see the first match get underway. But first of all, uh, you've got to make sure that you are logging in to event.brawlstars.com if you're watching at home, guys, because that is where you're going to be able to earn those in-game rewards. And by getting your predictions right, you'll be able to work your way through those tiers, gain those all-important in-game assets that you can then flex upon your, uh, upon your teammates and flex upon your oppositions, of course, as well. Let's take a look at what we are saying on the casting desk to give you guys a little bit of a helping hand here. And, you know, uh, guys... Uh, I gotta be honest, you know, it's, it's about time I've called you guys out on this again. You're copying my homework for another month. Teddy, explain yourself. Well, there is evidence, Ark, that someone here recorded their predictions a week ago. And to be fair, <laughs> if I recorded them today, I may have changed the first one ever so slightly. We were discussing this together just earlier as well, where BHS have been looking better than ever. So maybe they might, uh, you know, make a bit of an upset here against ANR in the first quarter final. For the esports reply totem, Zeta Division, all looking really strong in general and, and top competitors for this region. Yeah, I'll be honest, those first two matches for me look to be the ones that could very well be upsets there. So, you know, place your predictions carefully and don't come crying to us if we uh, don't quite get it right on the day, as sometimes that can happen. But nonetheless, this region is obviously one trap that can provide a great deal of unexpected surprises along the way, right? I mean, definitely so, and especially with a match starting off like this, this, as Teddy said, is probably one of the most unpredictable matches. Definitely these first two seem could go either way. NR and BH, BHS just both looking on pretty much top form at the moment, and really anybody could take it, and the, the region as a whole. We've got teams who aren't qualifying to this stage. SK Gaming, Navi, Queso, all this month not making an appearance. It goes to show how competitive and so uh, kind of all over the place this region is. 
It is very exciting to see Trap. Sadly, though, we're going to have to be waving goodbye to yourselves as me and Teddy will get underway with this first matchup. It's going to be A&R versus BHS, Teddy. And uh, let's think, first speak about A&R because for me, I've got to say, this is a squad that have pulled out so many surprises at the start of this year. They are the team which did qualify in the Season 2.5 of the Snapdragon Pro Series to earn themselves a place to go to Tokyo, Japan for Masters. Rama, Mavis, and Nob, as well as Alex on the sidelines as well, and Philip. They are really flying at the moment this year, Teddy. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy because it feels like every single one of those players, they just didn't quite have their time to shine in their previous rosters. And I was A&R. It's been quite a fantastic start of the year. They qualified for both first monthly finals as well. So right now they're on quite a bit of momentum. And if you guys watch my predictions, I had them winning it all. Wow. Oh. There are positions, BHS as well, our team, which you cannot underestimate. We may even not have seen Jetton and, you know, Sky for a while, but Blacks as well and Cyclone uh, to join the mix. Uh, Cyclone's been playing phenomenally recently. I mean, this was the team that almost knocked put esports out of the grand finals of the Kesso Cup monthly playoffs, and it was such an exciting back and forth affair. It was BHS that really climbed their way through that lower bracket stages to then go over to face, but they got the bracket reset. But they were not able to secure the overall win. Nonetheless, Less, do not underestimate this team. Uh, they may have been away from the forefront of the scene for a bit of time, but you know, uh, pretty much as long as uh, Jet and Spears growing in the last time I saw him, to be fair. Um, but nonetheless, uh, any team that for me are able to really take foot esports all the way in this current kind of climate that we are in in this EMEA region uh, deserves a lot of notoriety. Yeah, I, I think that for BHS, it's kind of only a matter of time until they come back to, to the top, right? They've had a quiet year in 2022 for the most part. Black Sea, not the greatest history, was Team Queso. And as, as you said as well, uh, on the side of Sky and Jetton, it was a very quiet year. But they've been looking better than ever now. And I'm kind of hoping that this is their breakthrough for 2023 and that it happens this early into the year. But it's not quite certain just yet, and I think that's why most of you guys, and as well as us for on, on the casting desk, went for a and R. They've just been a little bit more solid so far in the early parts of the year, but I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw BHS cause an upset. Well, fans are in. Eve, Abit, and Bonnie on the side of a and R and Penny Grom and Lola on the right side for BHS. I do feel like the vote and the poll over at event.brawlstars.com might not reflect necessarily what we're going to see go down here, just based on what I saw the other day from BHS, but going in with the early, very early draft there of the Nanny, and there's obviously a very versatile one on such a long-ranged map, so I don't mind it. Nonetheless, coming in now, a and got the chance to maybe draft here at B. I think that's a, a, a pretty solid shout, just the eventuality of having some more versatility. We've seen Colt coming through as well on Bridge Too Far. I don't want to mention it too early on, but it's more of a later draft. I I'm not a fan of it, I'll be honest. If we do see it here, whoever's playing it has got to land those shots. Max, I feel, is a much, much safer idea. And that's the way to start things off for a and Just to follow things up shortly as well. And I've got to be feeling Calette here will be a solid shot for them to try to secure maybe something of a Brock to be able to break through the mid. It's going to be Brock as well. Quite like that from a and And now be just for a chance to respond. I like to Brock as well. Despite not being able to fully open the mid with the unbreakable walls now, you can still open about half of it, and there can be more than enough. Plus, Brock in general as a sharpshooter, is he's going to be your highest damage dealer on the safe. If you manage to win your lane, it's massive uh, amounts of damage with the fire that just sticks onto it. You can really capitalize very nicely. So I, I like that approach quite a bit, especially ma ma matched up with that. Um, with that max on their side of things uh, as it will just ensure that there's no max speed which can be really annoying when you try to hit someone as a brock we'll see bell and otis to complete the comp here for bhs pretty standard brawlers here otis not necessarily my favorite on this map as i do feel like it, it lacks a little bit of range and utility uh, in my opinion but it, it works we've seen it before i'm a bigger fan of something like love personally but rt here is going to be very new <laughs> for me and i'm really excited to see how that works out i i, I don't know whether i share your excitement teddy <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'll, I'll approach too far 
I'm not too convinced. I mean, ultimately, there is the chance to have a bit more additional movement speed when it comes to RT. It's definitely an interesting brawler to have as our first match in the AMU region. We saw it once, I believe, already today uh, in the APAC region, maybe even more than uh, once, but it definitely was the first time that I saw uh, RT being played out. Um, but I just did not expect to see it on this kind of map. It doesn't really kind of cater towards those kind of you know, brawl ball ideas when you've got the coverage in such a way that you can really have a choke point. But maybe not be able to be able to have something on the mid range uh, side of things to be able to then juggle his, you know, uh, oh, it's kind of weird and confusing when you've got the terminology now for RT coming into the mix. You've never really had this brawler before. Um, having half of your body placed on that sort of mid to uh, middle range tile and then be able to suppress that middle middle range but so far so good it's already though a good start healthy lead so far for bhs six percent off the mark and now people coming in as well laxi there tp's in gets to take down as well and more damage raining down uh, so far the more standard ideas working out just a little bit better here but it's only three percent so fairly equal all things considered i'm kind of wondering if the rt might be played a little bit uh, in the way of Bonnie would on this map, where you basically just jump onto the safe and deal massive amounts of damage, uh, even though you get sacrificed pretty much. Obviously, you can't jump as an RT, but same idea of like getting to the safe and then popping that super, getting massive amounts of damage, and then getting taken out. Not sure what the approach is gonna be here so far. Nob is still gonna be sitting on that super, and that makes sense considering there's just so much of a range gap uh, between uh, his super form and Black Sea on that Nani. So far, his NR was just a little bit of a lead, but 6% can very quickly be turned around. Walking okay, right in from Rama. Picks a little bit onto Jetson. It's the mid range where he picks up onto the Cyclone, which is really where it lands the mark. TP in from Black. He does clear him up though swiftly and more damage to rain down as the base race continues on. It does seem though, like not got a great deal more value for his time. 50% now left on. Their opposition is safe and A&R in a good controlling part of the mid. Maybe this is a bit low here on the left and the people's considering to go for it. Comes back around now and Black Sea is able to get more damage into the safe to try to bring back this deficit. Not that Chukin to perfection on the right hand side. On the left though is Jetson who goes down and that's going to bring A&R further towards their safe to be able to gain back more control over this game. Yeah, that's a great super as well from Rama. So far, NR was quite a massive lead and with 15 seconds left, there's only going to be one more chance here for BHS to attempt to break through, get towards that blue safe and close the gap. Five seconds left, it's just not going to be happening as NR take down the safe and wizard the first game. Solid stuff, a good awareness when it came to both the aggression and the defensiveness of how they were going to play it out. I'm still a bit on the fence with the RT, to be honest. I mean, it's definitely one that's not serving too much of air when it comes to the super. The legs are not really kind of uh, helping out in any way, but A&R clearly quite confident in the long range to fare. And not to be fair, to his credit, didn't seem to go down very much at all. So let's see whether he can keep that up on that right-hand side. Though. Maybe it's with a face shift there, just to try to win this dueling battle, the 1v1 between himself and Jet. And oh, it's gonna be close to the second one as well. And he will get the actual trade for it. But nonetheless, that is two gadgets being utilized there. He's only got one left. All right, now the start is looking quite fantastic for a and 32% in their favor very early on in this game. A beautiful gadget popped by Rama. Claims a kill. Rama finds a second, and that's going to be the rocket rain to follow up onto the save, which is already below 25%. And that is just a phenomenal way to kick off this game for NR. Big damage rolling in, isn't it? 37% left, and surely maybe some damage gear as well. No shots for a defense. That was far more convincing. And that is a dangerous thing when you consider that a and were able to make it look easier and easier as time went on. It's not really a great sign, is it, for BHS in that first set? But nonetheless, a chance for them to recoup and kind of figure out where things went wrong. For that, in terms of the draft, though, a and had a pretty good handle on things when it came to the meta of that particular map. It's going to be an interesting thing to watch RT and you know, how it finds its place. I, I still feel like the, the best game mode for RT is by far Brawl at the moment. But if you're able to kind of land those long range shots, you know, having that additional damage to be able to you know, capitalize on goes a long way. Yeah, I mean, they made it work quite fantastically, to be honest. I'm still not entirely sure if they found the most value of it just yet. Uh, but 
again, they made it work, so who, who are we to judge at this point? Uh, we did see once the interaction where he went onto the safe with his super and just got that burst damage and went down as a kind of like tease towards uh, in, in the early stages of this set. But even then, I think you only got about 15%, which is a decent amount. But if, you know, it means that you go down with it, it's not necessarily always the best move. Not entirely sure about it just yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing RT kind of uh, develop its place and, and cement it further into the meta. Well, I see the stats there as well say very much the same story that we saw play out. It's not always the case when it comes to Heist, but it was definitely a great deal more takedowns on the side of A&R. 7-7-5, seven, seven, and five. not just the lowest, but regardless, Nob's score was basically the same as Jifferson's and Black Seas combined. There's only a total of eight takedowns for BHS, so definitely that was where the weak points were. They've got to be able to try to stay on their feet a little bit more. Bouncy up next for Shooting Star could be very much that map and mode to do so. As uh, the long range affair, the chance to try to stand on your feet and just get that final moment push that might be able to swing the game into your favor. Definitely... We've seen a meta forming and shifting when it comes to shooting star, telling the sort of favorable buff that we saw to Byron is bringing him a bit more into the mix. Seems like Foot really loved to combine Byron with Leon and Jean here on this particular map. Max Band though and Fang, I do like those bands from AR, blocking out some very aggressive ideas early. Seeing the nanny coming in first on their side of the field again, and I don't necessarily mind it. It's uh one that has a great deal of you know utility and can obviously apply a great deal of pressure, but it wouldn't necessarily be my first pick, is to be honest. Yeah, I I kind of still like it to be honest. It used to be, uh, you know, pretty much the emblem emblematic first pick for for shooting star because of the Piper. But Piper is banned here anyways by BHS, so I wouldn't say it's quite as necessary. And I think BHS so far a bit more in line with my ideas uh, of of the meta on this map. It would never mind. Uh, I was going to talk about showers and how important they are that BHS banned two of them and pick uh, one as their first pick. But now they go RT, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, what I know about the meta anymore because it doesn't necessarily feel like a map where RT would be ridiculously good either. But again, I'm I'm all down to see it. AR made it work earlier on Bridge 2 4. I'm sure BHS could make it work here. All coming in as well. I mean, it's just interesting to me that like we've seen well two sets, we're about to see the second set play out, but Every set we've seen RT, but not on the bands yet. And I'm pretty certain that in APEC, we only saw it once all day. EMEA clearly really taking this particular brawler, regardless of, you know, when it comes to your ability to have much of a super. Um, and Sprouts, an early draft as well from BHS, is a very risky thing because it's a great deal that can then come up from it. And the call is a great way to counteract that. So I really like the way the a and drafting this. The flying hook can just come in and just cause so much issues for, for the player to have to deal with Eve be the third and final pick there for BHS. Not a bad one. I just don't think it's necessarily a great one. And it just feels that so far, a and have just got a better handle when it comes to the draft. You know, getting that gene locked in as well is such a crucial thing to have. Having just everyone able to heal off the back of the magic puffs and be able to you know, maneuver around the map at your will and just try to time those runs, try and provide support for the Carl and getting a magic hand takedowns combined with it. There's a lot of synergy when it comes to what a and brings to the table here. Yeah, I agree. A and R winning, go, going just a little bit more standard here, and I think dealing very well with how dominant Sprout can be on this map. The Unbreakable Walls make him uh, one of the top picks here with Tick, in my opinion. But it is very vulnerable to Carl and to Gene, so I really like that idea of A and R to instead of necessarily going with the meta, countering it instead. Let's find out how this actually is going to play out. This, we will be seeing the Carl down in the mid and Rama playing lane, which honestly. I really don't mind at all. Sure, Gene is more traditionally going to be played out in mid, but on a map like this, it might just find better results on the lane because it's a bit more open and wide for you to you really utilize those splitting shots. That's good pressure so far on the right-hand side from Cyclone, just pushing his way forwards here. Laxy as well. Oh, that's a great magic hand there from Rama. Beautiful stuff. And the heals coming in. Keeping Nob able to go on the aggressive there whilst he's able to heal back up to the back of it. Three star lead now in that blue star, but position power is not with them. They do need to try to get a takedown. You have to push back upon the map and BHS is credit. That's what they were able to do is stay firm. But there's a flying hook that I was mentioning earlier. And the wall is not a great one. Maybe it's able to get the takedown there. And Black Sea falls to him. Beautiful trade from Jenon to try to close the gap just a little bit. 
save face for BHS, but it's still two stories in favor of ANR. Peep is going to be heading towards Cyclones, finds the connection, but not quite the kill just yet. Cyclone has yet to really make use of that super. Do have a Sprout Wall to maybe combine with it, try to remove some of the angles and close the gap. A miss pull from Rama could be huge value wise here for BHS to try to push up close. Rama is low HP. They have the blue star inside of B BHS. Mebius forced to super to create some space and it pays off as ANR are back now with four stars in the lead. I would say a turn around here. There's five of the chest in there. Solar has to jump away. He can't really contest the situation now, but the seven stars, the six, but the nine there from Mavis will bring ANR into a better spot to be able to survive on. And that they do. Great stuff. But that is where we've seen a bit more resolve being shown finally there from BHS. As that could have gone a very, very different way. Just a few takedowns here or there, or that shot that didn't quite land on the side of ANR, and it would have been a game and they do desperately need that to start to gain back some momentum here as ANR are starting to run away with things. Nice flying hook there straight away into the mid from Mabius and great pressure onto Black Sea already. Big shots on the right from Rama and despite the push coming from BHS, it really is just ANR utilizing that to their advantage and just trying to land as much utility early on as they can. More aggression on the right side, this time around from BHS and it's gonna pay off as well as Black Sea finds Rama and was an early lead for NR, gets quickly turned around. For how long can it last though? Mebius is gonna be locked into an awkward position, but the shots don't quite reach him just yet. Surely he will be going down and gives the lead back to BHS. They are now two stars ahead. Let's see if NR can turn this one around as they are gonna be a little bit behind for the time being. Flying hook, oh, that's the best bit of wall. There from Black Sea, able to survive himself just a little bit longer there. Still being pressured, but nonetheless, being pressured is better than losing stars, but that is going to be one shot from Mavis that he has to retreat from. The shield is playing a big vital role here, but the hatching's coming in from Jetson. Might cause a little bit... Nope, no problems at all, it seems for me. And I will stop the healing on the side of Rama, but it's Mavis that's continuing to tap. He's such a dangerous Kyle player at the moment. BHS are going to be struggling to hold this push off with 35 seconds on the clock as well. Going to have to do so. Oh, no. They're popping the return to sender, but not going to get any value for it. But still, this is a dangerous spot. BHS cannot drop their guard here. The Cyclone finding some nice connections onto Mebius. Working them up as well. Rama still sitting on his pool. They know on the side of ANR that one good kill could do it. But they need to find it as we're towards our final countdown oh. now. Cyclone sacrifices himself. He can afford to do so, but Jenon can't. And Mavius is going to take him down. Mavius falls as well. And narrowly, BHS still manage to keep that lead in the end. But it got dangerous. It got scary for a second. It really did. I wasn't sure that Jetson was going to be that person to fall. We should swing the game, but it was a fantastic shot there. I do believe it was from Cyclone as well, just to savor the situation. And oh my word, very close. But that could well be the, the win that BH just needs to gain things back into a bit more of a controlling position here. Big tabs there from Black to start things off and surely not too far away from a wall already. Rather, they really just need to try to get that magic hand as quickly as he can, as it will be the one thing which that we have to have a bit of a deterrent of this arty right hand side lane as Cyclone just trying to land some shots to get that additional damage to apply to the shots that will then follow on from it. But so far, just that singular star positioning power though is all of a well, all of BHS rather at the moment. And a Carl locking in the blue star every game is a massive advantage. Let's see if that's going to be enough as Nob gets tagged up quite heavily, but. Return to sender combined with a couple night nice shots and it's going to be a takedown onto Cyclone on the right side and ANR with a three star lead now. Maybe it's a super as well, so this proud overextends. It could be scary, and still very low, but he's able to pull back. The pull from Rama will connect as well and Black Sea is in a bit of an awkward position. So it's Nob to be fair, but Nob gets to live on because Rama created enough space for him to heal back up. He was trapped in that right side. He does oh. end up going down to a nice snipe from Jenna. That was such a patient play there, but it really did pay off. Great synergy there on the side of BHS. The people coming in though will not connect. 
of anything more than just the indestructible wall. Seven stars, though, to four. As maybe goes in with another flying hook, and is cancelled out there. Beautiful wall again by Blacks. He's just right on the money. But the Asians are behind, still with 15 seconds of closing in. They do need to secure some takedowns here if they're going to be able to take this set. 10 seconds left. BHS going in. Final push now. Cyclone is low, so it's not to be fair. But Mebius should be able to easily dispatch of Blanksy. And it's even going to be a team wipe to close it out. a and R now two sets up. And BHS, they got to wake up. Got to be honest, though, Roma looks so relaxed considering that that was almost the set which they gave away there. Not too far off were BHS from being able to tie things up effectively, but it does feel like a and have just got that kind of cold exterior to be able to keep the momentum shift in their favor. I've got to say, maybe some that Carl was absolutely phenomenal in that game. And despite a and if you were to do like a kind of heat map kind of analyzing uh, side of that last, like the last game, the entire time a and are in the back spawn area, realistically there, which just goes to show that they're very competent whilst being out of position to be able to just keep themselves you know, calm and collected to be able to turn things around. Yeah, they did a really solid job in defense and uh, er earlier in, in the second game, we were able to take the lead and NR had to play more offensively and it was still incredibly close, uh, but that was really the only chance that BHS uh, standard uh, with. And the thing I do like about this whole idea of playing so defensively is that you can't afford to do so. When you have that card that locks in the blue star for free, it means that you will be in defense unless you give away any early uh, kills you will be in defense so you can very much repeat that sort of success and i like that idea quite a bit here uh that is nothing new but that a and r utilized very nicely here and looking at the stats as well mebius you called him a dangerous carl earlier and the stats certainly go in his favor yeah i mean the, the seven kills he was able to obtain were the you know combination of the entirety of bhs so phenomenal stuff from him but going into knockout will this be the final set that we see in this series i mean at the moment the way that a and r are playing it I, I kind of feel like it might be um hopefully for bhs they're able to rekindle something here and start a potential reverse sweep but they are gonna have to waste no time to do so out in the open of course and knockout you really do need to land this draft right it can be very swift rounds if you don't and obviously the band's reflecting some good awareness of the meta here and they are already now, RT ban as well from A&R, clearly already wanting to eradicate that. And this is where a map where I feel like, you know, RT would be able to really hold a lot more power control. Body coming in there as well. Aside of a and their very first early drop, the tick for BHS is not a bad one, but will definitely struggle in this later 1v1 matchups if they ever find themselves in that position. Yeah, it's not a brawler I particularly love on this map and Tick is in a very good place overall especially especially with uh, the thick head uh, gear but I still don't think it's gonna be uh, that convincing on, on out in the open we'll see how it plays out but the Piper joining the ranks of Arno as well and I really like that you know if you play it with ambush you have a beautiful bush that is just perfect for Piper there to shine and you don't even have to go for that star power either it's still gonna be very viable uh, to go for the reload one instead and uh, Bonnie as well is something I do like here quite a bit it's a little bit dangerous to leave it open uh, uh, to leave the B open when you have a Bonnie on your side because the B is gonna quite easily connect those shots and those charged shots are quite a dangerous thing for a tanky Bonnie so I'm not entirely sure about that aspect of the draft uh, and the gene as well here. It has been a staple of our t in the open for pretty much forever. Same for Brock. So I don't mind what I'm seeing on either side. For me, the, the bunny is a little bit more of a, a question mark as well as the tick uh, on the side of BHS. But I feel like both teams have two bros that I really like here and, and two bros that I like just a little bit less maybe. Well, I was waiting for it in the Brock and I'm glad to have seen it. It can really make a big difference to be able to open things up and allow your team a bit of a faster reach into the middle area where the action is going to be obviously happening. But it's worth bearing in mind that Eve ban, very important for me. And they just seem to have a better handle when it comes to the draft today for me. I'm loving what I'm seeing on that left-hand side, but the bans as well really do match up. And there's that immensely powerful breakthrough already from Rama. The rocket fuel straight into the mix. Second one as well to be able to tear off that bush, to be able to then see the pass through a Cyclone and Black Sea. That is exactly what you want to do. And I'm surprised, to be honest, that Rock Pickles left until the very end because you can just see straight away Rama just getting to work. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I feel like it's a, a very impactful brawler to have on your side, and I'm surprised as well that it was the last pick here, but it is in the hands of Anar. I'm playing very passive with it as well. They don't want to feed the tick too much, so they need to be careful. Oh, yeah. Catch a pop just in the nick of time there by Cyclone to tank that shot from Nob. That would have been a deadly one as well. So beautifully done. Rama opens up the left side, tries to find a bit of an opening for his team. As Mebius does have his jump in now, and if he uses it, it better be a well-timed one, as he can find a lot of value with that. Nob is getting very close to sliding some kills with this. Maybe he jumps in. Oh, he gets the triple. Oh my word. Rama will pick up the scraps. What an explosive end to that round. My word. But great place. Maybe it's, it's just so, so dangerous. And I, I feel like this is a player that like, had a great run last year. Him and just a little bit late to the season almost in, in that respect. But this year, I mean, he's absolutely popping off. Yeah, I love the energy he brings out on those aggressive brawlers. Snob is forced to jump back quite early on. Cyclone sitting on that supercharged shot could be dangerous for Mebius, and he does get pulled. That is going to be a free kill for BHS. Rama taking the jump pad to try to maybe seize an opportunity, but really much to be seen there. As ANR will be losing another player. No, just trying not to feed that gene pool. Doesn't care as much about the B super. They're playing very patiently, and Blacksy will get the connection, will get his pool unlocked now as well. And we saw in this round how impactful that can be. So BHS here was two supers carried over in a pretty decent situation. This is where BHS do need to take this slow and steady. They can turn things around, especially now that Rama is incredibly low on that left-hand side. They can't really contest it too further forwards as Nob is there waiting for the tap and Cyclone will go down. Black to the ball as well, though, to be able to counteract things, but maybe it's so tanky. But oh my word, the take head will see to that. The pickup is there. Oh, but as quickly as that, the turnaround as Nob and Rama get the pinch off. Black see 2000 HP and surely will go down here. The, yeah, the shots have got to land on which they do. Oh, that was very close, very close, but yet it is still a and &R which continue to come out in front. Yeah, it feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity, I think. That was a, a game that BHS had a really good shot at taking home. Bounty was incredibly close as well at times, and those very, very close encounters that ended up all going the way of a and &R, at least the impactful ones. Those are binding back now for BHS as it is match point for ANR and Knob off the bat here with a quick two tap onto Cyclone. Gonna be giving the lead early on to ANR again. <laughs> what a tap there from Knob and Jetson is just gonna struggle to do much here. Trying not to feed, trying to find the gas, but he eventually does hand it over to Mavis. And now just this one singular round left, and ANR might be able to take themselves into this semi-finals. Again, off the bat, Knob was a great connection. Nearly finds the follow-up onto Black Sea as well. Homemade recipe coming in, but not going to find a connection. As Mebius was a little bit aggressive on the right-hand side. We'll get punished for that. BHS forced to fall back just a little bit because the HP count wasn't too great across the board. So far able to play it still safe, and Rama finds yet another great connection there, and pick up for ANR with the round advantage and the three versus two ANR looking really really good here yeah roll over there with the thumbs down and knobs sharing a little tear for VHS this is could well lead to their demise as the gas closes in now as well amplified shot to cycle is somewhat of a saving grace but he does collect the slow but the jump surely there inbound as Roma gets to take it on to Jess and one more jump in from Mavis will surely seal it there and AR move on to the semi-finals what a way to do it as well for AR with a 3-0 scoreline did lose some games here and there but it's still six games won two games lost and Rama is a uh, Got to be quite excited about that result. As honestly, we said it earlier, this was a tough call prediction-wise for us. And AR, they really did not like that. I don't think they went for a very convincing result. And I, I said two games; it was one game. 
uh, uh, for BHS, but still, I mean, what a dominant result here for NR. Shockingly dominant one as well. Yeah, it just felt to me like AR just had the aggression, but also the drafts to back it up. What a great play there from Mavis. And again, I've got to feel like he's surely going to be the MVP of this one, but he just was just popping up at every given opportunity, really. And But again, the, the aggressiveness of this team, the drafts to match. And BA just didn't play badly, I don't feel. And especially, you know, looking at their performance you know, earlier this week, they had some great matches in, in the Keso Cup. They really, really did. Taking foot esports all the way in the grand finals, but AR dare I say it, made it look just a little bit too easy. And I feel like, you know, what are a team that many have been out underestimating now, maybe their eyes are starting to, you know, open up to the fact that AR are a serious threat this year. Look at the stats again. DPS, pretty balanced all, all around, but the that same story about the kills being always on top there. And AR just absolutely knocking it out of the park. Again, this was a team that did qualify and, you know, take it all the way at the Snapdragon Pro Series 2.5 to lock in their place to go to Tokyo, Japan to watch from the sidelines. But MVP, surely, surely over at event.brawlstars.com. Don't let me down, guys. Don't let me down. It was going to be Rama. <laughs> I'll let you guys off. I'll let you guys off. But I'm <laughs> going to give a huge shout out to Mavis because he was absolutely flying. Yeah, maybe this is my MVP as well. And I love that you use the word flying <laughs> as well because you had some, some pretty nice flying hooks uh, earlier as well on, on Carl. So uh, you love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, but uh, Rama played a fantastic series here as well. I, I, I think that the AR were just not as challenged as I wish they would have been in this matchup. And don't get me wrong, we all predicted the AR to win here, so they were the favorites. But still, I, 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 I want to see more from BHS, man. And as you said, in Queso Cup, I feel like they showed that they got what it takes. But again, this monthly final is just not quite going to be it from them. And it's going to be a little bit of a disappointment on my end. But nonetheless, got to say, I, I, I for one agree to Teddy as well. Rama getting MVP there, absolutely loving it. <laughs> He's over the moon. You guys have made this day whilst breaking my heart at the same time. But great to see a big smile. And again, you know, it's fantastic because, you know, Rama last year, obviously it was a, a tough one. I thought they put on a great performance, by the way, at the World Finals up against Zeta. Um, but, you know, it's great to see a smile back on his face because ultimately, you know, with that roster change, you know, with a lot of uncertainty in the air, you know, at the early stage of the season, you don't necessarily know how things are going to go, but it's been a flying start for them. And, uh, can be happier for a &R guys. But uh, you guys over at event.brawlstars.com, despite maybe going against my MVP prediction, hopefully you went with our prediction for that last game and got lucky on that because I thought that would have been a lot closer, Teddy, I've got to be honest. Yeah, very much the same here. I, I really thought that this could go all the way to the fifth set. And to be honest, we were not even close to getting there. So yeah, I, I'm expecting a little bit more from BHS and hopefully next month they'll come back stronger. Hopefully got some good in-game rewards off the back of that one. But let's lead up to our next match now, Teddy. Now or Never versus Foot Esports. And let's first talk about Now or Never, because ultimately this is a team which are very, very dangerous. The last year's former Dogster Lobster roster, as we know and love, more or less. But Luke coming into the equation this year is a real underdog, Teddy. Many are comparing him to the likes of Joker of last year um, and having that big pop-off year. And it does feel like this could be one for Now or Never. They, they've had some great results in you know, other leagues like the Snapdragon Pro Series, but Tom Zizyaku and Luki today looking to make their mark. Yeah, they're a very capable team. And as you said, Luki for me was a bit more of a question mark. I didn't know him until this year, or maybe a little bit from like Twitter and social media, but I haven't really seen him play very much. And so far, I'm still not 100% convinced. I mean, I definitely think he's good enough to be a part of the team, but comparing him to like Joker or maybe even Lena, still seems a little bit stretched for me and don't get me wrong i want to be Provron here i want him to show me why he's being called those names uh, because I, I i need a new joker in my life and he might very much be it yeah i agree i think we can see a little bit more just to kind of secure that idea but nonetheless definitely a player to watch and we'll take a look at foot esports as well in just a moment see the arcade they're just getting himself lined up semantic drage and op of course we didn't see foot esports last month they did not qualify for the monthly finals but this time around they have done just that and many were waiting for it and it was obviously a very tense one and their qualifiers i believe they took humble very very close down to the wire but they were able to secure it in a very back and forth affair 
But for esports, have had a great deal of success. They came all the way to the grand finals of the Snapdragon Pro Series 2.5, but they did actually end up losing that grand finals to A and L. But nonetheless, they had a flying lower bracket stage. But let's take a look as well. A little video package there of Drage and Semantic because you know, this is a team which had so many matches last year against some of the biggest contenders we've ever seen in the history of Brawl Esports. And coming together now as a roster, they make a very, very dangerous pairing, bringing the OP here as well into the mixed heady to really, you know, add that catalyst of aggression to this roster. Yeah, he's going to be some of the freshness here in the, in the competitive scene. He's been here for a while, don't get me wrong, but never really managed to solidify his position in the tier one scene. This might just be his breakthrough year. And so far with Foot, he's been able to find some pretty good success after a bit of a rough first month in the monthly qualifiers. It does feel like they are where they want to be. And I mean, Semantic looking as confident as ever coming into this matchup. I worry, I don't see any soundproofing on the walls there. No, we know what Semantic is going to be doing. <laughs> Neighbors, watch out. 35% for now and ever to 65% of foot esports of those watching over at event.brawlstars.com with the polls. Just for a little spanner in the works, though. <laughs> in the first round of the South Dragon Pro Series, it was actually now or never, which did place foot esports into that lower bracket in the first available opportunity in a sweep. It wasn't a close match, it was a sweep. So now or never have already demonstrated themselves as a team that, which can get the win over uh, a massive organization like Put Esports. But the bands are in, Primo. I think it's a really wise band there. I'll talk about why in a second. Penny and Stu on the other side of things, B, Crow and Stu banned out for Put Esports from a very early draft for Max. Surely OP gonna be on that particular brawler. But the El Primo pick that Semantic brings to the table has time and time again proven to be a really dangerous thing. It's gonna leave Ash open for both sides to consider here as we get through like the more safer ideas to start. Start, but that is a very good awareness from now and ever and a very specific ban for a very specific place all of the team that they are facing yeah i like the bonding here a decent amount it's a fairly bush heavy map so i think the bonding with a speed gear will mitigate for that and just for a little bit of an extra value for that brawl and make it more viable in uh, those circumstances otis paired with it as well will do phenomenally well at dealing with any sort of tanky or aggressive ideas that Foot might have in mind as the mute can be quite a scary uh, thing to face and overall Otis with massive amounts of damage is able to still do very well against pretty much any sort of brawlers thrown at him so I like to approach it's safe but to be honest it works so I don't mind it I really do like the way that things are shaping up now and ever, but these are all brawlers on the side of Foot Esports, which they would like to have had as well. It's a different kind of draft that I'm seeing unfold for now and ever that I've been kind of used to seeing much more like they, they, they just love to pair the max with everything else, but you know, Surge is such a dangerous thing. And I feel like Foot, I've got a good foot in the door so far with this one. What are they going to round up this comp with? That is the question. Could be potentially something like a gene to be able to pair this together. They do need something that's going to be able to blend it. So the Max and the Surge are so aggressive, but some support wouldn't go amiss. Carl going to come in. Really like that. Taking a leap out of the book of A&R, it seems. And that, to me, just feels like the stronger draft already. So I've got to feel like now or never, I've got to maybe bring out the RT as it seems to be the go-to brawl in this particular region, Teddy. And it wouldn't be a bad one here in this particular scenario. I, I wouldn't mind it. I actually wouldn't mind it. I have a couple more seconds to go for their pick. I like the synergy between the Surge and the Carl as well, you know, as Surge is one of those very dominant counters to Carl, and if you really want to enable your Carl to shine, you'll need to either ban out or pick the Surge for yourself. And they're gonna go Ems as their final pick, so not quite going for the RT, but Ems has been a brother that's been strongly coming back into the meta, especially with Unbreakable Walls and the return of uh, tanks at the forefront of it. I, I, I like the M's and, and where it is right now in the meta and uh, it's not necessarily my favorite map to, to bring it out but it can work here and I feel like both drafts are, are somewhat decent but as you said I do kind of prefer Foot's draft just a little bit more as well. Yeah, I mean, the M's can surely cause a ruckus if you get right up into the face of your opposition spawn and poppy super. Got to have it, of course, to hand. And the walls don't necessarily cater to water so I want to see some good pinching on the side of uh, now or never and as a very good start so far as the takedown there and very tried to spawn back in but semantic falls shortly after here 
OPE just desperately trying to gain the soup off the back of this to be able to have some pushback potential. Now healing, which I think is a wise call as Demandic does obtain a stack and will not give over any value there to Tomzy as he came off the invulnerability, but pushing the ball through now. Slightly more, but yeah, scrutinized heavily by Tomzy and Luki who are doing a great job on this left hand side at keeping foot at bay. And so far, it's looking much more favorable for now and ever. Dude, that's an incredible way to start here. 45 seconds in, now we're never a goal up and an incredibly dominant first flight. Let's see if they can repeat that success now. As the ball was pushed back to the center, semantic aggressive goes down, but it's a one for one trade. Luki is next to go down, giving a bit of a man advantage here for Foot. We're not able to capitalize just yet as Tomzy is going to jump in and Drake was a beautiful turnaround here to get that pick up and stay in the mix in the process as Shiaku is very low HP as well and Foot get the team wipe they need. Is that going to be enough to score though? That's the real question. Great push through the OPE there with the, the goals as well to secure it. One minute on the clock and a great moment there for Foot because they were under a great deal of pressure. Big speed coming in now, and now it's now or never, which look a bit shaky to be honest. Tomzy, 400 or 4,000 HP as Luki does have the mute, and that could be a saving grace here. Now, things slowing down just a touch, and that's very crucial because that was dangerous. But there, we're very close to be able to score another. But Samantha getting the stack of the back of that interaction, so come back in pretty much as he left. Still, the aggressive lane continues on this left hand side, and Zaki will get a pickup now. Drage is well out of position here, pass through the ball, and this could well be the opening that now I never needed. Uh, they have a lot of control now in the mid and 15 seconds away from the map opening up. The breakable walls will stay up though, which is a bit of a scary prospect because now or never, they were very nicely positioned to go for a super shot there using those walls as cover. Semantic and Shiaku trading each other out there. This overtime kicks in. Luki looking to use that mute immediately. Does get the connection onto Drage, but doesn't quite have the damage to take him down just yet. And max speed here is going to create quite a bit of pressure this time around in favor of Foot Esports as they are close to the goal, but not quite close enough just yet. It's a big scoring position here. I hope he gets super. Have more shots away. Surely he's always going to need semantic there. Could should be able to jump in on this ball and just secure it now. Or never really are in a bit of a pickle here. Trying to push it forward. So Thompson jumps in with the mutant semantic. Great synergy there. But it's OPE who's able to contest this situation. The left hand side, Luki low. Drage coming from behind as well. And that should be able to secure the pitch they're needing. Wasn't that clean though? OPE is going to be trickling down as well as a result of that mutant. It's just not the uh, kind of position in which they want to find themselves in now. The ball in the mid. I think both sides, unless they get some big takedowns or Thompson gets a jump. Probably settling for a draw here. The speed coming in. The pass through Semantic. Low HP. Can't get the pass. Oh! Oh no! Oh! oh, oh. So close! I mean, the thought process was absolutely there. I don't think the shot was there either. I mean, he obviously missed the angle, but I'd love to step back on the replay to see whether that was a potential goal there. What a play from him. To pass the ball to the wall to gain the super that he needs to make the shot was an absolute big brain play. I thought it was a lovely idea. Now, the execution may not have been flawless, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's not quite going to be a goal. <laughs> Early on into game number two, technically a repeat of game number one, I guess. It does seem like now we're never getting pretty much just as good a start as they did in the previous one. With full on mid control in their favor, just sitting behind those unbreakable walls now. Mr. straight will unlock his super, which might help him open up the situation if need be. I've got to say, I'm really impressed though with Zaku on this M's pick. He's really making it work against a, a tough match for the right hand side. But look at this OP left all alone. Nothing you can do against the three versus one on that left hand side. Great stuff. And now, whenever again, that early outset goal they want to have to keep the pressure on. Semantic does pop there, the power surge, and we get too much value for it. OP on the right hand side going is super aggressive on Zaku, but he stays alive. Dre, so in the meanwhile, on the left hand side should be able to walk this one in, and he does. Both teams doing such a phenomenal job at punishing mistakes. Slight displacement mistake. It's harshly punished by their opposition. This time around, it is going to be favoring Foot as they even things out again. Seems like history repeats itself. If you look at game number one, it was now or never was a quick goal, and Foot Esports quickly responding was a goal of their own. 
the same story now, but will the ending be any different? Or are we going all the way to overtime again as Drage finds a nice pick up onto Luki? A chance there, maybe for Drage, but not quite gonna risk it. Would rather play it safe and hold on to their control. Yeah, I felt the same. That was, for me, a bit of a goal opportunity, but I've been playing foot, taking it slow and steady, but I don't know whether now or never other team to play that kind of play style up against. The mute is there onto Drage, which we keep him very low until the HP trickle down with the poison. Good shot from Semantic. He needed to stay alive in that position there. They can just get the ball forwards a bit more now. Trying to get a landed shot onto Zaku because he is the problem here, and he's creeping forwards as well. He's healing the entire time, now able to go super on the aggressive, and now and never in a pretty decent spot. They can get a pass ball through here. This could be a goal opportunity. Yeah, the timing here is perfect for now or never. Super finds some nice value as well from Shiaku resetting semantic on the left hand side and the positioning is right. Luki has a super, goes for it. It's a risky angle and it doesn't pay off as Foot are able to catch the ball just in the nick of time and for now are still safe as Tomzi does jump in onto the right side, finds a pickup, but that's pretty much where this push will end as we're back in a two on two fight in the mid. Oh my word, I thought that that was maybe not the place to put it. To be honest, it was just too close to call. Maybe a bit more to the right would have been better, but now or never, are in trouble. The pass through that semantic Drage with the aggression, but his semantics the one that goes down. They're fumbling it, but can OB get it? No! What a defense from now or never, or was it a bit of a misplace there from foot? That's the question, but mistakes clearly on both sides here as the tension draws nearer. 15 seconds now on the clock. Is it gonna be another draw? Or can either of the two teams find the opening they so desperately want? Drage was a nice pickup. Ope passes the ball up to oh. Semantic. Semantic, yeah, this one is going in. Drage is the one to score it. And what a perfect final execution there from Foot to finally take the upper hand in the series. Oh my goodness me. What a back and forth affair this really is. And. It's just by a whisker, isn't it? It really is. Foot will take that game, but there's so little in it. I think that this will be one to go all the way to a, another game, but let's see how they play it out this time round. It's normally now or never we should get the first goal here in these early out outset moments as the utility needed on the side of Foot's defend takes a while to obtain, but OP now low, semantic just, oh my word, eating up every ounce of that smoke, leaving just Strage alive here to try to contest the situation, but Everyone from now and ever bunching together and just juking every shot that I've got to throw at them. It's really wonderful work to see. Yeah, super pop by Shaku there and Semantic is going to be a, a bit of a sitting duck. He's still alive for now, but eventually they do clear him up. Oh. He's popping super as well, but just a little bit of a tough situation there as Foot early on struggling again. But it is all about the long run they were able to secure in the previous game. Semantic is gonna fall again, and this is looking quite amazing for now and never. Two kills, Ope, low HP, and <laughs> staying away to not feed any more supers. It's now or never lock in an early goal again, but a little bit slower than the previous one, which does mean that Foot have less time to work with now. Also, Drage doesn't win the left-hand side. Semantic really does need some stacks here. He's so and slow and sluggish, he just needs to Having a little bit of a break, but OPE there gets the takedown. Can't really champion this situation. Just thinking about it maybe with the speed to hand, but it was just too low in HP. And the ball now safely to the right hand side from now or never. And they are able to keep it there. They have the lead that they just are able to defend this off this push for a little while longer. Zaku is in a tough spot. He needs to get super to be able to defend it realistically on the right hand side. It's now OPE and Drake will contest it from the left hand side, pushing in hard. Tomsey jumps in, but the face shift there was strong from OPE. Pass through to Drake is there. Pinpoint accuracy from Semantic. The pass through is there as well. Bit of a risky one. Drake didn't want to walk it, but clearly things paid off and Foot will secure it. I think the, the fake trick shot messed with their heads. You know, it, 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 they didn't want to get trick shotted on. And I can respect that. Bit of a distraction there as he picked up a nice two piece. Rage low HP falls down though. And now and never should be able to close this one out. Evening things out in this opening set. One game each. Well, it's a little bit of a turnaround here. Well, it's certainly a comfortable couch there for Zaku, but I've got to be honest, yeah, that was a big sigh of relief there. I can almost feel how he's probably feeling himself to play this one out because it does feel so tense and 
fast pace and energetic, but I love it. He's playing a great game so far, and now I'm never now tying up this set. And it has been a long set, hasn't it? Let's be honest, with some draws along the way, but these are the crucial moments for both sides there, because Semantic really needs those stacks. Now and never really need their utility to be able to defend as the push comes in with the amount of speed that OP is packing. Now, good pressure onto Dresh, forcing him back, and protective pirouette won't be enough to keep him up, but so far, so good for now and ever. But continue the aggressiveness here. OPE with a chance here, but great work from Lu from Luki. But oh, he self defended. Really? My word, he did well. Wow. I, I I thought that one was going in. I thought that surely that one would be going in. Hundred plays from Semantic, but Luki able to stand strong. A little bit of a fumble, as you said, in the first game, as they nearly closed that one out. Let's see now if. There's a chance for now or never to take the upper hand. No, Ope shuts down Tom's East. Semantic aggressive against Shaku, and he just barely finds the angle there as well. Nicely done. You complain about him being on the uh, first stage for too long in the previous game, which was absolutely valid, but he's looking to turn that around quite nicely here in game four. Wow. Well, Semantic now. No. Commanding position with those max stacks available, the speed and the range now, and just, yeah, just take down to Luki. Surely here, a chance. Fresh in a flying hook in, just goes smoothly aggressive, gets the take down there. Oh, beautiful team wipe there from Burt there, will score it. Lovely stuff from them. 45 seconds now for now and ever to make a response to have a chance to rekindle this set. And on a lot of time here for now and ever to work with. That was a draining set already. In the first draw and the second game still going till the last second of overtime. It's a long opening set and now or never it seems like they aren't quite as good with stamina as Fuda Esports are. As they are holding firmly in a defensive position. Ope gets the ball away, is forced to gadget away as well from Shaku Super. Uh, kill there as well, make it a double. Tumsy is low HP and surely Fuda Esports will be closing out this first set with a nice 2-1 scoreline as well. Incredibly close one, but it is going foot's way at the end of the day. My word, I feel like I've just been through a marathon. <laughs> that was the first set between these two teams and what a match we have on our hands here. We really do. This is something special. Great stuff from both sides. I mean, that could have been an hour never set, really. Yeah, it absolutely could have done. I can't wait to see some of the uh, highlights of that game go down, but whew, I feel like I've been through it. Uh, I mean, what can you say? Uh, I mean, now or never did so, so well, and it was only by a narrow, narrow margin that we were able to secure it, but secure it, they did. They'll take the first set. Bounty, Canal grinding up next. Yeah, I, I love the fact that this first set was pretty much longer than our first quarterfinal. Uh, which is. says a lot about the, the, the oh. first quarter final. Yeah, that's a replay. Ah, uh, that was so close. It, did it bounce on, on the side of the wall? I think it did, right? I think it just clipped. Just clipped the right-hand side. Was there an angle, though? That's the question here. I think there no. was maybe just an angle. Oh, but you can't you can't you know, blame him for it. That was such a commendable attempt and one of many moments in that series. Yeah, that's the, the challenge, right? Is being able to do all of those mechanics there so quickly. I, I, I think the biggest chance would have been if someone went down at that moment, right? Then the ball would just end up going through. Uh, but at the end of the day, it just didn't quite work out there for food. It was a good attempt, though. They will take the set. So I'm sure that they'll forget about that for the time being and move on. But it is rare to see a set with this many kills on both sides. What is that? 40, 43 kills uh, on the side of Now or Never. And then for Foot Esports, that's uh, 40 or 39. I think that's absolutely mad. I'm very impressed, Teddy, by your quick math there. <laughs> but that <laughs> does speak volumes, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, that was such a high scoring round for all sides, wasn't it? And just just goes to show that I feel like, as we said, coming into this match at the beginning of the day, we expected the, the first game of the day to go all the way as you know, either side could have taken it. It's the same story here, but it does feel like as we're watching things play out that this could be one that goes to the fifth and final set for sure.
But, um, you know, it's very, very tough to call. We obviously placed our predictions earlier today over at event.brawlstars.com on to put Esports to take this one. Again, a team that we didn't see last month in the monthly finals as they didn't qualify, but are back this time round to make their mark. And they do need to get a victory here for that same reason. But Canal Grande and Bounty, and obviously a very worthy opposition that they are facing to be able to go up against, you know, now and never did appear in the February monthly finals. So it's really up to foot to get ahead of the game here. And we've seen this from them before going with Bali here. They do really quite favor this particular brawler on this map. I do prefer the car pick myself from now or never. That'll be a very easy blue star to obtain quickly. And the bands being Penny there, Max, Janet, as well as the Squeak, Eve, and Tick. I don't know how I feel about this Bali pick from foot. I've seen it work out sometimes, but it's definitely a very kind of bold idea to go with the first pick of this map. A Sprout coming in from now and ever, which I think I kind of prefer a little bit more. You can just get a lot of choke points on this particular map and can also break a lot of the bush. And that will be a key thing for now and ever to be able to see what's lying in wait. But Sandy, don't, I, I actually quite rate it. I kind of rate it. It's not the one that everyone thinks about playing. And of course, the El Primo coming in as the smile of semantic space was indicating that they had something up their sleeve. Yeah, I'm, very interesting things happening all around because as you said, I was about to say the exact same thing. If you had thrown at me, I would have said, I don't mind the barley, but I probably would have valued Sprout over that pick. And now with the Primo as well coming in and, and the Sandy, it's a pretty crazy draft here from Foot Esports. And to be fair, Primo is in a pretty good place all around. He just deals well with a lot of tankier ideas. We'll see M's as the final pick from now and ever, which I don't know if that's gonna be enough to shut down the Primo. It might very much be, but this is a very interesting draft and also one that's really hard to read and to, you know, call who has the upper hand in this sort of situation. Kanan will be subbing in for Tom's deal on this particular match, as players and teams can now do, which I think is a great addition to the BSC. Be able to try to bring back an advantage into your favor. I, I, I do love the way that you know, Zeku was playing the M's in the last set. So if it's him again on the M's, then I'm kind of all for it. And it's very much a kind of more APAC regional idea to have M's on this particular map. But against the uh, Primo, I think it makes a lot of sense. And it is going to be Zeku on that M's. And already, the whole of now or never all you know, congregating together to ensure that takedown semantic to give themselves an early lead. Nicely done by now or never. Semantic jumping in, though. Shaku is gonna go down. Kanan also low HP and OP. It's gonna be able to get that pickup. Still, it's gonna be three stars in favor of now or never for the time being. As for the esports, do have a massive amount of control for the time being as well. And Semantic jumps in. That's a beautiful kill there for Foot Esports. And we had our dance on the barley, but early on, he's already sitting on five stars on top of his head. Yeah, but they've got to ensure that now I never stay on this left hand side because Semantic needs those bushes on the right hand side is completely open. So they're probably going to try and force it now to the right and give themselves that kind of favorable matchup there. But it is starting to show legs on the side of the comp for Foot Esports. There's a big wall there from Luki that will try to break things open. See the crossover, very important to do so as well. But look how much area denial Foot are managing to get. Now they've got the high ground and the lead. This could be much more in their favor. Ken trying to go in or considering to do some on the right hand side, but it should be Drake gets the pick up. He does. 15 stars now to the eight, and Foot are really starting to make things work. Yeah, that's crazy. Now we're never at a really good start, but Foot Esports now was nearly double their stars. Kanan going in aggressively, but I don't think that's going to be enough to get even a single pickup there. Wow. As he does find Ope, Semantic gets to trade, and Kanan, there's no chance for him to get out of that position. Ope will be the one to take him down, and it's still six stars in favor of Foot. Make it eight now as Semantic finds a follow up, and I, I have to say, this is looking quite <laughs> incredible for Foot Esports. So much aggression with their comp and Ope adding up uh, an extra level of versatility with the Barley pick as well. You love to see it. So for many years, uh, it just feels like Semantic on Stew was always what we loved to watch. For me this year, it's absolutely Semantic on the Primo. It's so enjoyable just to watch him absolutely tear it up, but got to give as well a, a commendable shout out to OPE because he was just keeping so much control, cycling supers, really keeping now or never exactly where they needed them the entirety of that game. And 
Here we go again. Samantha just trying to force his way forwards. It's like that's almost the strategy for now uh, for, for esports there. Just trying to you know, earn his super by going down. And they're, they're happy to kind of do so. It's a bit of a risky idea, but it did pay off in the last game. Will it pay off this time around, though? With esports, they really want to lock in a second set already. This is on paper quite a closely matched encounter as semantic jumps in is that enough to take down kanan he does take him down with the fire from his start power but ever so barely semantic himself is gonna be falling as well and so far it's a very different story as shiaku has been able to shine so much more it was ope that shined through the first part of game one and now it's shiaku already with six stars to his name and semantic will be able to find a one there onto luki as the wall breaks open, Shaku just finds another. He will go down eventually, and that closes the gap as Kanan goes for a bit of a kamikaze play. And it's only three stars now. Make it only one star in favor of now or never. What a turnaround. This is huge. With 40 seconds on the foot, it's plenty of time as well. OP is going to be a little bit cautious. He's got four stars above his head, keeping his range nicely done. But one super from Semantic, one jump in at the final moment, and it could be all over here. And Second set going the way of foot. 25 seconds now. Big push coming in. Opie gets super. Zach is very low here. He might go down. He does. What a turnaround. 20 stars and the blue star. Foot can retreat. Final chance here for now or never if they want to contest this second set. Otherwise, it's going to be foot esports that run away with it. Despite a phenomenal start to the game, it looks it like it might be just that situation. Shaku. Goes for a final play, but it's a double kill for Foot Esports that locks it in, and that's gonna be two sets up for their side now. What a close one! Oh my word, though. They, they, like you said, as you put it, they ran away with it, quite literally. Just able to get that star lead and then be able to retreat and love from Semantic. It's great to see him smiling again and again. You know, we were surprised last month to not see this particular squad make the monthly finals, but. They're looking like they're very much at home. This was the start they needed, but I've got to just bring it back around full circle to remind everyone at home that now or never, us looking so dangerous. I do feel like there is very little in it. The scoreline is looking very dominant in favor of Foot, but I think in terms of the, the skill and what we're seeing playing out, it's only by a whisker, isn't it? In my opinion, at least. I, I think both sets could absolutely have gone the way of now or never. Now, uh, the, the, the matter of fact is that it is Foot that picked up both the first and the second set so at the end of the day they are the ones leading by two sets now and uh, looking pretty good whilst doing so but now or never i mean it, the, the scoreline could have been a completely different story it could have been a 2-0 in their favor it could have been a 1-1 uh, it, it is what it is for now but i wouldn't be surprised to see them you know uh, make some something happen in double swoosh or dueling beetles coming up next and pushing things maybe even all the way to a fifth Although at the same time, I feel like momentum now is strongly starting to build up for the side of Foot Esports. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, start being even more dominant as well. Yeah, do I talk about this? Do I jinx it? I'm, I'm going uh, yeah, to do it. Do I mean, you know, Foot Esports have had their fair share of reverse sweeps recently. Let's be honest, they've got reverse swept by SK Gaming in the Snapdragon Dragon Pro series. They were almost reverse swept by BHS in the Kesso Cup monthly finals as well. So they have had their moments where they've just dropped the ball. Uh, you know, I remember it was in um, uh, one of the highest maps. They played Colt, I think it was, in the Snapdragon Dragon Pro series against SK Gaming. I think it was a bridge too far, and it just went down from there. They have these moments where they get confident and they drop and it's not quite the draft that we're expecting to see from them and it just starts the catalyst process of them going downhill i don't think today is that day based on what i've seen so far but nonetheless definitely something to just keep in the back of their minds they've just got to be able to just keep a bit of a cooler head when it comes to their confidence right now because it is still early days for them it's kind of weird to say that with this roster in the bsc but it is still early <clears throat> excuse me early days this year for them uh going into devil swoosh a, a, a draft here or there could very much go in favor of now or never and we are hearing that tomzy is going to be subbing back in for luki so they clearly got some ideas up their sleeve for this one and different brawlers can definitely make a big change when it comes to gaining those sets I really like your point, to be honest, about the reverse sweeps, because uh, if you think about Semantic and Drage, they're incredib incredibly emotional players, right? 
and that is going to be a huge asset when you're doing really well and you can you know kind of steamroll with the momentum you've built up but it can also be scary if things start going wrong especially as you get closer to the finish line and you know you're already starting to feel a little bit of relief because you are two sets up and that's when you get striked by yeah the 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 cult against sk gaming and heist and things start to really go sideways and i'm not wishing that upon them but i wouldn't eliminate the tot as well as gem grab is a game where they can be very volatile as well you know the right gene pool or the the right flank and what is a commanding lead in gems can quickly become a countdown for your position okay let's do the Janet, the sandy bans there from now on ever it's kind of interesting to see sandy being banned now but it has been the case a little bit more recently since that favorable uh, favorable buff just bringing sandy a bit more into life in the bsc it's great to see bands on the side of foot with crow squeak and otis and their first priority was getting that penny pick interesting for me because it's not the max and that's what now i'm never going to pick up instead and oh it's it's one that they play really really well but it does feel like i've got a bit of a game plan here pam gonna add to the equation on the side of now or never it's a great lane to have absolutely so vision gear too you know, just able to really bring that particular brawler into life and keep everyone on your team all knowing as to where your opposition lies in wait but an amber could change that on the side of, of, of esports if they want to try to break open that possibility we've seen some great spike plays as well from semantic recently and some tankier ideas as well coming to the table sam still here as well ash don't forget that we'll see though they want to choose Colette. Probably Drage on Colette has been playing a lot of that one particular brawler recently and does tend to be one of those moments where he can turn the tide and be going to come in for foot. They want to go for defensive measure, which makes sense considering the uh, nature of the draft and the orderings here. They want to prepare for a tank and not be able to be countered by the ideas on the side of now or never. Yeah, I like to be here as well. I think it can be quite a dominant force if played well. We never gonna have to be extra careful with their final pick because it might very well be their final pick of the entire monthly fight uh. if they don't do well and they're gonna go for byron which honestly i mean i haven't seen here in like over a year so i don't know what to expect from it what are your thoughts i don't know i'll be honest i, I well no i do i don't like it <laughs> it's double swoosh i don't i'm um, uh I was a bit on the fence around it when um, when we saw Foot Esports playing this alongside the Leon and the Jean in Shooting Star, but they really demonstrated that it works. But that is a very different map. This is not that. I mean, sure, the, the tick over time is going to you know shove your opposition in the bush, no doubt about it. But you know, it's uh, it's definitely not a brawler that I would ever really associate with this particular map. And it just seems like maybe that B draft really threw them off, and they just wanted to go for somewhat of a safer idea. But Let's see, I'm open to it. I mean, it's Zaku on it, and that makes me feel confident around the idea. So more often than not, now I never seem to have a, 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 a game plan, a strategy in mind when it comes to the ideas that they implement in their draft. So I'm open to it. So far, it's three gems, and already Zaku gets the pick up there onto Drage. And in the process, he loses a gotcha gadget as well. So one less for Drage and much better amount of control there for now and ever. All right pretty decent start for them all things considered drage was a beautiful super and actually the poison will take him down it's gonna be a one for one trade on the left hand side considering that he used his super that means that well you might be slightly favorable for now or never in that encounter or the gem wise it's gonna be a one gem lead for with esports for the time being as the next one spawns on their side as well they could extend that furthermore canon will see if he's daring to go that aggressive, not quite. As Ope will be the one to pick it up, and Semantic can just chill behind his gadget as Tomzi has no way to easily dispatch of it. And eventually, a pinch there, very nicely timed to take Tomzi down and relieve even more pressure. Rage not quite able to go for the gem he wanted there and doesn't find a connection onto Kanan either. Still fairly even, but for the esports, with just a little bit of the edge. Just a bit there, Tomzy very low though, Semantic even lower. Drage on the left hand side, just cycling with the Gotcha Gadget, but does eventually go down, but the gems are dropped. Zarts for stuff, but Tomzy goes in the aggression here. If Semantic can just close the gap here, gets one for the pickup, that's enough for a countdown. 
They might still contest this mid, and everyone's still healing on the side of foot. There's a huge potential here for a turnaround here for now or never, but not maybe now. On the right-hand side, the takedown is there, and Tomsey is all over the place getting tapped up by Semantic. I don't see it happening, but are hanging on and moving on to match point. I love how food completely messed the timing there as well with the gems because you were right it was a two gem spacing right between the two teams for the most part of this game so if they kept it up like that no one ever would have been able to equalize by picking up two in a row in the mid and make it 10 each but they stole one gem food stole one gem from now or never which meant that they did not have time for gem number 10 to spawn and even things out it was very nicely done there by foot esports and that means that now they're locking in two match points and now or never there's no more room for mistakes anymore yeah it's definitely unlike now or never to be honest you know, looking back at the snapdragon pro series where they got that sweep over for esports in the upper bracket and today it's like the, the favors being returned isn't it pushing forwards now our foot semantic there with the honey molasses onto tom z and there's a nice idea but he is forced back for a second in fact to try to stay alive and he does so in the meanwhile, Drake loses lane again, and that will push Zaku forwards, and a nice cut through there. We'll connect with OPE, slow down his healing, and keep him out of the mix just for a little bit longer. But despite that reload buff that Byron received, it was, I think, from 1,600 down to 1,450. It just doesn't seem to be cutting it for me, and there's seven gems now in the pocket for foot. I, I understand now as well why they're going for the Byron because yes, it did get buffed, so it's not uh, nearly as bad as it once was. And so far, I wouldn't see, say it's necessarily what's letting No One Ever down, to be honest. But it, I, 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 I think that from the top of my head, Shaku's favorite brawler was Byron, and it was one of the brawlers he used to play the most last year. So it's not that shocking to see him uh, rocking it now as well that it did get buffed up a little bit. It is still... I mean, Byron made the swapping lanes now. <sighs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's an interesting decision uh, from now or never. And it, it, there is a counter for food, so either way, they need to find an opening now. Semantic does full, but that's not going to be nearly enough for Skaden is one shot as well. And Food Esports surely should be locking in this, uh, this counter. I think they're looking in the entire series, to be completely honest. Strange, though, is low, but he's not going to be out. He's not relevant to the countdown, and that'll be it. But Esports give no opportunity for now and ever to bring it back. Locking themselves in for the semifinals. Big dubs <laughs> from Semantic. My time machine, Teddy. It works. I, I, dude, you're sealing the words straight out of my mouth, Ark. <laughs> 2018, 2017, like... It, it, <laughs> We, we're back, we're back. Well, anyways, what, what a phenomenal series from Foot. It, the first two sets were really, really close. Oh, let's even gem grab. Like, both games, both teams were like a couple gems apart, really. But Foot East Boy is just able to narrowly out edge their opposition and uh, uh, will do their victory uh, despite all, all I'm saying now. But for the esports, looking really, really strong, and now or never, they didn't look bad at all, which I think does say a lot about Food Esports as well. Yeah, they're looking much, much better. You know, it's taken a while, and still early days for them in the BSC, but this was exactly the start they needed to have after all the work they put into their qualifying position up against Humble in those really eventful moments in those final lens of the bracket to get to this stage. I, I expected it to go to the fifth and final set. I'll be honest, I really did. The way that now I never started, especially, I just felt like they had it in them, but it is semantic that had it in him to gain the MVP status from everyone watching over at event.brawlstyles.com, putting in those votes. And yeah, I think well-deserved, honestly. He really was holding the team together so well and watching him play on that Primo pick as well, whether it be on Canal Grande or wherever, it's always an enjoyable thing to see. And he's really landed it today. All the way in, big El Primo, Elbow drop into the semi-finals. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, how can you not vote for the Primo main as the MVP? Uh, that would go beyond me. So so I, I agree with, with chat this time around, as I didn't in the previous match, I do now. Well, again, hopefully you're doing well in your predictions, guys. We're two for two here, I believe, so far across the casting desk. So hopefully you're doing well as well over at event.brawlstars.com. Keep that flying in. And we're going to go to a quick commercial break now, guys, to line up our next game. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship. We are getting into the thick of things in the EMEA region today. Trav, you're watching from the sidelines. What are your thoughts so far on today and how things are shaping up to be? I mean, in my eyes, those were supposed to be the two closest games pretty much of the day. Never mind two 3-0 sweeps. I mean, we did see a little bit of fight back from now on never in that first re uh, in that first set, should I say, and it really was shaping up to be an incredible battle, but the scoreline really doesn't represent how close some of those games were. Obviously, starting things off in the day, we saw A&R versus BHS, which was as convincing as ever, and as I just said, for Esports versus Now and Ever. Coming up next, we'll Reply Totem versus Mr. Dozer, and finishing off in the quarters, Zeta Division versus Ammo Fantasy. Yeah, semi-finals is already looking very, very stacked. As could the lower bracket side as well starts to form. Reply Totem versus FA Mr. Dosa. Let's first start off with Reply Totem. I mean, do they need an introduction at this point? Let's be honest. But Choke and Baru and Maori, of course, the, uh, the, the, the some of the best players in this region, in my opinion. You know, two straight seasons of champions of the Snapdragon Pro Series and you know, a commendable performance at the World Finals last year. Such a strong, strong roster. And they just look to be, again, performing so well. Surprised to not see them take it all the way last month. Let's be honest. I think many as well were watching and, and just assuming that they would take it all the way. This could well be their month, though, to do so. And I've got to say, I would not want to be FA Mr. Dosa right now. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, at the end of the day, Reply Totem are a team who can take down pretty much anybody. You know, they might have got second last month, but coming in the f in the future months, we've got to expect big things from them once more. Mr. Dozer, on the other hand, the big player has got to be Lenane, really. He can be the difference maker and a difference in team since the uh, since the previous months. Dorian and Salty are going to be joining him, and although they might be a little bit less experienced at this high level of competitive Brawl Stars, they've definitely got the mechanics to be able to match Lenane and bring this kind of underdog team up to light. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> His hair's getting longer as well. <laughs> but uh, again, such a talented player. I, I still wonder how this man has not been signed to an organization, but nonetheless, uh, I cannot wait to see what he brings to the table today. I'm pretty sure, if I think back to the qualifying stages that Mr. Dosa knocked out, I think it was SK Gaming, was it not? Uh, from being able to qualify for this monthly final. So they really did pull out all the stops in that process and uh, they've, they've earned their place here. Can they cause a huge upset today by knocking down Reply Totem? And what is the best of three, best of five? That's the thing here for me. And that might be the thing that gives Reply Totem the edge. We're no longer in those you know, best of three, best of three stages now in the BSC. Best of five, best of threes all day long. And you know, that is a long time to persevere against a team like Reply Totem. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I feel, I feel like it's going to have to be an incredible start from Mr. Dozer, you know? <laughs> oh. 94 to 6. I'll just touch on this before I get into my pub, but 94 to 6 is going to be one of the most convincing uh, predictions we've seen from the audience. And obviously, we were kind of siding with it, and it wasn't this heavy in my opinion, but uh, I mean, I can kind of get behind it for the public's sake. I think I can get behind it, Trav. <laughs> they deserve more than that, surely. I mean, they're still a dangerous team, but it's just this Reply Totem. But there's been times in the BSC where Reply, where Reply Totem have had upsets. I mean, going back to last year, um, you know, it was a stage where they went out in the quarterfinal stages to, um, I forget the, uh, the team name now it was, but they have had some mishaps. But again, this new format being much more saving in that respect. That does mean that they've got to go wrong for longer, haven't they, really? But Gus and Brock coming in, Mr. Dosar, and the first early draft of RT coming in for Joker, bands with Tick, Max, and Bonnie on the side of Reply Totem. Bonnie, Sprout, and Max for Mr. Dosar. I mean, I like RT to start with. He has had some good moments, some good plays. We saw it work pretty well for um, for, for the first team in uh, in, in Bridge Too Far, I believe it was, and it worked pretty successfully there. And we saw it in APAC earlier as well, and they had some successful moments, but at the same time, we've seen the complete opposite, where it's been pretty useless at some points as well. Adding to the Reply Totem comp, we've got that Eve, and we've got the Gene following up as well. And although there's not too much water on a map like this, we've got a little bit towards that spawn section. It doesn't get the biggest amount of value. You're looking towards those uh, babies, parasites to get the value. And obviously Gene's going to be pretty much good no matter what the map. Yeah, it's a dangerous draft. It really is so far. The reply totem. Especially that Eve pick. Grom though, oh, actually. <laughs> that might have swayed me a bit more than I was expecting. It is such a difficult one to go up against. Let's see. 
going in though. This, on the side of Mr. Dosar, it really is getting this pinch that's the key. And ultimately, that's what the Eve is actually kind of more designed to do on the side of Reply Totem. So it just feels like that aggressiveness might be what you know, prevails for them. The Gut Shield is obviously going to be playing a vital component for Mr. Dosar to keep everyone alive. And Salty, whether it be him on the Brock or not, whoever it is, needs to make sure to open up the right areas of the map at the right times to give themselves the edge. It's a relatively even draft, though, I would say, for the most part, in my opinion. I think the same. I mean, as you say, it's going to have to be a little bit careful these breaks because you don't want to break up too much with the Grom being there, but you also don't want to break up too little that you're not getting the value that you're desiring. Some of the things over on the right-hand side here is we're probably going to have a little bit of a stalemate between Lenane and Joker. He's starting to pinch over the right-hand side as well, but now he does fall low with a couple of connections from Dorian. Follow-up shots from Lane and Ian, and he does go down. Mario going to have to jump away there. A little baby dropped on the way, but so far, so good for Mr. Dozer. Harry here. Still surviving on, but that'll be the shot to secure it. And already, I mean, it's just not looking good for Maru in this situation. He'll be looking to try to earn a super or at least avoid giving one over as he fires the gas. And he's doing a pretty decent job so far of actually evading these shots. And will he try to champion this? I don't think he will. Just literally buying time. Gas now coming in. And yeah, he'll call it a day and he'll be back to the drawing board for this round or the next one to come rather for Reply Totem. Yeah, need to kind of sort things out. Joker was definitely quite out of position and he started to try to pinch over the right hand side, but instantly punished by both Lenane and uh, the Gus with the pinch that came in. But it seems like Grom's been able to hold his lane pretty well here as Lenane obviously being a capable player. Falls up with the gadget and needs one shot already, but also so is Lenane. He get that extra range with the burst of damage. Paul comes in though. Great connection from Mary and that should be a trade, but Dorian throws a few shots out first and Salty might be able to punish them here. Shots coming in from Lenane as well and the, the Parasite just tanking a little bit. Now following up, Grombum's going to finish off Mori and this is a complete flip of what we expected. Mr. Dozer starting off so, so strong with only Maru remaining once more. What a turn up, isn't it? I mean, let me, don't get me wrong here. Mr. Dostal can't get too overconfident because this can be turned around. I mean, Mario's got nothing to lose at this stage and he will go in here trying to evade everything that they've got to throw at him, but that will be the final bullet to land. And what a, what a start. This is exactly what we want to see from Mr. Dosar. Keeping the pressure on and keeping Reply Totem aware of the fact that they're not indestructible. They are just not invincible. Anyone has got a shot this year. And again, they've got a, a, a phenomenal roster on the side of Mr. Dosar. You can't, you can't count them out. I mean, you definitely can't. They have the mechanics. It was kind of just a question of if they were going to have that team play. And so far with the pinching that we've seen, and it, it seems like Totem are the team who don't really have that team play. Joker kind of pinching in in certain circumstances and putting himself in harm's way, but making that early mark onto uh, Dorian, extending some damage onto him over there as well. But this time it seems like Totem are taking a little bit of a different strategy, playing a different way. And as you said, the pinching is just so, so necessary for them that this, can miss, this might work out a little bit better. We're on the side of reply to him pretty low now as some big shots are landing. Pushing forwards now from the bottom. Lenan trying to connect onto Mari, but he is juking wondrously well. And Joker now full HP too. Looking to earn his super, but again, not feeding into him, not allowing him too many shots because those amplified damages will start to take their toll. And Lenan now will feel the front of that as well as Salty. Gas now is going to push through Maru and that is a concern. He jumps away and tries to place the hatchling down, but the rocket rain on the left-hand side will connect to Maru. He will go down. Salty survives here. Three versus two. Joker goes in. Oh, but the legs are not enough to carry him. And Maru goes down yet again. Is it going to be a straight first set for Mr. Dosa? I mean, it's looking that way. Even when Totem changed their strategy, changed their tactics, it doesn't work out for them. We're seeing a triple lane stack over by Mr. Dozer over the right side. I don't know if that's going to you know, help them or harm them because they're being pushed back pretty, pretty quickly. But Joker pushing up nicely now. Salty got this super in hand and they're and obviously not going to be able to deal with these spawns just well enough for him to not be this low, but terrible position for them now. And if Joker can obviously get in a position to use and plant his legs, then obviously a lot of damage was going to come out there, but chose to go with the Mori tactic instead and hit that pull, making it a 3v2. It needs to change, it needs to change now, but this could be the moment. Let's be honest. Mari would love to get a super for the next round, but he might have just fed actually over to Dorian, but the gas now so far behind things and it's going to allow a lot of utility gained for reply to them because they do need to get the upper hand in this next round. They've got to survive a little bit longer here. Otherwise, it could be a very swift set going the way of Miss Dosar. 
Let's see now. So is lurking. Grumble up. Not going to connect. And keeping then Joker and Maori alive on the bottom left-hand side. So not the start. Mr. Dosa we're looking for here. Yeah, got to be scared of this pull as well. Vengeful Spirit's being popped and finds a little bit of damage, almost taking down Dorian on the top side there. Lenane's low as well, wants to find some connecting shots into Joker, but actually connects a couple onto Mori, brings him very low, and now it's his turn to have to be a bit more patient and heal up, because obviously he can't use those healing buffs on himself. Shots coming from the right-hand side, now it's Salty trying to find some connections, but at the moment it kind of just seems like it's totem changing their strategy and making improvements, and Mr. Dozo just bring the same thing to the table every time, play three people on this right, and it hasn't worked in that previous round. They need to make some changes if they wanted to make it work in that. Now it goes down there. The Magic Hat will only bring back there the gadget. Another missed scrumble from Lenan, but the pressure is the key here. And Joker is incredibly low. Rocket Rain as well will miss, but Maori on the bottom right hand side there. Just trying to survive on a little bit longer. He's going to trickle down now. It's Joker into one versus three. Surely cannot deal with this. And Mr. Dosar with a shocking start. Put reply totem behind at the first available opportunity. Yeah, you see Lene with a little bit of a sigh of relief there. I'm not sure if he even came into this one <laughs> expecting to be playing and doing this good against Reply Totem, but I'm sure I'll be pleased about it nonetheless. As, as I said, you know, before we go into the game, they're a team who are incredibly mechanically skilled. They're going to need a good start and a good momentum boost. Get their heads in the right place to be able to take a team like Reply Totem down. If they take a tough start, you know Lenane's head's going. He's just that kind of player. That's just how it is. In his good moments, he'll be the best player in the world. And his bad moments, there's going to be some issues. Yeah, and I think going back to the Snapdragon Pro Series, Trav, as well, it was Lenan that came in to really lend a helping hand, and, um, you know, it just made the world of difference to any team that you place him on, and, you know, you, you've got to be scared, but if you're a reply to them, they're, you know, they're not a team that are often behind, but they are a team that know how to respond, and that is really where they can thrive, so I wouldn't count them out just yet, knockout might not have been their set to have, but many of the ones to come surely will be. But uh, nonetheless, that is exactly what you want to have to start again. You know, when you look back at that poll, was it like 6% of those watching at event.brawlstars.com went for them? Well, now, <laughs> those 6% are probably feeling pretty happy about that decision. Stats as well say very similar story. I mean, that's, you know, 12 takedowns to the only four of that entire set for a reply to them. And just definitely not what you'd come to expect from a team like them. Yeah, definitely not, but you do have to kind of question whether it's down to that composition, whether the RT was that much of an issue that they weren't able to make a bit of a play out of it or even have a chance in that set, whether or not they're going to be able to come back and have a set. Obviously, you can't fully blame it on that because their draft was their choice and, you know, they're going to have to take the loss because of it. But in a map mode like Brawl Ball, where it's probably not going to be used, something a bit more comfortable with, don't really want to risk too much, they might be able to claw this one back just a little bit. Well, this is a much more Reply Totem based kind of mode for me. Let's see what the bands are. Crow, Stu, and Spike for them, and Spike, Max, and Nita for Mr. Dosa. I think Nita's a very underrated ban here, and one that uh, can often thrive, and the win rates are very, very high for at the moment. So, B going to come in as the first draft for Reply Totem. It's always a very, very solid mid to have, and especially on this particular map, it can have some issues, but I think you know, for me, Surge is a great map for him. And despite, you know, B being a pretty decent tank counter, with the way that this map is situated, it can really lend itself strongly to brothers that can just really force their way through with Poco and heal ideas. Oh, it's gonna come in as a pretty hefty tank counter as well. Mr. Dosa, quite like the way that they are thinking when it comes to this particular draft. But that early lead as well has got to be making them feel good about this. They just cannot throw it away. The max is quite a key ban as well. Taking away that speed is going to be quite crucial here and quite key. Let's see what they add to this mix. But so far, so good from both sides. Yeah, I mean, you can, you're never really going to go wrong with a B first pick, are you? It doesn't have that many counters and it counters quite a lot. But on the same side, Otis is very, very similar in terms of not really got too much that it's not good against. M's on the other hand, though, I feel like it may be a little bit too early for that draft. I kind of like that as a, maybe, a, maybe a later pick against some of those tanks or something like that. But at the same, yeah. Get something like that's going to come out. A Bali against an M's on a lane on Super Beach is never going to go in the M's way unless there's some wall break. But they can add a primo to it as well, which kind of gives M's a little bit of legs, especially when you have those friend zoners early on. And when you use them, you always kind of got to have a super in hand to be able to make uh, make a getaway. But then Gray, <laughs> last return pick from Mr. Dozer. I mean, I don't know. I don't, what do you even say about this comp now? I mean, it's good. I like Gray at certain points. We've seen it work so, so well in NA but it hasn't really been translated to EU2 recently. 
Yeah, I I don't know how I feel about this. Since the nerf, Gray has now come down to a much more balanced place. You can no longer you know, combine with your teammates in those teleportations. It's just basically Gray going to be doing great things. I mean, it's going to be... Sure, I mean, I'd prefer to have the M's in mid here, see, so I'm just kind of wondering where it sits, but ultimately you can break up in the map with the Grand Piano, that's, I imagine, where the strategy will be here for Lanun. We'll see. Uh, no, he's actually going to be going with the walking stick, so, okay, fair enough. It will break the same amount of coverage. Has a bit more utility as well. Mario already feeling the front of it, has to drop a quick healing tonic to bring himself back to life, but... I, 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 the way that Mr. Dosa are playing so far, I'm all for this. It's just not necessarily what I, I was expecting, considering the nerf has brought Grey down such a vast amount. But maybe they got an idea up their sleeve here. I mean, there's no better start for what Lenane had there. Get in the perfect wall break, get in those walls down against Mori. The only thing that can really go better is if more of this map's able to be broken up, but Dorian almost finds a way through there. Maybe with a knockback and a shot, he would have been able to finish that one off, but more, Mario's going to get the jump instantly muted out by Salty, but they're just too, too low now. They're not going to be able to do too much, have to retreat, and Dorian even using a super before he goes down there. Not the best use. A chance here to push forwards. Salty, the last man standing for Mr. Dosar, and just trying to delay the onset. But Maru is a threat. He really is. And if he gets the super away from conceding a couple of shots here and there, it will place Reply Totem in a much more favorable position to try and get this, this goal that they need. And everyone on the side of Mr. Dosar, so low. That's the jump through. Maru will get the double here. No, the mute will be enough. But the pickup there from Joker is there. Mari with the pass. Surely going to connect it. Ah, they will be able to get it. It was a full half for it, but Reply Totem get one on the board at just the right kind of time, really. This control-based comp can now start to relax a little bit and just keep everyone at bay. Yeah, walls back up for Bali as well, and obviously it's not going to be the best for Primo, but he has this jump and he has the ability to go aggressive. Then he's just going to be getting rid of the ball. Actually going so aggressive. I mean, I don't know why he's done that, but now they are going to be punished for it. TP away from Salty as well, trying to find the shots up top. Dorian's got the super as well, going to be slowing things down and actually should be able to stop this from being a goal. But it's just a question of what else they're going to be able to do in this position. 30 seconds left and really not a lot of legs in this game. It's a tough one, but there is a glimmer of hope. Lanun can get a couple of shots and maybe a surprise attack on the TP side of things. Joker low as well now on that left-hand side. But Maru is such a threat. They've got to take care of him. And there's the TP in, but Lanun couldn't quite get it. Great observation there from Maru. It really was. But this should be enough to seal it. Mr. Dostal bringing it back in just the nick of time. And we're going to have to overtime. I mean, with OT kicking in, we've got an Otis, we've got a, we've got a, a Grey. They've just got a B on the other side. against a Prima and a Barley. This should be dominant now from Mr. Dozer. They get the mute off as well. Joker's fairly low up top. He can't do a lot. Gets hit once more. The mute's going to be following up as well. Take down onto the Grey, but that took a lot of their ammo. Four up shots, and Dorian puts it to bed. Mr. Dozer going to take the first game after being dominated. They bounce back, and they play it perfectly towards the end. After all that, Reply to him still find themselves behind. And I, I worry, now I'm starting to feel genuinely worried for them. One more game lost and they'll be down two sets. And I've got, you know, Re Reply to them are not that kind of team that are often found to be that far behind. I don't know how they're going to be able to, like, re recover from that if they were to go down another game here. But... They definitely had a much better start than previous rounds of anything, so there is that to hold on to for Reply Totem fans out there, and this is a pretty good strong arm here. Maori working the left-hand side, and Maori will finally go down the left, but Joker will gain the amplified shot, place it onto Dorian, great stone onto Salty. So there's some good mechanics there still remaining for Reply Totem. It's just that Mr. Dostar just find these little openings, and they just don't hesitate to make them count. Yeah, and he's got to be finding this mute soon as well. Does get it on, I believe, or maybe he just slid it underneath him as he jumped over, but couldn't see. The interaction was a bit hectic, but Lenin going to be able to avoid that slow and needs to get one of these walking sticks off, pull Mori through and get rid of some of these walls, otherwise it's just going to be dominant. They're in such a strong arm position now. Take down over the right-hand side onto Dorian as well. Maru can't be too far off another jump, but it doesn't even matter. Lenin's going to go down anyway. Salty's going to join him back in the spawn soon enough, and the goal gets put in. Deja vu, <laughs> kind of how things started off last time round, and Mr. Dosar had a great deal of perseverance in the situation. Mary still trying to cycle, but Dorian has now fed and supers all round for both Lanun and him. Passing to the left, Mary has 
bit more of an ability to control situation, but this is the TP that we were worried about. Honey Molasses there from Joker. Oh, but he couldn't quite get a shot off there. The Nun survives. It's three versus two now. Mario jumps in, but he's got a jump though. The mute was there as well from Salty. Great work from Mr. Dosa. They're not able to land the goal just yet. Yeah, Mori's missed a few shots in there as well, but Joker able to fend off the left-hand side and just keep them in a better position. Take down over the right-hand side, 35 seconds on the clock. They made it work with this amount of time last time, but they've got to try and do it again. Otherwise, they're going to be taking a loss in this second game of Brawl Ball. Lenane trying to fight back and does need another TP if something's going to happen, but Salty's going to use the one that's already there, and he's going to get hit hard and taken down. Lenane gets the kill, but can't quite get away. Dorian's going to TP up. He just sent Maru to the shops, jump over the top. No way. He forwards, looking for the ball. Needs the help from his teammates. He's got another slow as well. He's cycling. Can they make the play? His teammates are now joining him. Salty's there, but Mr. Lenane isn't yet. TP as well. Can they make the play? Oh, I <laughs> the ball. I don't think the mute's there as well, but just cut short. Mr. Dozer take the loss and reply Totem. Hold on. That would have undoubtedly been a player of the day moment for me, but it just goes to show the awareness of Reply Totem. They are expecting those dimensional doors to come through on the gray. Absolutely so, and just able to intercept it. That was the second time I believe they've done so already. In the previous game, they did the same, and I mean, it's Lenan did it perfect. He really did. That, that was the perfect placement, but just as that broad has been sitting now within the meta for a while, teams at this level, they know that they can see it coming. Joker now with the Amplified Shot. Honey Molasses onto Salty there as well to slow him down a little bit, but Lenan is in such a rock and hard place in this left-hand side, and Maori is just whittling him down slowly but surely. Another walking cane, but it's not enough to seal it, and he will get the trade off on that left-hand side, but it's just choking out. He's got some utility, but this is a very early push for Mr. Dosa. Yeah, I thought they were going to be able to put this one away. Tries to find the shot, but I think that was wide anyway from Salty. Joker did such a good job of staying alive there, but this runs, this left-hand side is broken up. TP from Missile Lane's there again, and this is the start they need. They need these takedowns, they need these walls down, but Maru's on the aggressive. 2v1, shouldn't be able to get too much done, especially with the mute, but a super should do a lot of work. He actually jumped over the mute there and gets both, and I'm just seeing my words. He gets a double kill straight over the mute, and the M's can do nothing. Mario knows, he just knows like semantic. The Primo is in such a good place when it comes to the meta. And the fire burn down there was enough to secure it. And this could be a goal to take the set entirely. Salty low here. More healing tonic coming from Mario. Cycling the super's beautifully last calls all round. And now has got a world of hurt coming his way as well. They're just taking their time because they can just try to just whittle down that timer all they want now. They've got the lead. They didn't have to necessarily even score. Just not lose control. But they're going to surely get it now as well. And reply Totem bring him back to life just a little bit in this series. It's not too late. We might see some energy in a minute. <laughs> I, I, he's just sitting there. He's, he feels content with what he's doing. He's pretty happy, but at the same time, I mean, how well that Primo play was. I, I just said he's like, he can't do anything. They've got a mute. They've got M's gadgets still. He baits both of them and then just gets a double kill and dominates. Like, maybe I should just keep my mouth shut and not say anything for the sake of Mr. Dozer because that was just incredible from, uh, I believe it was Maru on the Primo. I, I mean, for the sake of me as well, Trav, if you don't mind me saying, like, you know, just like, yeah, just that would be bliss. Music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> what a series, though. What a series. A, a great commendable comeback there from Reply Totem. Got to hand it, though, to Mr. Dostar to be able to put up such a fight. And that is what makes this match so exciting for me. It really does, because, again, that poll, what was it? 94 to 6% only in favor of Mr. Dostar, but they are not playing like a team that have earned 6% of your votes over at event.brawlstars.com. They just are not. They are looking far, far better than that. And that could have gone, that could have easily, easily gone two sets in their favor. Check out the stats as well on the board. 10 takedowns for both Dorian and Lana on their right side. But Joker and Mari really did pull their weight. I mean, 12 to 13, 7 for Mari, but it's hard for him to get into those positions and that, that kind of spot to really pop off. But that was a much, much better set for Reply Totem. And this could be the start of something of a turnaround here. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get seven kills, but if two of them are in such an influential situation as what it was, then it means more than getting 13 kills and doing nothing. You know, not saying Joker did nothing, but just giving a little bit of an example out there. At the end of the day, the reply totem, they're bringing it back. 1-1 one, one now against Mr. Dosa, and although Mr. Dosa started so, so well, reply totem, they're bringing it back. They've got some momentum in their hands now, and they haven't put their heads down. And I think that's what matters for them. Now that they've kind of got a bit back, Mr. Dosa might start to doubt themselves a little bit more. 
Yeah, they might have got over the slump, or maybe going into the bounty, we'll see some life return to Mr. Dosar. Not that there was really anything lost in that last set. I think they played it phenomenally well. The gray, for the most part, worked out better than I was expecting. And uh, Lanam played it beautifully well. But it was just simply the reply to them, oh, that class of team, where they can just kind of see it coming a little bit more. There's a little bit less of a uh, of a surprise effect when it comes to now TPing onto those balls. But going into layer kick and bounty next. And uh, this is definitely a chance to be able to shut down some of these big lanes, especially now the indestructible walls coming into the equation. Sprout got to be up there on the bands for me because it's just such a great opportunity otherwise to really slow down the pace and just whistle down your oppositions, but also for some big, heavier hitters as well. And the long range affair is always going to be where most of the battles are won and lost, but it's definitely mixed things up quite considerably so. And there is going to be a sprout band on the side of Mr. Dosa, which is quite good to see. Max and Gene combined to it. Max, Janet and Poco are the bands for Reply Totem. Well, first pick should be coming in shortly. I mean, Layer Cake, we've seen some similar maps, I haven't seen this one today just yet, I don't believe, but you know, we, we have seen quite a lot of squeak here. The bit of Carl comes in, tries to pick up that, that blue star as well, but we're gonna see a tick nice and early on with uh, with Sprout Band out of the way. It probably makes the most sense to take it as the next logical thrower. At the end of the day, it's still quite early, you know, with, with the possibility of that aggression. I mean, Max out of the way on both sides, it brings like less aggression, but still, as I said, Carl with the flying hook, it can be dangerous. Janet flying in and landing on you, also another dangerous thing. But we're actually going to see the RT coming out of Mr. Dozer, feeling confident in that one, but I'm not sure against the tick, really. Definitely feels favoured, more so in this region than any other so far. As time goes on, though, we'll see how North America have sort of taken to it and how South America as well feel about the RT here. But I think it's a decent one, for sure. The legs as well might be able to get a bit more value on some of these side lanes than other maps, but from coming in, I feel is very dangerous. And Emmerich as well going to be subbing in for Dorian, by the way, on the side of Mr. Dosa. Reply Totem do need something of an aggressive idea. Ruffs, I mean, you've got to have the survivor ability to be able to really make that particular brawler work. It's maybe dropped off a little bit now of indestructible walls, but letting over the supply drops to the tick to be able to have more would be a great thing. I, I just feel like it needs a long range approach. It really does. I mean, whether it's a bee, a bell, or something along those lines, or maybe even a Bonnie. <laughs> yeah, that works for me. Ultimately, it's one that, again, this brawler is played more in EMEA than any other region. I'm not necessarily always sold on it, but I am starting to come to it. And Sam, for Mr. Dosar, it's a riskier one, I would say. It can have those big pop-off moments, absolutely so, but it can also struggle to get much on the board. So it really depends how Mr. Dosar play it. I imagine Lenan going to be playing on the Sam pick, I think. He tends to do at least back in the days last year for Tribe Gaming EU, but we shall see who was going to fare well. It's definitely a more control-based comp for Apply Totem, but definitely a more aggressive take it all for the win for Mr. Dosa. I mean, I kind of like that Sam as a last pick. Tick's got pretty much no damage. Ruff's very little damage at close range, and the same with Bonnie. You know, they've already got RT to deal with as well. He's got a decent health pool, not massive, not as big as Sam, but still something. They're going to be taking a lot of shots to try and bring down what Mr. Dosa are bringing to the table, and still, they've got this Grom. If they do need to play a little bit more passively, when they get a substantial lead, they can still play defensive as well. Use RT's range, use Grom's uh, shots over the wall, and already, 5-0 to zero before we even get in. Those are not wasting any time at all, are they? Well, S4 coming in will force Lenan to the left. He's juking wondrously well, pushing forwards now. Might have to reconsider things just a little bit. Not throwing out the goal, there's too much wear. Did he place them? Has he lost them? The knuckle busters are somewhere. Maybe he threw them out too far and couldn't pick him up. Either way, though, it'll be a swift takedown for Reply Totem to bring back a little bit more of the deficit. And let's see. How they respond to it. This is what I do worry about a little bit. If Mr. Dosa get pushed back, this tick and the Bonnie can really start to work well in the synergy side. Lenan's pushed to the right hand side and a chance there for Mari to get the angle. And now Mr. Dosa starting to get pushed back a little bit too much for my liking. Yeah, nice stuff from the Lenano. Kind of baited his little retreat and then stayed in the position that he was and got some heals off his little dusters, obviously. But now just throwing him out once more. 
He's playing this slow game, but he's getting hit hard by those rough things. He's thrown that quite far backwards, going to get the heal off it eventually. But Emmerich not able to get too much done either. In comes the ticket, and that actually might bring him down. No help from the teammates, and Lenane's going to get hit by that. Super coming in from Ross as well. Can he avoid it? Just evades it a little bit. But Joker's going to get the jump in, and there's no trades there from Mr. Dosa. Lenane should be dying as well. Another ticket thrown onto him. 20 seconds on the clock, and Joker's made all the difference. Huge from him, really is. This could be a big, meaty push coming inbound. Great use there of the gadget there from Lenon, but it's not going to be quite enough. They should be able to survive on Salty with 13 HP. Emric as well, really in the thick of it. And that'll be a nice, easy pickup for Maori. It's starting to look better. Reply Totem, not faltering, not falling down as a result of that first set being lost, but picking themselves up, brushing off the dust and getting back down to business. Well, I mean, they just played it so slow. They played it so smart, waited for that prime opportune moment to be able to go jump in, get the assistance from their teammates as well. And I just really, really like what Joker did there, jumping in at the right moment, getting the kills, retreating with five stars. I mean, there's nothing you can really complain about with the play that he made. Lenane, definitely not starting this one as aggressive as last time because we already saw five stars at this point in the previous one. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he really did waste no time last time round, but now really in... A bit of a rock and a hard place. Just, yeah, supply coming down as well. Joke with the jump and the pickup of the stars. Supply drop already with Maru, and that's what you need to have. Having Tick buffed up in this instance is such an important thing to have to keep things under control. You lose that, you might well lose the game off the back of it too, but it is Reply Totem now pushed back. Unlike them to see as Lenan, just gonna heal himself up again, but closing in quickly. Great gadget, will he get the takedown for it? No, Tick head for the win and Salty quickly to follow. I mean, I'm not sure what Salty was doing there. Didn't want to go in when Lenane did and didn't really want to stay out after he didn't. So a bit of an indecisive thing from him there and wasted his super along the way as well. Decided to use it about 245 health. I'm not sure what the decision making was there, but Lenane back up this right hand side and trying to aggress Joker, but maybe he'll get a little bit of assistance off his teammates. He even gets the jump as well. And Lenane can't quite reach him. They'll switch to the sides from Joker, choosing to try to stay alive. And even if he doesn't, he's delayed them enough to be able to win this one out. Eric's got the drum bomb to hand, but does concede a lot of shots on the way forwards. Party recovery still keeping Lenan into the mix, but he's unable to really close the gap enough unless they get really replied to him really far back on those ropes. Gonna struggle to land too much, and especially in this position, Reply Totem can just sit back with the buff and just make it work. Joker jumping in, Grom Bomb won't be enough here. And Anand uses the opportunity to push forward. 10 seconds on the clock, but Salty can't really get the next to the attach. He does get one take down, but not more than that. 17 stars to the six. Reply Totem will take this set and looking much more like themselves. The triple go Totem pins come up as well, and they're feeling themselves now. Definitely looking more like themselves, as you said. And this is what we expect to see from them. This is why it was 90, 94 to 6% in terms of audience predictions and why all three of us went with Totem as well. This is the team we know and love, and we just didn't really see that in the first set. Mr. Dosa took it convincingly, and now they're bouncing back. This is what we want to see. It's close, but just not close enough for Mr. Dosa to really get any games in the pocket at this point. But I would love to see this go all the way. I felt like Mr. Dosa had such a great start. It just feels like a little bit where they're lacking is in their draft for me. Uh, just, just a little bit. I mean, Reply Totem are a team which has just got so much knowledge, so much awareness when it comes to the meta, when it comes to those drafts. And like a lot of the ideas that I feel like Mr. Dosa are implementing would work against anyone else, you know? A lot of teams really struggle with Sam. Reply Totem just show that they can handle it. Uh, you know, the Grey and Brawl similar kind of story there as well for me. But Mr. Dosa have got something special going on. And I would love to see this go all the way because I feel like they've earned it, they've deserved it to get even into the monthly final. They had to fight tooth and nail. And, and many kind of would not expect them to be a team because like you mentioned earlier, teams like Navi, teams like Humble, SK Gaming, these are huge giants in the Brawl Esports you know, machine. And Mr. Dose start to creep their way through, to many may look like a, a bit of a you know surprise thing. To me, not so much because they are playing out of their minds at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was really that much of a surprise. I mean, clearly to the audience it was with a 94%, but Mr. Dozer, they are a team who can take down the Giants like this. And as you said, through the qualifiers, they already did this a few times to be able to make it here. They've had such a grueling process. It'd be sad to see it cut short 
at this point, especially without a set five as well. So I do kind of want them to win this hard run mine and take it over to that hot zone game so we can see even more gameplay between these two fairly evenly matched teams, I will say. And I didn't really think I'd be hearing myself say that today. I thought this would have been one of the more convincing ones. But Mr. Dozer, they've showed up. They've proved to us why they deserve to be here. Now they just need to prove it to us once again and take it to a set number five. Well, I feel like this is definitely a map which would cater much more to the Sam than we saw previously in Lair Cake, but let's see what each side of thinking. The Baron's being Crow, 8-bit, and Stuart. I like the 8-bit Baron there for me. The, Sp the Poco, the, the Carl there as well. Gene first pick for Reply to Totem is a very solid mid, all things considered. Max Baron as well, so he could be looking at Bell mid. Potentially could be looking maybe as well. Bonnie, potentially. It's tough to really say. There's a lot of mids being banned out here. The aggressive ideas will still remain surely in the, those lane sides of Ash ideas and Sam ideas, but Rico as well still available. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not going to be chaos on it, but I still feel like anyone can land it. Ruffs could be potentially a, another idea to float around. But it's the mids where these bands are really placed. Beak is going to be the mid of choice, Mr. Dosar. I think kind of a wise idea just because of the uh, amount of tanks that can shoot their face in this particular map. But um, yeah, very interesting draft from both sides. I mean, that's six unique brawlers being banned out here. So it's going to whistle things down quite considerably. Yeah, you know, I will say I like what Reply Totem have done so far. They clearly came into this draft wanting to pick up that Gene as the first with 8-bit banned out uh, in Crow as well with the slow, with the mobility of Stu to be able to avoid it. It was smart bands coming into this one and kind of seemed like Mr. Dozer expected to, for, uh, for Reply Totem to come something maybe a little bit more aggressive. Uh, with their bands, but Janet's going to be their second pick, and along with the B, it's very, very solid. Janet can't deal with the tanks as much, but obviously B's going to be able to help down one of these sides if they do choose to bring something in, and it has been Mr. Dozer so far bringing those more tanky ideas to the table, but nothing can really stop Reply Totem. If the draft lines up, they're definitely going to be able to, uh, to see it and pick something like that as well. Well, so just going to come in for Reply Totem, which is a really, really solid thing to have. Absolutely so. And Sandy. I mean, it's it's again one of those brawlers which you don't necessarily expect to kind of see because we've seen Sandy drop off so heavily when it comes to the meta, but another brawler which receives a recent buff, you know, with the attack damage being increased. 860 was what it was previously, now to 900. So we have seen a bit of a rise now. And of course, with a map like Hard Rock Mine, the amount of bush that is in this particular map running the Brood Sand Star Power, you're going to see so much more uh, you, you know, value in that respect for your team. Ruffs is going to come in for Mr. Dosar. It's not a bad one to have at all, especially when you know there's no Rico on the other side of things. You've got less range to have to worry about. It's going to be a better even matchup between that and the uh, and the Otis. The sandbags will take a bit of a beating to the Otis, but nonetheless, not a bad comp on both sides of the field. If I had to hand it over to one side, I do favor the Reply Totem comp here. I mean, any pairing of Gene and Sandy is going to go a long, long way. You don't see those magic hands coming, and I do worry a bit. The sandbags are a saving grace in that respect for Mr. Dosar, but I feel like Reply to might run away with this. We need to see a lot of big plays here for this to go to a fifth and final set, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget that it's not just the sandbags. We've got the honey molasses and the drop the base as well to be able to tank these kind of uh, these gene pools. So, I mean, smart from Mr. Dozer, but I, I do think it's pretty even in terms of draft. We've seen Sandy being used there by foot, I believe it was. Drage picking up that brawler and it worked pretty well. As soon as you get the sandstorm, everything flips uh, and you start to do a little bit better. The stun's going to connect, but can he get the finish off on Salty? Not yet. And it looks like the name might be able to secure the pinch here with a little bit of help from a teammate. He does manage to take it down. And it's actually Mr. Dozer with the control, but Totem with the gems. Sods is in a great spot there. Drops the base. Just to ensure a lack of healing and also visibility. Healing pops through to Maru. And in fact, splash into the mid will force back to the nun. That's going to be a tap though. Five gems dropped. Maru forced to pick him up now and still being scrutinized by both Emric and Salty. Right inside Choker just going to pop a sweet dreams there to try to slow this advance and also the sandstorm to hide behind. But now Salty can see where they are and just jumping in all over this. Reply to are very, very low. But like you said, Ooh. still with the gems and more to add to the bag with Choker with that pickup and patiently coming back to ensure that he stays alive. What a snatch. What a steal from Reply to 
And Mori on top of that, he waits for Emmerich to get too aggressive and go past those sandbags. He knows he needs to make the move and he can't go back, so he knows he can hit that pull. We're going to see Reply Totem going on to a match point now here, and that's the difference that Sandy Super can make. We see one throughout the entire game, and it flips the gems. Well, not really flips the gems, because they did have some anyway, but brings the countdown into the hands of Reply Totem. And honestly, Mr. Dozer had so much control throughout that game. It kind of just seemed like Reply Totem did get a couple of takedowns and... The, the game completely flipped on its head, but still, it's going to be a match point, and if they can repeat the same again, we're going to be all over. Big sigh there from Maru, and uh, looking much happier, but not visibly, but I mean, compared to what we saw off that first set, there was a difference, a much more focused expression. I'm just banking on a smile. Give us a smile, Maru, if you win this, please. <laughs> Let us know you're okay. Blink twice. Um, let's see. Big start, though, here for Mr. Dosar. Four gems in the pocket. As we saw, they just dropped the ball a little bit in that last game. They cannot do the same again. Sandbags completely annihilated there from Joker. Sandy's been such a great brawler to, to do so, as well as uh, Janet. But look at the pressure being mounting here. So Dosar survive it, but nonetheless, looking a little bit better that they cannot falter. They've got to stay on their feet a little bit better this time around. Yeah, Slow comes in and makes connection as well, but he's doing a good job of juking these B-shots. It's actually going to be Maru who's picking these gems up again and retrieving them once more. He was the gem carrier in the last one after he saw them fall down. Can Joker pick up this kill on Salty? He does. Sandbag's placed in the mid as well. Still Joker up top trying to find a super, but just nothing yet. But whilst he's doing that, he's delayed it enough for his teammates to take the gem lead. I love the piloting there from Salty. <laughs> I mean, he was able to put a lot of pressure on, and I think he actually got a bit short changed as Joker got the pick up there. But it's seven gems and Maru with this magic hand and just flicking it there to remind Mr. Dosa that it exists. But there he goes down, leaving Maru on his own. Drop the base on the right hand side from Salty will force him there to really be under the thick of it. Oh, and one tiny little shot there from Russ. Drops the gems, but you might want them better actually in the hands of Maru. In all honesty, it might be the worst trade for Reply Totem in that respect. But in the meanwhile, it's buying valuable time here for Lenan in the mid. Six gems in the pocket, two in the mid though. And Reply Totem know that they can leave those in the back left and just focus their attention here. Big mute there from Maru and Salty goes down, putting a lot of pressure there onto Emric. But a big takedown from Lenan to Maru might shift things around. So back and forth, Trav. Eight gems on the floor, but the pull comes in on the, onto Emmerich there, and he does go down. The reset can be done from mid. Mute going to be missed there, though, and Lenane has to back up. He's too low. Shot does connect as well, brings Maru very low, but Joker gets the stun off. They can't pick up the gem just yet. The super goes down, but they don't prevent it anymore. They have control of this mid, though, though, and need to move further up the map to establish themselves when it goes down, but that's a huge cycle from Joker there, and should only be one or two shots off another. It's just amazing how much a Sandy Super makes all the difference. Maori's got the magic hand to hand and Salt takes to the skies. I don't know whether it's going to be enough time and miss pull there for Reply Totem. The gems are can't be tied for the mid, and that will be it. Reply Totem turn things around, and they will proceed to the semi finals. Yeah, I mean, it was a great performance from Mr. Doser as well. Just not enough to be able to slow down Reply Totem. They just seem so much more composed, so much more calm. And, you know, Joker knows one play will make the difference. And the one play does make the difference. You get the super down, you throw it up, and you just get instant control. And that's the kind of, uh, you know, the kind of thought process that goes into a composition like that. They know they've got the gene pool. That's a turnaround. They know they can get the sand super. That's a turnaround. So they, they can remain calm throughout the game, uh, and they'll be fine. I feel for Lenal there as well, for sure. Uh, definitely a match that could have gone to the fifth and final there. I would love to have seen that come down to hot zone. I really, really would have. But, you know, smart drafts from Reply Totem. Still no smile, though, from Maru, <laughs> which uh, I would like to have seen. Maybe we'll see one later on if they uh, continue this trend of wins. But great ideas being displayed there. I mean, it really was just a small error of margin. For Mr. Dosar in a tough bracket for them, wasn't it really? I mean, no one wants to face Reply Totem in the first round of the day. But again, you know, bring some of these ideas back to the mix. The Sandy, you know, as we saw, that was a little bit of a smile. I'll give him that then. I'll give him that. The thumbs up gained some brownie points too. Uh, here we see the stats as well. It was actually more in favor, in my opinion, for the most part, of Mr. Dosar. And just again, those small, tiny errors of margin which were able to shift it, especially in that first game in favor of Reply Totem in the second, much more back and forth. But more DPS all around on their side, more takedowns. But Reply Totem played the objective. And that's what matters most. You've got to get those gems in your pocket, hold on to them all the way until the end. And that's what gave him the win.
Yeah, you know, you've taken the words around my mouth there. I was going to say, even the statistics back up the fact that Mr. Dozer have had a massive foot in the door in this game. We're going to see Maury as the MVP, as voted by you guys. Although he can't smile to the sadness of Ark, he can play very good Brawl Stars, and he's clearly shown that in this one to earn you guys <laughs> the MVP. Great stuff. Great stuff. I ran event.brawlstars.com, of course. We're three for three, if I'm not mistaken now. We were a bit worried at the beginning of that series, but we are still three for three on the casting desk. So if you guys were with us at the beginning of the stream and still with us now and took our advice on board, then you're probably feeling pretty good about yourselves this weekend as well, Trap. I mean, I, I like to call myself the predictions master, as people on Twitter will know. I know! But so why? Far, you guys are along with me. <laughs> You guys are along with me. And, you know, that's good for you. That's good uh, for your self esteem. If I'm the prediction master and I'm three for three, you guys are three for three, then you must be, uh, you know, just, just a slight bit below me. The cringe is real. Let's load up our next match, our final match trap of the quarterfinal stages. Say to the vision, last month's monthly final champions up against MFNTC. Let's first focus on Say to the vision, the former Craze Clan, the former Chasmat Gaming of. 2022 now say to division are oh, their banner and jeru now and meow such a talented squad of course the coaching mastermind that is in so in the background this team are very very scary trav last month they did some things that i have never seen done in this particular region yeah i can't lie to meow meow's eyes are scaring me a little bit those deep green eyes they're uh <laughs> directly into my soul, I must say. But yeah, I mean, the <laughs> champions, they are looking incredible at the moment, not throughout this competition, but also others as well. And, you know, Snapdragon Pro Series, they had some issues, and we didn't see them towards the later stages of the Queso Cup recently either. They've had some issues since the previous month where they looked so, so good, taking down teams that we've just seen, Reply Totem, and other teams like that as well. They need to kind of get back in the groove, I feel. Lama well, Fantasy, definitely a roster that I imagine to many will feel a little bit less familiar, let's be honest. But still, and same there as well. The underdogs of this story, no doubt about it. I believe it's their first time competing under this organization name in the BSC. But nonetheless, imagine, imagine the bragging rights you'd be able to bring home to knock down Zeta Division in the first stage. And I've got to bring that idea to the forefront of the service a little bit because in the Snapdragon Pro series of Season 2.5, that's kind of what happened to Zeta Division. They went down the first hurdle to Mr. Dosar and then later on in the lower bracket to Navi and they were not really able to get any momentum, but they have got a wealth of experience behind them. And of course, from last month, they're feeling on top of the world. And Fantasy have got a mountain to climb here today. Yeah, I mean, you know, we can talk about other competitions as much as we want, Snapdragon Pro Series and Case Cup, as we both mentioned, but everything comes down to the BSC. This is the big cheese. You know, this is where you want to play your best, and it's where you always are going to play your best, because you need those yeah. points. Worlds is the biggest event in Brawl Stars, and if you're going to play your best, a day like today is when you bring it. Could have said it better myself, to be completely honest, and that's exactly why Zeta Division are where they are at the moment, and, you know, it... Oh, also in the team house, it seems as well. So that's going to help a great deal when it comes to their team morale and, and especially on the, con on the side of their communications. Love to see that. Dedicated is definitely the word for me. And let's see how it goes for them. And now it's so destroying the party too. <laughs> Wearing your tampo shirt. <laughs> You'd love to see it. But again, you know, it was a fantastic month for them in February. They've got to be able to do the same again this time around in March. And just keep their eyes on the prize, stay composed. That is where the game is won. I mean, completely different cameras here. We've got this 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 dark room, which we see an Ammo Fantasy player sitting in versus the incredibly light room of Zeta Division. And, you know, although he, he, he looks in the zone, he looks focused, I still feel a little bit worried for Ammo Fantasy because we're against a huge opponent in Zeta Division here. I mean, you can't count them out. You know, we said, and I think pretty similarly, t uh, Reply Totem were... The huge, huge favorites coming to the last one. And Mr. Dozer put up against, they just put up a massive fight. And I think this is going to be pretty much, very much the same. And imagine quite a similar prediction, maybe not 94 to 6. But Ammo Fantasy are definitely going to have the whole world against them at this point. And I feel like that's an underdog story that I'd like to see today. I, I feel like this could be an even more convincing poll. I mean, say not 94 to 6, it could be 98 to 2. I, I have a bad feeling about this poll. We're seeing now. Oh, come on! Call yourself the predictions master, Trevor. I'm stealing the title. <laughs> now, this guy 
Yeah, he's got it. 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 He's I refuse to believe it. Is. I swear. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Safe side for Heist. Up next, the draft coming thick and fast. The bands, the Son of Zeta being the Eve, the Otis, and the Colette. Colette, Bell, and Grom, and the Son of Amethantizi. The first bands coming in now. Plus, picks are coming in now. Well, Bonnie going to be the first selection from Ammo Fantasy here. And honestly, I don't hate it. I don't know if it's a first pick for me on Safe Zone. I'll also have a little bit of a look at the bands just in more depth. Obviously, we've got the uh, the, the long range of Bell, Colette, all out of the way. Grom's been a huge staple on this map recently, been really making his move. And even looking at all six bands, I don't think Bonnie's my go-to first pick. Yes, it's decent. You can get some burst damage on Safe when you get a jump. But B's still on the table. We've still got a lot of these long range brawls that will counter out Bonnie available and I feel like that's something Zeta Division will probably go towards it. Yeah, he loves to see it. Penny's been a big pick for Zeta and very first pick worthy as well for me on this particular map now. Daryl coming in and that, I mean, this is like the, the dream come coming together, isn't it? Having Daryl not being banned out here and picking it as this early stages. I mean, the Colette's banned out by them as well for that same reason. Sure, you can have a spike on defense. I mean, that's not the worst of ideas here for Amethantizi, or maybe want to go in with the B to have some of a more long-ranged affair as well to have. But ultimately, Zeta are going to be trying to just keep the pressure on rolling in time and time again. And you've got to have an answer for it very, very much to hand. I do worry for them a little bit here. Coming in with what they're going to have it is going to be the B. I mean, it's probably the best that they can hope for. And that will allow them to go with a more ranged approach potentially here, as long as they keep an eye on that Daryl. I mean, that, that probably is one of the answers to the Daryl, you know. I mean, it's not going to be the best, especially when he rolls in and gets a bit of a shield. If he lands directly on you as a B, you're not going to be able to do too much. But if you can keep him at a range, if you can keep him in that, that, that defensive area of the map, then it's going to be pretty solid. Carl on top of that as well. And it's rare you see a Carl being picked into a Daryl. Definitely going to have to get those lanes right and not allow Daryl to kind of have the knockback effect, knock him, out, knock him out of super and therefore kind of thrive off it. Uh, but overall, I don't think it's bad. You know, it's going to be able to pierce through Penny, Salty Barrels, the turrets and stuff like that. But at the same time, I just don't know how I feel about it as a, as a kind of last pick into a Daryl. Yeah, I feel the same, to be honest. You, you need to have something like a Carl, like a Buzz, or like a Daryl to roll in and cause a problem. RT, though, coming in now for Zeta. Surprised to see it actually considering how much we've seen of it already today to come in at such a late stage. I'm still on the fence. I think it's fair to be at this stage. It's the first time we're seeing RT played out in the BSC. We only saw it twice earlier today already in the APAC region. So it definitely feels like EMEA are taking to it far faster. I'm still liking what I'm seeing, but it's always something whereby if you're not getting much value from your super then that begs the question of like you know is it the best pick i mean for zeta it kind of is at this stage of the draft in in my honest opinion it's going to allow them to have a bit more range and take a bit more of the pressure off of nawi and those amplified shots as well the mark that it leaves will definitely be a cause of concern for amethantizi the speed of the shots as well as you see definitely going to be much harder for philip to be able to juke than it is for garrett to be able to juke him yeah, well, it's time to make some moves now. Now he's just waiting for a super of this left-hand side. You can see him being very, very patient and still just trying to find some connecting shots so he can have the same effect of just going in aggressive when eventually people do start to make a move. But Philip, now down to one shot, especially with that mark on top of him, has to heal up over the top. And same, just not able to get too much done here, just waiting and waiting. And even when he's waiting, he's just going to have a Daryl rolling onto him. Yeah, he's got to be very cautious on the side of Amethantizi now. As the roll is there, and this could be the chance, but I like the bait. Taking it slow and steady as Philip does have the amplified shot, and also the slow and also the gadget to hand as well, likely to be there. The Honey Molasses gonna be. I haven't really seen Russell Ty being played out in a map of safe zone for a very, very long time, that's for sure. And there's the roll. 10% damage dealt and 8% conceded, though, on the side of Zeta. This could be a great opportunity for a little bit of an extension of a lead here. I'm a Fantasy flying who came from same, and I do like that, trying to get the pick up of Meow at the same time and get the pressure on but Meow's juking this wondrously well. Gets a tap, gets a second, and the follow up was great as well. The defense there from Zeta, but I'm a Fantasy are making opportunities for themselves. 
Fuhrer there now, just trying to make the shots through, and Philip is fairly low, has to back off. Same coming in once more, though, Meow gets the Salty Barrel down, actually splashes a lot of damage on Same, but even more comes down from Stell, and he might even pick up the second here. Jiro has to let the save tank for him, not the other way, and that's going to be a lot of damage, but now we're going in now and adding some up top. Just gotta be a little bit careful. Try keep control, wait for Daryl to come back, but it seems like they're going way too aggressive and they're gonna be punished. I think rightly so as well. I'm loving what I'm seeing so far from Man Fantasia. It's really looking like a well-oiled unit, isn't it? Let's be honest. And the Penny Tires on defense is not on, a, on any kind of aggressive stance to jump in as well. Continues the assault, and it is definitely in favor of them. Saints are up behind. There's damage being dealt above though, but now the takedown as well. Might change things here as now more damage rolls in. There it is, 28-26 now. Zeta should have this, but there is time. One last ditch attempt, but look at the value. Meow oh. shuts that idea down immediately, but oh, oh my word. Almost, but not quite. Zeta, hold on. He almost threw that so, so hard. He, he stood behind a salty barrel, moves to the left, gets hit and provides him with super. I thought that was going to be pretty much all over from there then, but they managed to hold on, got the nice little turn around in the last few seconds, and then gave them a chance out of it. But sadly for them, they didn't manage to do it with that Bonnie jump. Not enough damage came down, and 2% is what it was to decide it. They division going to take the first game, and it wasn't confident. Not confident at all, especially for a... A team like Emma Fantasy, who again have got a real opportunity now to be that huge underdog story, just showing already that they've got the ability to fend off Zeta and keep them under control for the most part. Very little was in that last game. Will it be the same story this time round? That is the question. Philip does need to try to get Honeycomb Shield, but now he's got it. That will help out a lot, especially against an RT. You do need to land that and allow your teammates to then work off the back of it, but quickly as that it's gone and has to be re -earned. yeah well just playing it a little bit slower this time has his super early on but can't really go too aggressive with it just yet now he sees an opening down the left hand side now but rolling straight into a slow another slow but actually does find five percent on the other side though a nice little jump in of stell is going to find a little bit more than five percent and same goes onto that river and actually avoids a shot by kind of like glitching back off the water from me out. Spin comes in now, has to bait out Jira, and that's a lovely play from him. He is gonna get pinched down eventually, but still got rid of this RT super. And it goes down there as well, leaving Stell to pick up the mantle, but the roll in is strong, and now he gets to get a lot of damage off the back of that. Splash back as well from me out. Shots will pack a punch. Only 4% in it though, and they are great RT legs there, but they will be susceptible to the, the B shots. You can kind of bounce between the legs and the bodies of anyone else that you want to land the shots off. That is the concern here. Jump in, big jump in from Stell. More damage raining down, and it'll be Emma Fantasy now to take the lead. Yeah, well, still only 10% in it. Very similar situation to what we saw in the last one as well, where they kind of had to make this last push comeback. Jiro looking for another super to have some stuff tank, and obviously his legs are going to be able to do just that. And now he's looking for the super as well. Same's just too low to be able to do anything. Now super's being built up by Zeta. We've got the penny turret, the RT legs, and the Daryl roll. This should be a big push, but 20 seconds left. Jump comes in from Stell. He's taken out, but that's at least it's a little bit more damage. Roll through the big damage of Philip there, and he gets the kill. Can his teammates come and join him? We've got a car spin behind him. They've got this long-range damage. The splash should be there as well, and he's actually got onto the safe. Jiro going for the damage. Penny splash down, and Philip's going to be tanking it as well, but actually, they are going to get it 1% left and up top the damage does go down they do take it the first set is in the hands of Zeta Division but only by a whisker wasn't it let's be honest very very close first set and I would not be at all surprised if Amaphantasy start to bring back one here or there but a set is a set that is what matters and Zeta are off the mark good drafting all round but it was very very close We'll soon see as well what the stats say to, to tell the story. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm actually very impressed. I mean, especially when you consider 98 to 2% vote. And Fantasy looks great. They really did. And you know, I don't even know if it's just specifically down to the composition they had either, because I didn't really favor them too much. I think it was pretty similar in terms of uh, certain points on the map, but you know, they, they, they were in the lead for the majority of both games. It was just kind of those last push attempts. And we saw it here, a little bit of a lag, but he got 
and 2% within turning it around again off a little bit of a mistake stepping out the way of the salty barrel. But this is just big damage. We see Meow coming in. Philip actually stands in front of it when there's a penny there. Not going to be the smartest or greatest plan. Uh, so the splash damage came through. Penny mortar, RT damage. You're never really going to be able to match that in the closing seconds. But now he somehow got six kills with 70 DPS. Yeah, that, that is a shit sign of a kill steal if I ever saw one. <laughs> Meow as well with the 12. I mean, absolutely flying there. Got more than the entirety of other Fantasy put together. But, you know, that's what I like about these kind of high statistics, really, for me. Because, I mean, Zeta you know, did have much higher stats. But considering how close it was, you wouldn't have thought so from the side of Ava Fantasy. Looking at their stats, they were as close as they actually were. But definitely very, very close stuff so far for what is our final quarterfinals of the day in this EMEA bracket. Bells Rock up next for Knockout definitely going to be a very different affair when it comes to how this one's played out and a great opportunity potentially here for a comeback if Amaphantasy can just get this draft on point and so far they've looked pretty decent in their awareness when it comes to the picks and bans so I'm liking what I'm seeing but it's going to come down to this bans are in Tick, Grom and Sprout say to do not like the throwers first draft in will be the Piper for Amaphantasy and the, the bans on their side Tick, Sprout and Grom as well so it's actually a mirror ban well, clearly nobody wants throwers anywhere near this map, and honestly, I don't really blame them, because they're not the funnest to play and not the funnest to watch either. Piper obviously is the first pick, and Gene has a return. I kind of like Gene a little bit more, to be fair, regardless of Ammo Fantasy having that first pick. I do like Gene a little bit more, a little bit more versatile, and obviously you can add some more high kind of damage range rather than just having that sprinkle, and uh, obviously the kind of the huge selling point of Gene at the moment is that vision gear. It's not really going to be too useful on a map like Bell's Rock, so probably opt in for something else. And then there's a nanny. And that's why I'm not really the biggest fan of Viper as a first pick, because it has counters. Nanny's a big counter as well. It's Piper, pretty much a hard counter. Um, ultimately, though, depending on how this map is broken up, and that could be what now Emma Fantasia are thinking is like, do we want to go in with Brock here? Do we want to take that risk and of allow more maneuverability for a nanny to be able to take his toll but the shots can also bend around corners so there's that to consider also um ultimately some range would definitely be something to add to the mix and greg gonna come in i don't know whether that's the kind of range that i was wanting to see personally it will potentially provide some heals you know off the back of the star power but i don't know whether it's the play we saw it once already today in this region from mr dosar who in all fairness to them made it work pretty well in brawl Ball, but i don't know whether it's the map for it I think the times of grey cheese are gone now with the nerf recently to eradicate the possibility of being able to teleport with your teammates to hand. Now it's going to be much more of a lone wolf affair. Well, B going to be the last pick of Ammo Fantasy then. And I feel that's a little bit better. I like it more than the grey at least. And, you know, now grey can't really TP in with anybody. You see less aggressive brawlers with it. So that's why you kind of paired the range with that a little bit more. But I don't really like it at the range in comparison to something like a Gene and against a Nanny or something like that. And so we do still have these long range brawlers because throwers were pretty much only banned. Still Brock and stuff like that available as well. But they're actually going to go for the roughs. Roughs is the last pick. Going to be able to have those sandbags. Going to be able to tank a lot of shots, I will say. And I kind of like it. It's going to be better than pretty much everything Ammo Fantasy is going to be bringing in the late game, but it'll struggle fairly heavily early on. Like, I get where Ammo Fantasy are coming from. They want to break up in the map. It used to be, you know, and be able to then, you know, have the walking cane gadget do its thing just to open everything up. But other brawlers can do the same thing. You know, Brock, I feel that if it's on the table and you're not having it banned out, you kind of need to consider it over in this situation here because you would have had a lot more of a range advantage over the roughs. Um, but let's see what they got up their sleeves going into this next one. I'm personally preferring what I'm seeing on the side of Zeta, but especially if Garu, and I've seen Garu play Nani a lot in like three bridges, it's really scary stuff. I think last month as well, it was running some different gadget choices to what I was expecting and making it pay off as well. So let's see how this one goes in the early outset. So far, it's now he's it's a good value, but a big pack of a sting there from Stal and a missed walking cane though as well from Same. So some mistakes on both sides. Yeah, the pinch is there now as well, and this is what I mean. Jiro just instantly has this right side because it's so dominant against a Piper. Philip's going to be brought down to one shot. Stell going to be pinched by Meow thanks to that pretty easy mid. Philip goes down, and it's just all Zeta once again. Shots coming through, and Stell's surely going to fall. Doesn't want to feed any supers, especially this Gene one. That was convincing. It really was, and I just kind of want to break back around again because if you're going to miss a Walking King gadget on the grey side, isn't that like the right reason why you picked it in? Big! 
connection there from the peep, bringing same down to 1,500. Plenty molasses there, just pretty much trying to tank a little bit along the way. That's the aggressiveness so far from Zayf to the supply drop already onto Meow is going to provide a great deal of amount of support and the soundbacks for safe measure. This is looking like a good day gone bad, isn't it really? But Amaphantasy, three versus one, and already that is as convincing as a game will be. I mean, that is pretty much perfect from Zeta Vision. They played it so, so well. I mean, yes, they obviously have the draft. They're dominating every single lane and just taking them down so easy, instantly just pushing back. And I mean, off the start, it was thanks that Nanny versus Piper kind of opened up a world for the roughs to push down mid. But to be honest, they're just playing it better as well. Do I feel like the Ever Fantasy comp can work? Yeah, I absolutely do. I don't think there's anything that's crazy out there outrageously wrong with it. It's just simply the Zeta have got, in my opinion, what is the more meta approach. But they can bring down the pace a little bit and start to work a bit more together with getting some of these takedowns. They've got to open up this map and it's not really the gadget for me to do it from same. I didn't really feel like it provided much value at all and Zeta are just turning all the screws right now. I just don't feel like there's any kind of level of control. It's a very different set considering what we saw previously in Heist, but I'm a fantasy. It just feels like Knockout is not for them. I mean, yeah, completely the opposite of what we saw. I mean, yes, they didn't win the first one, but it was close. This one is just all out domination from Zeta Vision. Looping round now, Piper's gonna have to get the jump away. Does avoid it, but actually goes down anyway. So it doesn't matter. Gene pulls there. Say goodbye to Satan because he gets pulled straight into a rock. Wow. And say goodbye to Stell as well because they finished that off over the left hand side. Zeta Division are dominating. I mean, that was a blink and you miss it set. I am I would love to put the timer on the beginning of when that started to the end to see how long that even lasted. Wonderful stuff. I mean, Amaphantasy just did not look like the same team. Whereas in the first set, I was convinced that we might have seen some resolve towards the later stages of this series. Now, I don't feel like I'm that confident about it. I think it could be ending here in gem grab, especially if Zeta continue like they just did then. It's kind of what we saw last month. They took a bit of a time, a bit of a slow burn to get into the swing of things. But when they got to that grand finals, they absolutely smashed out of the park. And, you know, it was a bit of a slower start in the quarterfinals, however. So that could be where we're at today as they get warmed up. But Amaphantasy needs to go back to the drawing board big time because their strategy that they obviously had in mind just did not make the cut. I mean, it really is disappointing for Amaphantasy, especially, you know, getting to the monthly finals. It's hard as it is. And we said it about uh, about Mr. Dosa as well, having these tough brackets and being a little bit unfortunate after such a good qualifier run. This is another one of those instances. State Division, they came out on top last month. They're undoubtedly one of the best teams in Europe. And this kind of shows it. Zero kills, as you would say, donuts across the board. Wow. <laughs> 32 damage and 43 DPS as well. But on the other side of things, Zeta Vision just looks so good. If you were a secret agent, Trav, that would be your tag. Just double O, <laughs> double O, double O. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to show. <laughs> Crystal Arcade up next for Gem Grab. And yeah, I mean, this 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 could be where it all comes to a close. Uh, but I do agree with what you say. You know, Amber Fantasy um, you know, did so well to make it this far. I do feel like they've got something about them which has got legs here. It just wasn't their you know, game mode necessarily in Knockout, but if they're going to have to bring it, they've got to bring it now into Gem Grab the Bands, being Max, Squeak, and Ash banned out by Zeta Division. First draft for them will be the Janet on the side of Amaphantasia, the Ruffs, the B, and the Stu in the first pick of the Carl. I don't necessarily mind it here. I kind of prefer what I'm seeing with the Janet ideas. They do need to have something of a I'm assuming they're going to have... Yeah, they need the G mid. I was going to say, if the, if the car was mid, it's not really going to work for me because you want to go all aggressive tears and Gene much more safer. So let's see how they respond. I actually kind of preferred the Ammo Fantasy pick here. I did like the Carl in comparison to Janet to start with. Yes, Janet's just so, so versatile, but Carl on the lane on this map is just so, so strong. You just peek around those walls, get the shot off, and you just move side to side to be able to hit them pretty much flawlessly. And when you have control, it's tough to get it back off the Carl as well because of that spin. Gene on top of that just makes it even better. Uh, it pairs it up for a real, real nice comp in the long run. And we might even be going back to the old days of seeing Sandy on the end of it as well. But that is not something I expected. Yeah, I, I'm not that much of a fan of Buster. I, I can kind of 
see i'm a much bigger fan of anita that's where i feel like now it makes a bit more sense trying to have the bruce and the buster kind of push everything towards an aggressive standpoint into a corner um that makes some sense to me but they have got a serious lack of range and if amavantesi wants to try to exploit that in some way open up some of the map with some kind of wall breaking this aside from the magic hand then they might leave zeta high and dry here the janet is their longest range brawler and obviously they just don't feed into the into the nita it could work out well in their favor here but surge gonna come in definitely one that can be high risk high reward here but again, without the wall break on the side lanes, I kind of worry a little bit for Amaphantasy here because the Buster and the Nita can just do what they want to do. I mean, you're not really going to get going to get a gene pool specifically on those left and right hand side lanes. So I just don't feel like they've kind of thought this one potentially through. I mean, even like a Griff would have been great just because you just instantly break and then have the range advantage. But they haven't really kind of fed into the counter idea here for me. I do agree, but at the same time, if they can get Surge onto the Buster, have him jump over and over on it and win that lane out, get the levels up, then I think it'll be good in comparison to having it on the Nita. Uh, it very much is just who's on what lane should have a dominant kind of uh, approach to it. Stell's going to go very aggressive, and he's actually not on the lane that I would have favored to start with, but Meow's missing shot after shot, but the rest of Zeta are doing a lot better. Gary? Getting three gems into the pocket, but the positioning now better in favor of Amma It's going to be tough for me to really push into this. There's a second gadget pop there from Stealth, but it's considered a big takedown there from now in the right hand side, forcing their Phillips to the left. He's going to pull back a drop the base for his troubles as well as generally continues to advance in favor of Zeta. Now Stealth trying to come around the backside, gets another stack off and just kind of bases him meow, but flying hooking from same and takes the skies from Garu, and that's what you want to see, but where will he land? That's the question. A nice amount of defense there from Zeta, just coming to the aid of their teammate, allowing the gems to stay in the pocket. Well, we're playing a complete flip here. Same's just gone back into the spawn where I believe someone's actually respawning, so probably not the best idea. But now they are kind of swapping back around, but in comes the suck from Naui. Brings them low. Philip goes for a wild ball and does miss it. But eight <laughs> gems in the hands of Jiro, and it just keeps on going up and up. Two gems on the side of Ammo Fantasy, though, and a good shot from Same. Good takedown from Cell kind of brings it back even. I mean, with a Janet Scott, he can't even go for a gene pull at the best of the times. So he's just going to take to the air. But Gary didn't even bother to uh, pop his super because he just knew it wasn't going to reach anyway. Big jump in there from Stell. Wins the trade up. And now he, as well, wins his on the right hand side. Six gems to eight. It's a nice deficit being reclaimed back here by Ever Fantasy. As now the Surge Max stacks have paid off for Stell. Big faux fur. They're coming in. And that will force him back slightly as the big super in from Same. Get double teamed on that right hand side. One gem away from countdown for Zeta, and it could be a match point looming in. Looks that way. Now he's gonna get the shots for as well, keeping Gene back so so well, and he, he just follows up with another shot as well. That does connect onto Stell. Flights there, eight seconds, and it's game because he can just fly out the rest of it. Ten gems in his hands, four seconds, and he does take flight. Amo Fantasy gonna be facing a match point as Zeta Division carry on this beautiful, beautiful gameplay. Even when I doubted the bus to start with, even when I kind of we saw Nita pretty much get destroyed throughout the game, they still managed to be able to pick up gem after gem. And it kind of just looks like Amo Fantasy are just defeated at this point. Yeah, the Buster's definitely cutting the mustard, let's be honest. But I feel like that is also to a bit of the uh, dismay of Amaphantasy's draft because they could have maybe worked around the problem a little bit better than they have. They maybe put a bit too much on their plate here. There's now double teaming from Zaytum to the right-hand side. It's pushing back Stell, but in the meanwhile, they're double teaming on the left-hand side for Amaphantasy's take down of Zeta. So, trades on both sides of the coin. Two gems in the pocket for each side. But... So far, Stell's struggling to get off the mark here. He needs to get those stacks in. Popping gadgets to do so would be favorable here, but now finally gets the speed, but now he gets the takedown. That's what's more important. Three versus one, nothing that Philip can do here. Yeah, has this pull though. Nita Bear's there, but drop the base should also be there from Jiro as well at the same time, so can't pull either of them. Now he would be a pretty devastating player to pull as well on this buster. Stell's gonna get hit, but Jiro actually doesn't make his way out. Drop the base wasn't placed, and now he's in a world of pain. We do have Meow though, picking up these gems, and he actually leaves two behind, doesn't want to go for them, but now turns back and pretty much gonna take the gems into the spawn. Another bear and has to replace, but this time he's just doing so, so well. Jiro cleans up the, the, the stranglers up top. And they now have seven gems, and after such a weird, weird interaction, they're still very much on top. 
I love the Bruce recycling there from Meow. It's a literally body block for himself. It just kept him alive, and it was just right in the nick of time. Heels coming in. Big time for Amber Fantasia, but the countdown is inbound now for Zeta. They've got to push this. They've got to reset this. Big flying hook in. Big takedown there from Sane, but Meow is the problem on the right-hand side. He goes down. HM's down the pocket. Zeta might be throwing this. Gary takes it to the skies, but at the same time, this is a big potential turnaround here for Amber Fantasia. Does reset Stell, and now he has this buster shut thing, so he's just going to shield forwards. Satan's going to go towards Meow, not going to get the heals off onto him, and he just can't push far enough forward. They've just completely thrown the game, and the need to getting pulled in was absolutely devastating for Zeta. And they've just got to hope they don't lose this next one, otherwise they could be facing a reverse sweep if they manage to pull all of this off. It's a long way away, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> You might, you might be getting yourself a little bit ahead of yourself there, Trav, maybe. But, I mean, I, I'm with you. I, I, let's dream, uh, dream big, you know? <laughs> dream big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a lot to muster up, but when you've got less expectation on your shoulders, it does go a long way and does speak volumes as well. Let's see what they can muster up here against this match point. Zayt is still in a commanding position here, but a better start for Stell. It's got speed off, but still struggling against Naoi and Meow with the bear as well. Bruce surely going to come in and just at the moment, Emma Fentes just cannot really get out of this spawn. Yeah, Bruce being thrown towards same, but actually does pretty much give him a wall to bounce it off against. So not the best thing, but they are dominating completely across this map. Same over the right hand side. Has a little bit of a push towards, but can't do a lot from that position anyway, because Buster's going to push him straight back out. And with a little pinch from Jiro, he should be fine. But Jiro keeps on putting himself in these really, really weird uh, locations, and luckily enough, he gets super to be able to get away. Big block there from Naoi, and nice gadget. Good measure the magic hand. Big miss there from Philip. And a crucial time as well, because it would have been huge to get it. No Janet super to hand. Same goes in. We have a big tail spin, and Yeru yeah, getting whistled down here. So be careful, but now the respawn from Naoi will help out considerably. Another big shield to hand. Everyone clusters on the side of Amphantasia. It could be some big takedowns here. And another missed magic hand. You can't really do that against a team like Zeta. He's, he is going for the most wild pulls I've ever seen in my entire life, to be fair, and I'm not surprised <laughs> he's missing him. He's in a way, he's in one fight, and he's going for like a max range pull somewhere else, and max range pulls don't hit on the best of the days, never mind whilst you're in a fight in a terrible situation. But Jiro picks up 11, countdown starts, and this time I don't see a return from Ammo Fantasy. Yeah, Garrett's got super as well. There's, there's literally no way that they can get this takedown in time, and that will be it, surely. Zay's division, stay strong. Stay in control and being being that top dog, which they are, they will go through to our semi-finals. I mean, it was nice stuff from them. It really was from Zeta Division, but I didn't see a lot from Abu Fantasy either. In the first set, they had some good plays. They had a good fight. They were ahead both games, got turned on, almost turned back one of the games. But Zeta Division, they're just too strong. They're last month's champions, and they just looked incredible pretty much throughout this one. Uh, you can't really expect to come into a game uh, and feel confident about facing Zeta Division. I don't think I'm a fan easy were, and I think it showed. But I think, looking back at the replay, going back through the VOD already on the side of them, I, I admire that from a team like Amaventis to be going straight in to see where it went wrong. I mean, that is what makes teams able to come back and learn from their mistakes. I, I kind of rate that, to be fair. But Zeta, as we expected them to do, they were just looking fierce, looking strong. I mean, there was a few question marks in that first set, put to rest very quickly in the second and third, and definitely going to be a very stacked semi-finals now as a result of that big pickup win. We expected to see, but got to give some praise to Emma Fantasy. It starts off great for me. That was where it kind of started to whistle down, though. Second and third set, not as good. Some lessons to learn from them, but no doubt they'll go back to learn them. And they do. They, they, they should come back. They've got some points on the board now. I believe they were sitting about sixth or seventh on the leaderboards coming into today. So still, it's not bad. That's a last chance qualifier spot if they manage to maintain these qualification routes forwards. In terms of statistics, though, what can you expect? It's all on the side of Zeta Division there. Eight, ten, and seven, four, five, and six. It's, you know, you can pretty much see from that who came out on top. Really dominating, wasn't it? I mean, I still bring it back around to the draft and just wonder whether there was anything else that Amaphantasia could have done to really break things open and give themselves a bit more of an advantage. But Gero would be the MVP, I think rightly so. Zeta really outperformed on every level today so far in these quarterfinal stages. That was who you voted for at event.brawlstars.com and I think a worthy MVP, Trav.
I think so too. I mean, he really did play well and so did all of Zaytis, to be fair. It's a cohesive unit at this point and that's what makes them so fierce. You know, one player can play incredible, but the two of them, they have to back them up for it to be able to work and that's exactly what they do. They make these plays, they make them as a team and I think it really does show because they're just so good at the moment. Well, predictions master, we're four for four so far over at event.brawlstars.com and hopefully you guys are at home as well, having followed our uh, caster tips here on the desk. We're going to be taking a very short break as we line up our semi-finals for today, but you do not want to go anywhere. Our semi-finals could not be more stacked. Be right back after this. Okay, gas or spike? Mario, you want gas or spike? No. What is the solution? 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 What is the Come, we put the hut, nice. put, 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 put. <laughs> Bravo! Nice, nice, good job, bravo, 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 bravo. First gadget. Focus shot. Bravo. Okay, I go Nash. Amps, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Go. go. Okay, focus you, you. him. You okay. You okay, I pass you there. Yeah. Anzi, Marta, giro di là. Okay, you can, you can work. But I have one more. Bravo, Mari, bravo, 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 bravo. Dead. Good job. Nice. Vale, vale, pass. Nice, he wasted. Okay, we just control. Bravissimo, nice. surge level. Get left again. Surge level. Yeah. One shot. Okay. Nice shoot. Oh, ah, okay, nice super. One shot. Surge is one shot from Super. Focus. Okay. But uh, we need to score. Sure. Nice. Good job, good job. Uh, we have three supers. Uh, we have three supers. Try to not get hit when Okay, surge low. Nice. Dead, nice. Good, super. Nice. Okay, man. Bye, bye, bye. Trap. Trap Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. 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 Okay, nice, nice. Good job, good job, good job. One more, one more, one more. Okay, we'll go with super if you kill him. Go, go, go. Yeah, go right. Nice I will feed Surja. Okay, we'll do damage, yeah, guys. Yeah, you need to go, man. Okay. I'm going. Nice, nice, nice. nice, nice, nice. Go. Good go. job, good job. Go. Go. Come on, last. Go. Good job. Bravo, Mauri, well late, well late. Good, good job. Yeah, okay, go. I will feed Surja. Okay, you can go. Okay, Surge meet, he have liver, huh? Okay. Nice good lead, lead huh? Good lead. Okay, I'm super. Him, him. Okay. Okay. Don't feed me. I, I go mid, I go mid. We go, we go, we go. I will do some damage, huh? Okay, doing it. Nice! Let's go! Nice! nice. nice. Ah, ah, bravo, bravo! Good job, Jokerino. Vamos! I can hold the other side. Huh? I'm coming to get the ball. This one shot. I pinch one. Nice. Body. Yeah. Dead. Nice. Good job, nice. good job, good job. I have super, huh? Okay, okay. <coughs> I super top left. Okay. Dyna left, good Dyna super. Dyna super. Dyna super. Dyna super. The bush. Okay, so bush nice. left. Super. He used to use. Nice, super. Nice, good nice. job, good job, good job, good job. Good hits. Okay, nice. I focus the Dyna. See? I shoot. Okay. Good job. I don't have ammo. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Come on, come on. Nice, nice. Get the ball, get the ball. Okay. We go, we go, we go. Get the pressure, get the pressure. We win it. 30 seconds, guys. We win it. Ching, he has no gadgets. Okay, we need to kill him quick. Nice, we have control, guys. Don't feed. Nice. Nice! 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 Good win. Bravo. Vamos!
In Pokemon, guys, nice! Bravo, Mauri, bravissimo. Bravo, Mauri, quello lì. Yes, no, no gadget, Mauri. Nice. Ok, Piper 100. Nice, brother, can we go? Nice. I'll go corner. Sì, go corner. Okay, they pinch me, Raph, gonna pinch me. We have 30 seconds. Be dead. Nice, Mauri. I will do damage. Damage, damage, damage. 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 Damage, I'm super. Okay, so sinistra io allora. We have a good leader. Sì, no, no, I go? Can go, 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 go. Go. Hit mm -hmm. it, he's gonna die. Piper dead. Then, 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 then. I hit. Really nice, good nice, leader. Nice. Piper mid. Hey, wait, he was. Piper dead. We dead. Nice, guys. Nice. Good job. Nice, nice, good job. Nice, nice Joker. Nice, Joker. nice kill. Okay, I'm dead. Okay, only Danny. Damage. Good. I go right? Uh, yeah. You have gear, eh? one HP. I go left, okay. I think. Okay, go left. One Penny, right side. I'm HP, man. Okay, Mario, you can go left. I'm going. Then there's there's someone. There's no, 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 no
Yeah, well, if you go with us or you don't, make sure to go to event.brawlstars.com and place your predictions. Getting into the game, though, A&R versus Foot Esports is lining up to be an absolute beauty. Starting things off with A&R, we have Rama, we have Mebius, and we have Nob. Absolutely incredible team so far this year. And I saw on your predictions video on Twitter, you've got them going all the way today, Teddy. Dude, honestly, ever since we watched them in the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 2.5, they took it all and... They did so quite brilliantly as well. They looked really strong, and just from watching them quite a bit during that event, uh, my take was they might just be the best team in the MEA, and I, I can really see them winning this monthly final. Now, Foot Esports is going to have a totally different agenda in their mind, and to be honest, it's a really tough goal here, because Foot, they've been looking better and better. I just feel like A&R so far, they, they, they've been a, a, a bit of a wild team. Yeah, they are. A and R are kind of a bit of a wild card, whereas Foot Esports are players we've known and loved. A and R, yes, we've kind of known the same, but these are big, big names in the scene, especially Semantic and Drage being joined this year by Ope. He's been playing really, really well as well, kind of uh, being that unit that they need to be. Playing together as a team, having Semantic as that big, aggressive player. I've seen him hop on the Primo so, so many times, as you can see him on screen right now. He's hit a few dabs for us before. If they win, we might get some more of the same treatment, but Drage has kind of been able to slot into a more aggressive aggressive position this year as well, playing some more lanes instead of what he was doing last year, which was a lot of that mid work. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think you make a very good point there as well, because it did feel like sometimes he was a little bit underutilized last year, not being able to necessarily play with the, the highly mechanical brawlers that you'd want Drage on. Uh, this series had more opportunities to do so, and uh, so far it has been looking very promising. I just feel like success-wise, NR have just a little bit more to show when it comes to 2023 uh, than, than for the esports. But I'm really happy to be proven wrong here. It does seem like most of you guys at home are going to be going with ANR as well for your predictions. Um, so I, I would say ANR here might be a slight favorite, all things considered. But for the esports, they're really not far behind. And I will say, you know, I think 59-41 uh, uh, is probably one of the closest predictions we've had and that's weird considering how kind of far apart it is crow is that first pick coming in there as well band's gonna be Stu, bell and janet from a and r and footy sports gonna get rid of the meg pretty self-explanatory at this point same with the poco and also the bonnie on a map like this it's dangerous crow is the first bit though i like it you've got the slow you've got all that capability good amount of spray can't really miss shots uh, but Lola, however, going to have that ego, the freeze frame. Penny's going to have the salty barrel and the mortar to be able to tank a lot of that damage that Crow's going to bring to the table. And honestly, for esports kind of lining up right now, I wouldn't mind a Pam as a third pick for them, but I'm sure A&R might snag it first. Yeah, I mean, Penny being picked up here alongside Lola makes a lot of sense, right? Penny being one of the strongest counters to Lola. So snatching both uh, for their side is going to be something very valuable here for food esports. It's I mean, as you mentioned, you know, they have some utility to tank for the Crow, and Crow already not necessarily being the heaviest damage dealer uh, can be a little bit of a problem for him if he's not able to find a lot of value there. There's going to be the max paired up with the Crow, so they're not really going to be uh, the masters of the pacing here with the ability to slow things down with the Crow and speed things up with the max. Yeah, I mean, I really like the way you put it there. Masters of pacing is just, it's a beautiful way of putting it, to be fair. Uh, obviously, as you said, Max is going to be very, very solid. And I kind of like the look of kind of going towards a Pam here for Foot Esports. But with that Amber there, it's got a lot of piercing damage. It can do a lot of work against some of these healers, against the Mortars, against the Egos, stuff like that. So it might have swayed him off it just that little bit more. Don't know really what they'd kind of go to as an alternative, because a lot of the really solid brawlers are banned out or picked already. With six bands and five picks already on the table, Foot Esports aren't really left with a massive amount. Could go with some aggressive Carl or something like that, but then again, I don't know how strong it would be on a map like this uh, with, with it being so, so open and being against so many of these uh, kind of not easy hitting brawlers, but it's going to be the beat that they do go with. Play a little bit more range and less turrety, and I think that's probably quite smart considering it's got that slow against the max. It's got the slow against the amber as well, and it can hit a lot of those shots against the amber if she doesn't have that speed provided. Yeah, I, I like both comps quite a bit. I do tend to agree with you a little bit. I feel like uh, the Amber is going to have a lot of opportunities to shine here against both the Lola and the Penny, and even the Bee, to be fair. Uh, but I, I, I still feel like if Foot utilize their utility uh, efficiently, they might be able to out-edge them with that draft. So to my eyes, it's going to come down to execution for this one.
as we are ready to jump in now and we'll see the max in the mid a little bit lonely early on and the fact that rama was playing it a little bit safe will uh get a and r punished quite heavily in the early game as foot esports are able to get an early team wipe and a and r will have to pick up the scraps from here yes yeah, it not popping a freeze frame too early with it now in front of him it's gonna be able to tank a lot more Ram having to back off just that little bit more as well. Put, throwing down a little puddle of ice there instead of fire for once. Drage going to get that pick up and they've just established themselves so nicely here. Samantha's going to cover for Drage whilst he's healing. And Ope can just sit behind this wall. They're in such a great position. Yeah, the slow pop by Mebius, but really failing to capitalize so far. So much utility on the right hand side. The salty barrel to tank. The mortar plays down as well at last. Nob will find a kill, but. It's just a one-for-one -one trade, and with Rama left in a 1v2, a 1v3 now as Drake respawns. Still a pretty awful spot here for a &R early on. Mebius does have his jump, as the shield is going to be pumped on that Ego, and so far for the esports, able to keep the boat afloat quite nicely. Rama does take quite a bit of damage on the bottom right but for the esports are able to maintain their lead as Rage hits a nice supercharged shot onto Knob and that should help for the esports cap in a couple more percentages. Yeah, in our uh, it's time to come back little by little and with all this oil on the floor it can be quite difficult for Foot to push on but they're just getting so many connecting shots and they can be patient because they're so far ahead 25% as it is and Amber's going to burn all that really to no avail got nothing back from it Ego going to be there freeze frame through that as well but straight burn through by Rama nice pinch from his teammates as well and this percentage deficit is just getting smaller and smaller Ope going to find so many shots and Drage with the 3k hit does miss it narrowly but should have some fight back now that it's a 3v2 but quickly made a 2v2 by Rama with some nice plays yeah, a nice comeback, to be honest, from ANR because things started so poorly on their side. But now they're only a couple percentages behind. Is that going to be enough, though, as Food Esports get a nice double kill? Rama try to at least delay the heal and reset from Food Esports. But Food Esports getting dangerously close to the finish line now as Semantic should be going down. He will be indeed. It's only 1% remaining. But it's ANR in the zone. Can they hold on to it? As Mabius has some poor dodges with the turret. They're still able to get a kill with that jump in, but they should be just able to walk it in and lock in that final percentage there. Or Food Esports. A strong first game on their side, but to be fair, I feel like if ANR didn't have this awful of a start, they probably would have made it a lot closer, if not even taken it. Yeah, I mean, it took about until a 5% kind of difference between them before Foot Esports started to get it in gear again and get going, but definitely seems like a bit of a better start from ANR this time. Not going down as fast, but Drage has the 3 in. It connects onto Mebius. He's taken down by a nice pinch. And yet again, more of the same as ANR all fall on the exact 9% they had last time and Foot Esports once more with all the control. Yeah, it does seem like... Uh... We are seeing the same, exact same early game played out. As for the esports, are able to lock in a nice and healthy early lead. Not needs to be more consistent on his dodges and the ego coming in here from Semantic as well, providing so much value, helping him win that 1v1. Rama should be getting sprayed down eventually. Rama will be falling to Ope and Seems like the start is going to be even more disastrous than the previous one. As the Salty Barrel is finally taken care of, and ANR are desperately trying to force the situation open just a little bit. Not able to do so very successfully so far, though. Yeah, it's being held back, and Ope told this round lane so, so strong. Rama with the super now as well, Mebius with his, and this is the same point they started to come back in the last time. They got to about 60%, and then it all started falling apart for foot when the gadgets start to be used or poor. Maybe their supers aren't getting as much value at this point, but it seems like it's a little bit better from this time as Nob brought down to one shot. Semantic should be able to get the finish, but he does manage to get away successfully. Rama just outranged by Ope, just like the tiniest bit of this round side, and he's just backing up and letting him use all of his ammo uh, and coming back and playing for the slow after 
afterwards, but nice shots. Good slow from Drage, and the follow-up shot from the Mortar gets the finish off now, and it just doesn't look like we're going to be seeing the same from A&R. But little by little, they're bringing it back a little bit. A little bit of a comeback for A&R, but is that going to be enough? With map just being so low HP as well, it's going to be scary as not. Ball Semantic, also very low, but Rama is down to one shot as well. This gives time for Foot to heal up a little bit, and again, ANR have brought it very close. But they started their comeback too late in the previous game. Mystery doesn't seem to be repeating it itself so far, as they are going to be able to overtake the lead somehow. And that Mortar is going to be a nice waste of utility, favoring ANR just a little bit more. 10% in their favor, and the kills are left and right, but mostly in favor of ANR. They're gonna run away with this one, and they failed to bring back game number one. Game number two will be brought back. This means that we'll go to a third game for this opening set. I mean, I don't know how they can start so well on the side of Foot Esports and then have it all fall apart throughout that mid game. They get like a 50% buffer or something like that and then they just lose it and it just doesn't make sense of how they're doing it because it's not like they didn't have any gadgets left which i said mid game i kind of checked and they were still looking pretty replenished and they had supers and stuff like that and it just, just seems not to work out maybe a little bit of lane swaps what a &R kind of put down mid game but splashes come through and maybe this is going to go down early on with ope with some nice connects and shots yeah, this is the best start for a &R yet semantic will be able to survive but not gets a nice trade there as ope falls and Anar kick things off with a healthy 30% lead. Okay, will be scouted in the right bush. Which means that Rama won't be caught off guard too much by his presence. It does feel like Anar doing a much better job at dodging now as well, which has been making a world of difference. The semantic is going to be slowed down by Mepius, but it's not quite enough for a kill. Rama gets dispatched and at last things seem to be going right here for for the esports but even then they only were able to find three percent of that interaction i mean this is all a &R speed there as well rama throws that gas forward burns down some of that bush stops the ability to kind of slide through even though they're not really doing that anyway ope and drage trying to find some shots but semantic is locked in by maybe this can't make his way off this left hand side and he's not gonna be able to anyway because this should be gained to a on the set along with it regardless for how well Foot were playing throughout the rest of this set. It's just all falling apart so, so badly for them. And 5% in the entire last game is, quite frankly, embarrassing from Foot. Yeah, that's a tough pill to swallow for them. And to be honest, what I think made the difference in this set is that AR started dodging, which sounds quite horrific, but in the first game, and even for the most part in the second, I felt like they were getting hit by way too many shots, including the mortar. And I understand that, you know, uh, sometimes it can be overwhelming and there's a lot of shots from different directions, but uh, a penny at max range as well as uh, a mortar should not be finding nearly as much value as it was. And in the third game, that was when it was at its best for NR, where they were able to just much more consistently dodge those shots. and not necessarily even find way more connections onto their opposition but make sure that they stay alive as they did have some pretty decent matchups across all lanes and at the end of the day and hour we're able to build up the confidence to just play a little bit more aggressive the way we uh, expect them to at this point as it is what this team is mainly known for and get a very dominant statement to close out the first set I mean, that's the kind of plays we need out of A&R to prove that they are the team that they are. And, you know, they, they thoroughly deserve these positions in BSC and Snapdragon Pro Series and stuff like that. They've been placing highly. They just need to do it in a competition like this, get to the finals and even have a chance of winning it as well uh, against whoever comes out of the upper bracket. But it is only one set so far for esports have some time of fighting back. But it just seemed like when they were down, they were down and out. And that was the issue that kind of came along with for esports there. Regardless of all the kills, they got 16, 5 and 12. They couldn't match up to uh, the control that we saw out of ANR. Nice comeback from ANR in this opening set. We'll be moving on to safe zone in highs for some fairly different gameplay. Still a pretty open map, all things considered. So to that extent, it's going to have some similarities. And already a first pick of Penny for ANR seems like 
they didn't really like facing it in the previous one, want to give uh, Food Esports a taste of their own medicine. You can't blame them. It's very, very good on a map like Safe Zone. Place it in those safe, unbreakable walls, and they bring in Brock, regardless of them being unbreakable, still can get some damage on that safe and get their incendiary down, which obviously is base kit for quite a while now. RT to go along with it as well. And regardless of him having this super, which puts him in an aggressive state, he can just sit in this uh, long range form and do so, so much work. We already saw it. Uh, I believe it was played by Zeta in one of the previous ones in their safe zone. And um, it really did work. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still curious uh, about RT and his place in the meta. It feels like in the MEA, more than in any other region so far for those monthly finals, it seems that like like it is more uh, appreciated or seen more highly uh, as it is in, in other regions. We'll see it throughout the rest of the weekend if it's going to be remaining that way. But I'm not entirely convinced just yet by how strong it is going to be in competitive. We'll see the 8-bit collect on the side of ANR, which I do like a bit here for me is, is one of my favorite brawlers. Not necessarily always the strongest, but if you remove Penny from the equation as well, since they have it locked in on their side anyways, I, I feel like there's no super strong counters to it. So we'll see how much work they can do with that, but they always are gonna have to be a uh, careful because if there's a team wipe or if the 8-bit is free to get a shot or two on the safe with his uh, damage booster, that's massive amounts of damage. And with the chip damage that Colette brings into the mix as well, it, it can be quite uh, a strong combination here for ANRs. But Esports will be locking in Sprout as their final pick, which I do like on Save Zone. I think it's a lot of fun. I just don't know if it's necessarily the best pick either. I really like what AR have gone with. It just seems like the safe zone comp, you know? At this point with unbreakable walls, you can place the 8-bit turrets behind him, you can place the penny turrets behind him, Colette's gonna be able to go, go towards the R team and get some good value, go towards the safe and get a good value. It's just a question if not everything's going to be blocked off by this Sprout. I feel like it's got to be an early super from Sprout uh, and have it be recycled for this to be able to work for Foot Esports. Well, Drage and Rama and pretty much the same range. Rama needs to hit a bunch of his uh, projectiles to find nearly the same value as Drage does with just the one. Early on, it does seem like Drage is able to just ever so slightly outrange him. Find a bit more value there for as well. 8% onto their safe. I think Ope finds some shots sneakily on the right side as Mepis was playing it very passively, but I was able to nicely capitalize of that aggression from Ope and means that now he's locked in a forward position on the right side. He's gonna be low HP, not quite able to place the mortar in time as he gets taken out by Ope. At the end of the day, it's only a 2% lead now for Foot. Yeah, I'm not sure what Ope was doing on that aggressive side just before he kind of respawned here. I don't know if he was going backwards and or if he was just facing the complete wrong way when he chose to press his gadget. Should have gone forwards, really, but Semantic gonna be able to keep this control now. Might see a TP forward from Ramri. He does go for it. Gets jumped away from Ope and does just survive a little bit longer than he deserved, but Drage on the aggressive. Mebius cleans him up quickly with a salty barrel in his face. Yeah, that was a nice TP, to be honest, from Rama. Opened up the situation quite nicely, but another wall is going to be placed down and only four shots to recycle it. That's not even counting in gadgets. He's been doing a pretty good job for Foot to lock some areas out and reduce the area of play just a little bit. And Nob is going to get locked by the Sprout wall in the enemy spawn. That's less than ideal. Nevertheless, it does seem like NR able to find some nice value from that situation. Maybe his low HP is going to be next to full, as Nob is hoping to get another super down onto the safe, but not able to do so just yet. And for the esports, heading towards this final countdown, will have mid control. Well, this is the last push that they need, and regardless of them pretty much needing control for the entirety of the game to be able to win it, they might be able to do it now, but a push forwards, they don't get enough damage, and A&R are going to add some more up top onto Foot Esports safe, and they're extending the lead even further now. One game away from being two sets up, and that looks so, so convincing from them. I don't doubt that they'll be able to do it now. Two sets up, and... 
that is quite scary actually sorry the first game of this second set uh, uh but either way it's three games in a row now for anr i was just getting a little bit overexcited <laughs> but they've been looking strong and for the esports they gotta start striking back they really do need to just be able to keep control and you know that, that kind of over aggression from OP that we've been seeing is quite worrying for foot if they do need to keep this control which they obviously do not just being kept by the semantic and it's just a 50 50 lane it kind of just depends what's going on on the others and you know as you said in the last one Drake seems to be able to get the upper hand when it's a one-on-one -on -one in this mid and definitely should be able to get the upper hand with Ope here helping him but maybe it doesn't want to overextend down that mid because he just doesn't quite have the range to be able to match it Drake's taking so much damage Rama finding some very neat angles and able to find some good value so far and also playing it very respectful of the sprout but eventually does feed a couple of shots and the sprout will along with it that means that Nom has to reposition if he wants to help in the mid a beautiful super from Ope takes out Rama and that's a chance to get a nice couple shots onto the safe which will give Foot Esports an 18% lead so far Drama does have his damage booster. No, has a super as well. It's so low HP, the damage booster quickly taken care of with the rocket rain from Ope. Still, maybe he's able to find a shot on save. That's pretty much all for now. As Rage does pop his super, and Mebius is well aware of the rage. Beautiful piercing shots as well from uh, Mebius on that flank. However, he will get pinched himself as Rage respawns, and Semantic is able to find a good angle onto him. It's 9% now in favor of food esports did did, did Samantha just throw a wall backwards onto safe or was that just me being completely stupid because i think he threw a wall and ope just destroyed it with his immunity i don't know if he was trying to stop the colette super from coming in or something like that or damage but i may have seen that wrong but i might need a replay on that one nob's actually gonna miss the safe with his super there <laughs> not the best considering there's only 25 seconds left and he needs the damage onto it now he gets another one that actually puts him onto safe with that damage gear they will take the lead sprout super's there as well and they can't really stop the damage coming through they need to clean this up they need to push up and they need to get the defense so man it's got no gadgets left can't recycle this back so nine seconds in a dream for a yeah this is going to be challenging especially if there were to be a sprout wall is that going to be enough oh, it turns out it is beautiful comeback from a and r and to be honest that would have been quite devastating if you know they lost the game to a missed colette super on the safe it's usually a pretty easy target to hit but either way a and r will take the set and semantic looks upset that's not a good look, and I mean, honestly, I would be scared if I was a &R right now. I mean, you've kind of got to be. Foot are not in a good position whatsoever. That's two sets in a row. Super Beach coming up next as well, and we know they might be able to pull some things out of the bag. We might see a little Primo coming in, but then again, a &R might know that there's this tanky approach coming from Semantic, which he seems to be thriving on so, so heavily at the moment. And after that one, it's really going to be difficult for Foot Esports to bring this one back. Two sets up. They need three in a row. And they're usually the ones getting reverse swept, not the ones reverse sweeping, bear in mind. Although, we did, I believe we did see them do a little reverse sweep against BHS in, uh, in case of am correct? I can't quite recall, unfortunately. But, I mean, Foot have highly experienced players that have, you know, been in the sort of situations before that have been able to turn those situations around as well. Stats wise, it's very low damage all around, but especially low for ANR. I just feel like they had better conversion. Those kills they got, they mattered more and gave them more possibilities to get damage on safe. And eventually, ANR were able to steal away that second game that landed them the set. But either way, a win is a win. And now, for the esports, with their backs against the wall, have no more room for mistakes whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, we see it in, quite, in heist quite often when we actually see the pure damage that goes down on the safe. We kind of expect, uh, I mean, the pure damage in, in the actual game, we kind of expect the team with, you know, the kills and damage to be able to get the win. But in heist, it kind of doesn't even go that way a lot of the time. If you get the damage on the opposing brawls, it doesn't matter if you don't get the damage on the safe. So even if you have all the control in the world, it doesn't really matter that much. Max B. Uh, and Stu going to be the bands coming in from a &R. Penny is the first pick from Foot. Their bands are Barley, Dynamite, and Poco. Clearly didn't want to see any of these throwers in here, and you can't really blame them for it. Yeah, throwers are a pesky nuisance 
at the moment, especially with all those unbreakable walls. I like the Penny first pick, it's a very food esports blank pick, especially for Bro Ball, so really don't mind that. Try to stick around with some comfort picks. This is interesting. A and R are gonna go for Nita. Which, you know, usually you would say gets countered by Penny. Uh, so that's an interesting decision there. But I'm sure there's a plan with it. And so far, ANR's drafts have been pretty on point. So I'm expecting there to be a plan with it. Although I'm not entirely sure what it is. Yeah, well, I mean, the plan is feel for, for, for a and R, I think it's pretty decent. I do like what they're bringing to the table. Semantic, you know, you can play that Penny down the mid. I feel that's pretty much the only place you can really play it. They're going to have to add some lanes to this as well. And yes, you can play this Otis down the mid to kind of counteract it. Fat Splats are placed onto it. And I think it's a pretty smart route to go. Uh, I mean, a lot of those, a lot can be tanked to these mutes by the Penny. But M's is always a very strong shout. Did get dominated when we saw it played uh, against Reply Toto and we saw a Primo come in and even do a lot of work against it. So that might be something A&R are going towards. But Foot Esports have this last pick. We know they've been playing tanks a lot, so it wouldn't surprise me if they do choose to do the same yet again. Yeah, will we see that Primo pick coming in? The Nida is going to be a bit of a deterrent towards that. Obviously, Otis is a more obvious counter. No, Ooh. it's going to be a search locked in for Food esports, a bit of a double edged sword. Sometimes it will do fantastically and chain enemies like never before. Sometimes it will struggle a little bit more and stay for pretty much the entirety of the game in, in its first stage, and that can be quite a problem as well. It's a bit of a riskier pick when they aren't have their final pick, and it's gonna be the squeak that will be locked in. I do like it quite a bit, especially if you want to deal with something uh, like the Penny Mortar that's sitting behind walls, you will have much easier access to it and just make sure that that utility is out of the way. Yeah, I mean, overall, I, I, I really think that Surge is a pretty solid pick. We saw Foot Esports play it in the previous game and it worked pretty well. Managed to get the, uh, the win in the end. It was quite a long, grueling set, I believe, but in the end, they did manage to win it out. Squeak, on the other hand, though, I think it's very, very solid. There's a lot of choke points on this map, uh, and, and with pretty much nothing that can break up the map, it, 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 they're going to stay, and they're going to be dangerous for them, and they can take advantage of these kind of uh, these areas. But as I said, we are seeing that Otis down the mid, Squeak down the lane, and uh, so far, for Esports looking good. Semantic gets the upgrade, but gets taken down straight after. And the shot will be caught by Mebius. Able to get the ball away, Mortar placed in as well, and a beautiful knockback Ooh. from Drage. Oh, I thought it might just roll in, but it's not quite just yet. As Rama comes back to defense, and this time around, Semantic is able to walk this one through. With esports with a nice and early goal here, although it did look for a little bit like ANR might just get them out of that position. I mean, that bear just got completely destroyed. Semantic looking for the shots on now. Has his jump as well, but kills coming down in the mid. Maybe he's trying to find the pass through. Semantic might need to jump over that shot to keep nice and healthy. Level three now has this extra range and Nob's missing some shots. Should connect that one though. Semantic's actually going to jump directly on some shots from maybe to avoid that squeak shot. But in the end, managed to live it out. Strange getting aggressed now and eventually another Nita Bear's there. Last one got taken down pretty quickly and this one looks like it might do the same. It has to use a knockback on it though to get rid of it. And only then does Ope come and help. Still over a minute left on the clock, so plenty of time for Aenor to make a comeback, but Foot's positioning is good and defensive as they want it, considering they are a goal out. Semantic let's take a little bit of damage on the right side. Mebius has his super as well, but he's gonna keep it for the time being as Ope finds some very nice connections and takes down Mebius. There's gonna be Relieving quite a bit of pressure. Semantic gonna corner the ball right back up on that right side of the map. And Foot Esports still just very happy to play it safe, play it defensive, and let ANR come to them. Yeah, we're gonna need a connection eventually from this this mute from Mebius, so otherwise they're not gonna be able to push out of this position. Semantic's got jumps, still got some salty barrels there as well, though. Slow over the left hand side, not back, and Rama's gonna fall down to the mortar. This is surely all over for AR here. Mebius, I think he accepts it, kind of gives the ball to them. Getting out a little bit and Semantic will just put it straight back into place. 15 seconds on the clock, and AR are not getting out of this locked spawn area. And I kind of feel in the next one, they might just need a miles better start. Not lose that early on, not feed Semantic as much as he's been dominating this game. 
Yeah, it really has. I mean, to be fair, I don't like ANR's draft very much. I wasn't too sure about Squeak. I know Squeak is not bad here, but I feel like pacing wise is just a little bit slow, and that's typically not really what I like to see from ANR. And Anita for me was a bit lackluster as well, as it really needs to avoid the penny, and then against the, the MC, it just doesn't really have enough damage, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, early on again, Rama is going to be falling as Ope takes him down and Semantic is not going to be fed as many shots, but either way, it's going to be a goal coming in from Food Esports, so a bit of a disaster from ANR. It only took 15 seconds for Food Esports to open up the scoreboard. Yeah, you kind of expect a slow start from Semantic and for Esports rather than the other way around, considering he's still level one. Mute's available now, though. Salty Barrel's just been taken down as well, so shouldn't have another one in hand just yet. Follow up shots from Nob. Rama's trying to find a bear as well. Does find one, throws onto Drage. That'll be huge. Didn't manage to get the stun off, and obviously doesn't have faux fur. Super shots there, but maybe just can't find the way through. Wasted Mute, saved ball, and the slow on the goal was definitely a helping factor in that almost going in as well. Yeah, that was close, but some. A bit of a missed opportunity here for ANR. Semantic still in stage one. Very low HP now as well. Able to find all too many connections just yet. Rama will take a hefty hit there from Drage. Drage that does have super is gonna pump it, but Rama takes him out. Rama trying to go for the goal and doesn't quite manage to line it up in time. The bear. It's going to be placed down on Semantic, a follow-up stun, I believe, that, I mean, there's not going to be anyone too stun at that point. Positioning is good for ANR. Surely, they should be able to score this one eventually, but so far, they're the ones getting pushed back, and it seems like Foot Esports will get them out of position. Uh, I have no clue how ANR haven't scored one of the 50 chances they had there, to be honest, but, you know, well played from Foot Esports for being able to defend out, as they did have some great positioning over there, but, to be honest, they can just leave Semantic here. They've got the mute, they've got to pass through. The mute's there. Rama should be there for the receiver of the ball, and he is. Semantic's still sat up top on the map, and he can't do anything to defend that. ANR are going to take this goal, even things out, and have a little bit of a lifeline in this game now. Now, over time, is also a little bit of a scary prospect for ANR, in my opinion, so we'll see how... That actually works out. A nice pickup from Mebius. Semantic going aggressive, probably close to his super, which is why he's so daring. And yeah, he was two shots away. Not quite able to take knockdown, however. Mortar is still going to be annoying in that position. And eventually, Nob is able to take it out. As Mebius has his super, was considering if he could find an angle maybe to go for a super shot. Instead, going to play it safe and make sure to play with his team, try to find a team wipe instead. Nice connection from Nob there, and Semantic brings him low, but Drake's doing a good job over the right-hand side. It's Rama just keeping him at arm's length. Pass up might be there, and Nob shouldn't be too far away from a super. I believe he did kind of just use it, so not close, but within a few shots, maybe he'll be able to get another one. Two shots connected to Semantic there as he walks over it again. Maybe he's still got this mute, but can't find the right target to use it on, and maybe M's would be the answer. Super going to be thrown out once more from Nob to no avail once again. Now follow-up shots and still got this mute, but can't feed Semantic level 2, so doesn't want to aggress too far. 20 seconds on the clock, and this might be played for a draw here. It might be, but there might be a chance here to go oh. more aggressive, especially if the M's falls. A 2-on-2 two two now, Mebius has a charged shot, needs to be careful how he uses it. The mortar to knock him back, and that will just about save it here for food. Otherwise, it would probably have been a match point there in the hands of ANR. A draw it is. And Food Esports will keep the lead in this set. Still need to be careful because that game was a whole lot closer than the previous one. Definitely so. And I mean, they just need the start to be less on the side of Food Esports. Like they've, they've been taken an early deficit both games and eventually managed to claw the second one back. But the first one, there was just no chance of them managing to do that whatsoever. Rama just trying to stay in this position where he won't be damaged a lot by Drage and Ope is not in a position to pinch him. Gets a nice little follow-up after a failed knockback. Semantic's got this gadget activated as well, but Bear's there. Can't follow it in because the Benny's going to splash through, through that follow-up. And I believe the stun might be there as well. Nob goes for the shot and Drage, I don't know if he didn't have a knockback or he didn't use one, but they tried baiting it out. Stun going to be missed by Rama once more. Semantic's going to get the ball. Waste is super and that's wasting upgrade along with it as well. Nice stuff as not Rama's got his super, Nob's got his super, and Foot Esports are 1-0 down for a change instead of 1-0. Yeah, I was about to say that's the first time in the set that AR 
are not massively behind, really, as they have had to attempt a comeback in game one. Successfully did in game two, but weren't quite able to convert that into a win. And Rage is aggressive on the left, gets punished for it just a little bit, but nothing too problematic just yet. The slow now, though, is going to be more dangerous. It's, he does have a super of his own. That connection from Knob is going to claim the kill. Rupe still has a turret nicely placed on the top left. Semantic aggressive against Ram is able to find the kill. Bull is cornered up and NR are approaching things very safely. Again, they're giving food just a little bit of a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, trying to find the connection now. Residue's going to be there, and Drage is going to be slowed once more, but survives that one this time. Super thrown into the mid, and a lot of it soaked up by that salty barrel. Nice stuff from him. Samantha just looking for this level 3 now. Eventually finds it, but Drage going to fall over the left-hand side, so not the biggest help whatsoever anyway, especially when they just sat so heavily behind these walls. It might take an M Super to be able to break this in the slightest. There is going to be placed down a stun that connects onto Semantic, and that results in bit of free kill here for ANR. 30 seconds left, and for the esports, haven't really put foot past the middle line of the map. Still looking to make a play, but as time is ticking, their chances are getting lower and lower. Nice jump in from Semantic, picks up a very valuable kill. But is that going to be enough? Mebius has his mute. It's going to be a 2v1, no Semantic. Still looking for an opportunity, he should be able to walk this one in, he will do just that, and just in the nick of time. Foot Esports, even things out, Semantic, gonna be hitting stage 3 in overtime, which is gonna be perfect for him as well. But Ope needs to be careful, is able to knock Ram off the ball. The bear is gonna be moving upwards and taking care of, as everyone is pretty low HP on the side of Foot. Single mistake, and it might be a match point for NR. Got some nice heals off though, and two supers on the side of Fort, but one on the side of AR. Just not trying to reach for his now, but Rama aggressing the penny can soak up a few of these shots to get some control. As the mortar's not gonna do too much at the moment, throws it aggressively, and that's not gonna do even that's gonna do even less than I thought it would. Semantic's very low. Super's there for Nob, but can't find the shot off. Doesn't manage it. Semantic's very, very low, but Meb is as well. No killing blow from Ope though. Rama looking for the pass forward, but no supers anywhere to be seen. And it looks like we're going for another draw. Both teams are refusing to win, it seems like, but with three seconds left, the final pass, and Ooh. just in the nick of time, Food Esports will be locking in this game, and set. And Semantic gets a happier face than the one we had earlier. That was close, very close, but Food managing their time just so well. First of all, getting into overtime was in the last two seconds, and the final goal was the final second on the screen. You love to see it. I mean, that is literally as close as it gets for Foot Esports there. They needed that win. And, you know, another draw, it wouldn't have really made the biggest of differences as they seem to be fairly in control of the set, I would say, in comparison to what we saw from uh, from A&R. But at the end of the day, you know, one goal scored by A&R would put them on match point, and that's a lot of momentum in their favor. That's some good mindsets for A&R as well. But now, there's this like, there's not a likelihood, but a chance of a reverse sweep from Foot Esports. If they can get this next one on the table, they're going to be able to have momentum. They're going to have to have everything pretty much on their side for them to be able to go down and take A&R off the map. And you know, they're, they're looking for some revenge after the Snapdragon Pro Series uh, M A brawl as well. So definitely needs to needs to make something happen for Foot and take this to a fifth set here. Yeah, it, they definitely want that revenge. They got locked out of Tokyo last week. Looking at the stats here, I mean, there's one side that is very, very overwhelming. That's going to be on, on, on Nop side of things. 228 DPS and 16 kills. He's been putting in a lot of work in this one, and yet it wasn't quite enough for Aenar. It was close, to be fair. It really felt like they with a couple opportunities there that could have uh, secured it in three sets. But Foot Esports are bringing it to at least a fourth set now. Let's see if this is going to be biting ANR back later on or if Food Esports are at the start of a comeback. Well, it's going to be Bells Rock yet again. We saw it in the previous. And this is uh, the map that we saw dominate for Zeta Division. So 
going to see and hopefully some more from that from foot so we can see a set number five between these two teams as that is what we're here for close game close matches max is going to be the first pick from foot esports and we know that is a pick that Ope loves yeah the max has been one of his uh, preferred picks and we did see earlier how going for some comfort picks can really go a long way for the esports, making sure to capitalize with those sort of ideas is RT. Well, you know, we're talking comfort picks, the complete opposite here. The newest brawler is gonna be the first pick here for AR as they lock in RT and B, which I mean makes sense as well since B has a lot of damage, it's a bit of a problem for RT to deal with. I'm still not entirely convinced by RT as a, as, as a whole. I feel like I've said it every single time he's been picked. But to be honest, it, it's been the case a little bit where we've seen him succeed. We've seen him really struggle too. And I feel like we have yet to really see where his place is in the current meta. Well, Brock's going to be the next pickup from Foot Esports, and I like this a little bit more as well. Going to have that explosion radius, a little bit easier to hit shots, and with a bit of max speed as well, you can get in and out without getting hit, and you can also proceed to hit a few shots yourself as well. Incendiary going to be lingering on the floor also. Gives a good amount of area control quite a lot of time as well. Still got this last pick as well, but A&R are obviously going to have this sixth and final pick to be able to try and counter out what everything for Esports has. We saw roughs be used pretty successfully here earlier by Zeta Division, and could be used again but nanny is going to be the pick just in case they go something even more long range uh, to add to their two long range balls they already have yeah I, I like the brock to be honest i feel like with the unbreakable walls every wall break is going to be a bit more strategical and you need to be uh, more decisive with which areas you want to open up it's probably just gonna be the last pick which is an interesting one interesting one considering the brock is there then again, there are those unbreakable walls, which means that you can utilize them all the way until the end of the game, no matter what has or has not been destroyed by the Brock. Overall, I don't really know what to think here, because the, the come from Foot Esports makes more sense to me, but a &R, I, I mean, they've shown us before they knew how to make RT work. They've played him once, I believe, so far, and I've had 100% win rate with it, so going with that, it might very much work. I just, I, I, I don't think he's that easy to, to actually execute. But let's find out as we jump into set four. Let's see how things go now. Ope getting hit pretty hard off the start. Drage obviously did open up this wall and it was pretty helpful with Nob going to be the main annoyance on this map at least. Drage getting hit early on and 3k now in the hands of Mebius. So a little bit careful about not being hit by that or he will fall. Wall available by Nob and he might just throw this up and Play it. Oh, oh, I thought he was gonna be able to trap it Ope there, but he does just narrowly avoid it. Drage low though, getting pinched in and he's taken down. Left hand side, we see another member of Foot Esports fall as well. And this is the ANR we saw in the first two sets, and a little bit less than the one we saw in the previous one. I like that Nob didn't take back his wall instead, went in for it, that final kill and was able to uh, feed himself another wall. Regardless, it's a nice value there. Drage gonna open up the left side a bit more. Nob was an aggressive wall. Wall that gets destroyed immediately by Drage and can't afford to do that. Still, they need to be careful. Nob is one shot and Semantic is gonna be the one to find the connection beautifully done. Rama trying his best to pick up the pieces and make something happen, try to bring it back. Because ideally, they don't go to that third round. However, it's looking more and more likely, especially now that Rama went down. Mebius is going to be falling back as the gas should be spawning in soon. He doesn't want to feed any more supers. Yeah, smart decision. Semantic has this though, and Ope has his. Just Drage, who's kind of waiting on his one. It should only be a couple of shots off. But Rama, his super's really going to be that useful, I feel, unless they get into these closing few seconds where it's really going to start to become explosive, but not very, very low. Rama forced to tank for him, and Mebius come across as well to relieve some of that pressure, but... Still not the best start for AR in this third round of this first game of knockout. A few connecting shots from Rama now though, and turn stender still available from Semantic, so a lot of damage can be returned. Yeah, the Rocket Rain is not gonna find a whole lot there for Drage. Semantic and Drage both tanked up quite heavily, but to be fair, 
Most plays from AR lost a lot of HP in this early interaction as well. Not places down a wall and gets instantly destroyed. I'm not sure if it was a peep or a gadget from Drage. And I missed out on that, but Semantic is gonna get locked out, and that should be an easy kill. No, very low HP, but either way, it's Ope in a 1v3. They'll have max speed, but he needs a miracle if he wants to turn this one around. And there won't be any miracles just yet. Match point now for Adar. I mean, AR are looking so, so good. There was a certain point there where for esports did seem like they were going to be able to take that one. If the rocket rain connected from Drage, if they had a little bit more of a pinch on it when he did use it, probably would have ended out better. But AR are honestly looking so, so good, and they're just not using this this RT aggressive. They're just using it as this long range kind of mark someone up, have that extra shot, do uh, do some more damage. And that wall break from Drage is even worse than the previous. Not even getting all the walls down now, both marked up on OPA and Semantic, but Return Sender would be coming in pretty swiftly if it did almost connect. OPA was low, was forced to face shift away, but Mebius is going to take him down this time. Drage also in an awful position. Semantic left in a 1v3, and there's no supers to be fed as everyone on ANR already has one. That means all three get carried over. Not sure who would have as many in their pocket as Mebius will get tagged up very heavily. It's not going to take him down, but it's going to force him to stay back and heal up. Great stuff now, they are forced back. Nob not in the best positions at all. Rama's gonna go down. Mebius has this 3k, needs to try and connect it, but also he's gonna go down if he hits it on Semantic and it gets returned to him. Ope low and has to face shift away. Still gonna play for this one. They're gonna use the walls, they're gonna use everything they've got to try and win it. Drage very, very low, and he might fall there. Ope coming over for the tank, but he also is low. They might be able to spin this one round if they manage to get these connecting shots. Mebius surviving out just a little bit longer. Managing to evade these shots so, so well, and AR's dukes are really on point. Nob. Puts himself in this awful position though, and that's him going to be going down. And the 3v1 is something that Mebius cannot win. Yeah, it really felt like they weren't far off on the side of AR to bring this one back, nearly taking down uh, Semantic first, and then it was uh, Ope, I believe. Yeah, but uh, either way, it is going to be for the esports that live to find another day. And let's see if this one is going to be their last, anyways. No, it seems not like. That's going to be the case because already early on, there's a nice Ooh. pickup that does get traded out as Rama will be evening things out and bringing things back to a 2 1 2. Ope is very low as well, and bear in mind, no phase shift is available. So if that shot hits on another, then it's all going to be over for him. So Manti pops this return center, and then Rama actually just hits him. He just goes for it. Can't really blame him for it. It just reset his healing just a little bit. Still got this extremely good soup for Rama when it starts to close down and the gas pinches in, but we might not get to that at this point. There's Nob, he's sealed him in. He's throwing out two shots, three shots on the connection. AR are going to win it. Four esports are being knocked out, and AR will be our first finalists in the March monthly finals. Incredible work from AR. We saw some glimpses of hope from Foot Esports towards the end, but Rama looking uh, confident but also looking very happy and it's gonna be a face of disappointment for semantic but it's been a work in progress with this current team and we already see some big improvements considering they didn't qualify for the february uh, monthly finals they did qualify this time made it all the way to the semi-finals but unfortunately this month this is where their journey will end yeah, I mean, it's disappointing for Foot, but at least they've got some points on the board, which is more than they had in the previous month. They didn't qualify to last one. They qualified to this one and got to the semi-finals as well. So they're making improvements. And as you said, it's very much a work in progress, that Foot Esports roster. They've still got a lot to work on, and I know they'll work on it because they've got, well, I know for a fact, two of the hardest workers in the scene in Drage and Semantic. Ope needs to kind of match that, and I'm sure he is doing, to be able to try and make this team work because they've obviously got massive amounts of mechanics. They just need to kind of brush up a little bit on that team play, and I'm sure they'll be up there with the best of them. Yeah, I, 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 I feel so confident that Foot will uh, come back with the, the level that we kind of expect from them. It's been a slow start of the year, but I'm really excited to see how they actually evolve as a team and how they progress on the side of AR, and I could not be more excited for them. Look, look how happy he is. It's <laughs> impossible not to love Rama and uh, looking at the stats for this final set. It's 
barely even, all things considered. Just a couple more kills on the side of a and R, and when it's a game where it's all about kills, well, that will make the difference. a and R locking in their spot for the Grand Finals this month, and so far, I mean, really living up to the, to the hype that this roster has around it. Yeah, well, we'll see who the MVP is now. It's going to be Nob. He has played very well, and I will say yet again, a and R have all played very well, and... You know, they, they, they probably all deserve MVP, but as voted by you guys, Nob does come out on top. And yet again, commiserations to Foot Esports, who just looked really, really strong throughout their first game. Second one, just not going to be the one they win to make it to those finals. And ANR are going to be the ones who progress that little bit further. And in my eyes, you know, they, they definitely deserve it. Oh, yeah, they looked better than Foot Esports, uh, let's be honest here. And we kind of expected them to, considering both teams' recent form. But, uh, dude, food, they're, they're not that far behind. Just a little bit more catching up to do, and then I'm sure they'll be flying in no time. I'll tell you what, definitely all three of us didn't predict it, because uh, in my, my mind, I think Ark predicted for esports, right? I'm not sure about that, but turns out he's trying to make himself the prediction master, and I, I think you'll find that's very much my title arc. 3-1 to a and then coming off the back of that one, the rest of the bracket quarterfinals obviously were 3-0 to a uh, to a and r over BHS. Now and ever did lose to Foot Esports, who progressed to face off against A&R now, who have just lost in the next one, Reply Totem versus Zeta Division, who had beaten Mr. Dosa and Ammo Fantasy, uh, respectively. Reply Totem, then, we'll start off with these guys. Joker, Maru, and Mori, they don't need much uh, introduction, as Ark said earlier, but we'll give them one. Joker, Maru, and Mori, just so, so good. I think all three of us have got them down to win this game, but let's not forget, last month, Zeta Division won everything, taking down Reply Totem in the finals. Yeah, it's one of the few teams to stick together after uh, 2022 and getting into 2023, and one of the few teams that were able to do so successfully as well as they made it all the way to second place. They're the runner-ups of the February monthly finals, considered by nearly everyone, I would say, as the best EMEA team of 2022. There's a lot of expectations behind this roster, and they did fail last month at capitalizing and locking in the monthly final. Let's see if they can get their revenge this time against Zeta. Well, let's take a little bit of a look at Zeta then. Jiro, Naui, and Meow going to be the roster of this team. And honestly, they've been really incredible, especially with Inso behind them as well. They've been making really, really big moves. And, you know, last year we kind of saw, it, we, we, well, at least we heard, Rama was the one making all of these compositions and stuff like that for them. And he's gone off and he's been successful himself. He's in the finals now, but it kind of seems like they've stepped up. And with the addition of Inzo, they've been able to make some really good compositions. And I feel like that's kind of majority of the reason why they do so well, this team. Yeah, they've been looking really good. Uh, a slower strategic approach, but not scared to just turn up the pace when need be. And they are in the bootcamp setting now as well. That was one of the massive benefits of joining Zeta Division and uh, an org of that caliber able to give them the support they need to play together. Uh, when I say together, I mean physically in order to improve their, their synergy in game and just get the, the team vibes in order. Uh, it seems like they got some nice cereals on the, on the desk as well in case they need a quick snack. Always uh, staying well fed. You love to see it. But but really, I can't uh, stress enough how important uh, it can be for teams to play together in person, have that energy just uh, you know, flow as a unit between uh, each member of the roster. Yeah, being in person definitely makes it a little bit easier, and it's quite surprising to see Reply Totem not in person, as they usually are at these boot camps over in Italy, uh, especially because well, pretty much all two of the three members are from that place. And look at this. This is not what you expect at all. 72% in favor of Zeta Division. Obviously, with them taking them down to 3-0 last month, it may sway the public just a little bit, but it's definitely not this one side of my eyes. I give it a 50-50 at best. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, we went for Reply Totem. I believe even Ark went for uh, Reply Totem. So we still have faith in Totem, but it's really close. And that was probably the hardest prediction to make all day. As it was last month, and last month Zeta did take it quite convincingly. Draft is kicking in incredibly fast here, as we already have a first pick of Nani for Zeta. Reply Totem going Gus and Eve. We are in shooting star. Our bands are going to be Dick, Sprout, and Grum for Ply Totem, taking out every single thrower at Zeta Division. 
fan out RT, Gene, and Max. Bonnie's going to be their next selection. I do like that. I think obviously it's got that, that tendency to go very aggressive in those certain moments. And if you do it right, if you play it right, then it's going to be pretty much perfect. So smart decision, I think, from Zeta Division to go for that. And yes, it's going to take quite a lot of shots to take down these parasites that Mori's going to be spawning in. And with Eve pretty much being a very dominant mid on this map, now that there's no wall break, you can kind of slide across that water, peek the wall one way, peek the other way, and kind of on that unpredictability of which way you're going to go, which no other brawler can do at this point. And Janet as the last pick from Zeta Division to round out their comp it's uh it's a bit of a i'm not sure how much i like that i don't know if it's got the range to compete with what reply totem have so far and also what more they might pick next i have that final pick to solidify that comp a little bit more on the side of totem i'm gonna go for the car so some aggressive ideas across the board don't mind it per se but I don't know. I feel like both comps have some merit. They're both interesting in their own rights. Don't feel like Janet is particularly strong on Shooting Star at the moment either. Obviously, it is there to deal with uh, the Eve pick and the ha Hatchlings coming in, which are a bit more of a problem for uh, Bonnie and Nani to take care of. But either way, I feel like both comps have their own merit and can uh, make, make it work either way. So as we get into the game now, Blue Star is going to be firmly in the hands of Reply Totem as they go instantly in with this flying hook and they continue this aggression forwards as well. Now over to that left hand side, Jiro going to get pinched in, but Joker getting some heavy fire and now Maru puts himself in a poor position as he gets pinched in by all three members, wastes a spin and obviously he's a flying hook down by going in for the Blue Star as well. Now at a deficit of one start, so it's a vision up. A bit of a disappointing start there from Dota. Maru was over aggressive. He got the blue star as every good car shoot. He got punished afterwards. However, a nice uh, gadget from Joker onto the left hand side will help claim that first kill. Joker will be tanking the peep and doesn't even need to shield up. No stress there as the hatchlings are a little bit confused for a second, but eventually will uh, go down and so does the gadget from Meow as well. Yeah, Joker's going to be eating up that peep with his uh, shield. Nice move to make, and they are still up, so one star still needed, and Mori might be that one star, but he gets to jump out of the drop, the base survives a little bit longer, and that might allow Maru to go aggressive on this right-hand side and try and recover something. They're actually going to wait it out. Still 45 seconds on the clock, so plenty of time for a comeback. They are only one star down as well, so it doesn't matter who it is, but Meow is looking juicy right now. Yeah, he has four stars to his name, and were to go down it would be a bit of a disaster here for Zeta although any kill would do and a oh, beautiful follow-up there as well as Joker gadgets him out of existence and reply totem now suddenly lead by three stars with 15 seconds left this is gonna be the final chance they sacrifice Maru a bit early by my taste he did have the shield to work with but even that wasn't enough Five seconds left. Mari, incredibly low HP. He's jumping away. They're all low. But it's a one for one trade, but a one star difference here will give the win to Reply Totem. But oh my, was that a close one? Yeah, scary stuff there for Reply Totem. And honestly, scary for me as well. My heart was beating in those last few seconds, flying hook away. It was really nice stuff to be able to survive. But as you said, a little bit too early for my taste to go in aggressive with that Carl. Definitely would have been better used to have that kind of, uh, th those leading stars used up at a little bit of a later time when they came a little bit more aggressive and they were a little bit more desperate. You could maybe extend it instead of uh, lose the lead a little bit more. But Joker trying to pinch round into the mid there as Meow. I feel like he's sitting quite nicely, leading in favor of Reply Totem once more. Thanks for the flying hook. Now, low HP, forced to fall back. Joker also needs to be careful because he did get tagged heavily by Garrow. So far, it's just that blue star making up the difference as the hatchlings are placed down by Mari for a chance to maybe push forwards with them. Yeah, peep coming out now, and that should be a free few hits from Maru onto Jiro, but he actually gets away. Little shot does connect, but shield provided by Maru keeps him alive, and I don't think he necessarily needed it, but always worthwhile to make sure. Maru's gonna have this. Baby's coming out now, the pets, and drop the baits can place quite high up, not really getting a lot of value at the moment, considering they're so far cemented in spawn. 
And honestly, I don't think Totem are too sad about that. You know, they, they can take advantage of the aggression that Zeta Division have got to bring in. Joker. Low HP, thank you. Yet another P. Maori also in a pretty bad position. Maori does have his super, and so it's at least one flying hook left, so could decide to aggress at any time and punish his opposition. Gonna be doing that just yet as Maori is uh, also cornered up on the right side, and Maru is going aggressive and gets punished for it. Meow could just fly up if he needs to, because now Zeta Division are leading by one star as we are heading for our final countdown. Yeah, he doesn't really want to take flight as it would make it a 1v2. Try to go for the tank there, actually, as Peeps missed. Shots coming through from Maru, and now they've got control. Can they follow up and finish this one off? They get the kill. The jump in, though, return from Naui. The, the babies are tanking. Maru gets the kill. It's traded out, but it's still in favor of Reply Totem. I didn't even see who went down to start with to start this massive tumble of uh, effects. But Reply Totem come out on top, and they forced the jump out of the Bonnie, and it didn't pay off either. Set was settled in two games and both ended in the most chaotic way possible and then it seems like Reply Totem were the ones striving in that chaos. Let's be honest here, this is already better than their last time uh, they faced each other <laughs> for Reply Totem in the grand finals of the, the February uh, monthly finals because as, as you said they did get swept so it's looking better here for Reply Totem but it was still incredibly close and I'm not sure how repeatable this success was here uh, for, for Reply Totem because it did feel like both games kind of came down to the one. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, you know, it's that the gadgets are just so, so useful from Joker as well. It really is so, so strong. And as you said, you know, they're, they're already doing better, so they're not going to complain, but they would like to make the finals and face off against a and uh, You know, honestly, the, the stats aren't that much in favor of Reply Totem. Damage-wise, Jira was absolutely bossing it, whereas kind of the rest of his team were a little bit lacking behind, and it kind of seems like all of Reply Totem weren't doing that much, but Joker with four kills, and a lot of them down to those gadgets, I will say as well, really coming in as a bit of a saving grace. Well, double switch is going to be up next, and that's going to be a very different vibe. More aggressive, and the bushes enable you to... It's lots of speed gears and vision gears that are often at play here and it's one of the maps which i think did change the meta quite a bit as we started seeing uh, the more versatile mids it's always something i like to bring up but i think it's uh, a very interesting fresh facet to the game and bro is like pro demonstrate exactly that he can be played on lane which is typically where you'll see him but if need be, if your mid has a really bad matchup against uh, his, his opposition, you can swap over very nicely and it still works quite nicely with his range, with his features. So I like that aspect a lot that you see very often on double swoosh and that you can really capitalize on with brawlers like Crow. Yeah, I always do like the Pam though, I will say, you know, kind of like... You're really liking the Crow, or I just think Pam's so, so strong, and especially against the Crow as well, I feel, you know, when you can establish a turret, whether that be kind of behind the, the little right-hand side wall, or if you play on the left-hand side just a little bit more defensively, or you can place it that even further aggressively uh, if you manage to get all the way up there as well. But Maury's going to be taking the Sandy now. It's the second pick for Reply Totem, and Sandy's been kind of bursting further and further into the meta. We see it was actually Reply Totem who played it a little bit earlier on in, uh, in Hard Rock Mine, so whether they'll be able to have the same success or not is the question, and honestly, they didn't have that much success with the Brawler until it got a super, then it really started to show its worth. Yeah, I feel like it's a little bit the, the name of the game for Sandy, to be honest. Very reliant on, on the super to provide all the utility you need for your team. Sometimes a little bit lackluster without it. So Amber is going to be the second pick for Zeta Division. I like it here. I know Ark loves Amber especially on a map like this. I don't mind it. I, I, I think the utility from burning up the bushes is super useful for sure. But I do feel like sometimes it does struggle a little bit uh, because it, it, the, the mid range where it really shines uh, it, it's just often not quite allowed by, by your opposition where they will either get up close enough to be a nightmare to you and, and win the matchup or uh, far enough that you can kind of play uh, around your range as well. Mr. P is the, the real head scratcher here for me um we saw him played once earlier by a fillion 
uh, uh, earlier this morning uh, with pretty much no success whatsoever. That was on Hard Rock Mine. We'll see the Mortis now from there. What is... This rap was so normal and then suddenly the two last picks are the craziest ones of the entire day. Well, I mean, Immortus, to be fair, has kind of a bit of a say in this, right? You're against the Amber, you're against the Mr. P. Kind of makes sense to bring something like that in, something aggressive. But to start with, I don't know why they brought Mr. P out to start with. It was maybe a little bit questionable, but um, let's see how it plays out, because I'm intrigued to see if they can really make this Mr. P work or if they're just going to get completely dominated by the aggressive Mortis. And at the end of the day, I'm surprised they even went Mortis instead of something like Sam or something, you know, more aggressive that uh, we've, we've kind of seen being in the meta a little more recently. Well, I guess Mortis deals maybe a tiny little bit better with the Crow Slows, just because he can dash and th those aren't affected by the Crow Slows. I don't know. I'm, you know, going for a little bit of a stretch here but to be fair i don't mind having to justify a mortis pick it's been a rare occurrence lately in the bsc doesn't up going down but he's been doing a good job so far it was uh the gem carrier that did fall earlier for reply totem causing a little bit of a problem to that extent as meow does have his super now as well so he's gonna be quite evasive if the mortis were to get up close yeah, well, with this kind of burned down now, it's definitely a bit of an issue, but Mario looking for the gem carrier. Gonna have that super as well, finds it, gets the heals. Gonna try dash out, bring those gems to his team. What a play! I mean, we can't question the Mortis anymore, can we? Because that was just incredible. He gets the kill, brings the gems back to his gem carrier, and Joker can't be far off a super either. If he finds Naui here with this stun, he should be able to get one back, but actually goes a little bit too preemptive. But Mario's off in again. He's coming back for more, gets the kill once more. Super gonna be wasted though, but Crow jumps in to try and evade him. Super available from Joker. The countdown starts and it's working dude maru was literally a human gene pool he went in took the gems brought them back incredible stuff from him as reply totem will be locking in the first game of gem grab and zeta division i mean it looks like they just got out drafted mate it's quite uh, aside they were one of the teams that had the most solid drafts last year and so far uh, they are able to repeat that quite nicely here. It does seem as well that they learned a lot from their mistakes. As, I mean, you know, there was one team that they needed to study more than any other this year, and that's been Zeta, just because they were the only ones to really beat them this consistently. Let's see, though, how this second game of Gem Grab is gonna go, as we have a bit of an awkward fight across the board but it is going to result in a two for one trade in favor of reply totem yeah joker just survives that one as well surviving with those f four gems on a narrow amount of hp this grass being burned down now didn't seem to stop maru last time and i don't think it's going to stop him again he's got the coil snake ready to go here and jiro just going to step out the bush he's going to get absolutely obliterated super follows up once again and pam should be able to finish me off there and even if he doesn't he's done the same again he's brought the gems back to joker and he does go down but it doesn't really matter I love it. I honestly love the, the, the idea. It's working so well as well for Reply Totem. Zeta need to figure something out as Maru is going to be falling this time around. Joker also low HP and as a Sandy, can't really afford to play too aggressive in that sort of position. Maru has a healing station. He's going to place it down more aggressively on the right hand side as Maru goes in is able to get the kill this time around but the burn will trade it out once more it's going to be a little bit of the danger with that interaction that if the mortis is too low hp he'll just burn down to his demise got to be one shot off a super at this point because he's been playing for it near the entire game maru just needs to try and open up some room for him to either pick up this last gem or just get the kills and move out with the gems himself gonna go in he's not gonna be able to get that kill once more and just trying to work for his super they've got a bit of time they know they can turn this one around even if the countdown starts for zeta they've definitely still got a bit of a foot in the door oh well, there it is maru going in and he's gonna miss the bats garrow was so close to him as well that would have been a fantastic pickup instead it's gonna be a countdown locked in for zeta division and this could be a problematic one. 11 gems now as well. 
I think they might still have time with a respawn. They should have time for another gem to respawn, although I'm not 100% positive on that one. Two, one, Ooh. does spawn, but it spawns on the wrong side. Either way, even if it did spawn on the right side, I don't think Joker would have been able to get there on his own and get out of there, more importantly. That is gonna be a game locked in for Zeta Division, their first so far, compared to the three games that uh, Totem got in a row. Uh, earlier. Let's see if that's going to be enough to build up some momentum and contest this set. As Zeta Division, they don't want to let Reply Totem be two sets up. Yeah, it definitely seemed like they managed to handle the Mortis just a little bit better, and yes, he, he definitely should have got the kill. Could have auto-aimed that super instead of being greedy and trying to get more heals off it than just getting the kill and getting back with the gems. But, chose to try and play his heart out and I mean, at this point, stun comes in from Joker, can't be far off a super, but didn't actually get one in the entirety of the last game, I don't think. Yeah, I don't remember seeing any, to be honest, which, to be fair, as a gem carrier, it's not really your role to go aggressive and, and try to uh, change supers, but it is always welcome, and with the lack of range, it can be a bit of a, a problem getting in that sort of situation. Miao was a beautiful jump in, and that one is going to result in the gem carrier falling and already nine gems being locked in by Zeta Division. Yeah, Maru's going to get slowed out there. Another jump comes in. Joker gets the stun off onto him, but they're going to be too late to be healing up here. They're still burning down from this crow damage. Maru is the only one who can really turn this thing around. Maori gets the super, might have some heals off here. Going in now. He misses the shot. He misses the shot, and I might have not even been able to do it anyway. Maybe if he got that one, he would have got a super and finished it off. But they oh, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sealing it off too early. He comes in and gets a couple of shots off 50 HP. If he could drop the super there, that's that's a reset. I think it was all calculated. Personally, I, I think that was all calculated. They just they counted the damage in their head, you know. <laughs> no, that was that was quite yeah, lucky. Sure. That was quite lucky. <laughs> but at this point, say that they'll take it because until then, I mean, they lost three games in a row. They were able to come back very nicely and now suddenly we're all even and honestly this is gonna shut down a little bit of that momentum from totem especially considering you know how um extreme of a last pick they had with the mortis and how dominant they made it look in the first game i mean props to zeta division for being able to still shut that down and reset from from there on because it really looked and i feel like you know nine teams out of ten they would have said i drafted ggs go next set you know but zeta division just didn't give up and were able to fine-tune their strategy to shut down maru much more efficiently in games two and three and make him look like you know a bad pick yeah it was really nice adaptation from Zeta division really because reply totally came out swinging in the first the mortis was doing so so much but in the second and third, it was kind of the opposite. He really wasn't able to get those chain supers as much, and he did get quite greedy in the second, where they probably could have tied off the game if he just used his super directly on the Mr. P and brought the gems back a little bit further to uh, to Joker once more. But at the end of the day, you can't really be able to expect to win a game if you're not getting the Sandy supers. If you're playing so passively and just trying to let your Mortis do everything, it's not really going to work regardless of how well uh, Mortis does counter the opposition. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I agree. I mean, DPS also somewhat translates in, in how many supers you get, right? And considering the lowest one was still above 200 on side of Zeta and Joker at 77, uh, it's a pretty drastic difference and it does show uh, qu quite heavily uh, how much of a difference it makes in the amount of supers that he was able to, to, to bring in, which I really don't remember seeing any in the entirety of the set, really, maybe one or two, but... That's uh, being optimistic here, to be honest, and uh, that needs to be uh, approached differently as we move forward here. And off the bat, it's gonna be an RT first pick here for out in the open, instead of reply totem met immediately by the Brock for Zeta's pick. The bands are gonna be Max, Bunny, and Tick for reply totem as Zeta Division themselves decided to ban out Gene, Eve, and Max, and we'll see the Gus to follow uh, alongside that Brock pick. I mean, I like Zeta Vision's comp so far, but you can never count out that LT nowadays. It just seems to be quite strong. You know, we saw uh, some, some previous teams playing it in, in maps like this where it's so open. Um, 
it's dangerous. It really is. You don't even have to go into the, the, the more aggressive form where you're leaving your legs behind and going forwards. Piper and Janet are going to be the next two picks for reply so and go for a bit more of a ranged approach. I like where they're going with that, and the Piper's always going to be pretty solid, especially against the Brock, stuff like that. You hit him, follow him with a homemade recipe, and he's pretty much off the map. Yeah, to be honest, what I like a lot was the, the, the RT uh, to that extent, as you mentioned on, on open maps, is you don't need to use your, your form when, you know, he splits in half. I, I'll call it a split form, I guess that makes the most sense. Um, but you can still use it if anyone gets over aggressive and gets up close. I mean, it's a one shot against like nearly every brawl in the game, right? Uh, and if not, it's a two shot. Uh, so I, I kind of like that opportunity as well as it will uh, indirectly shut down tanker and assassin ideas. We'll see the Sprung as the final pick here for Zeta Division. It's a brawler that I don't necessarily mind here but I don't particularly love it either. I feel like it can be a little bit lackluster and uh, at times fail to really provide the, the value that you expect from a Sprout. It's one of those brawlers that has so much utility, but there's just no, uh, there's not, not nearly as many uh, amazing spots to place on your wall as I would like. Yeah, there's not really that many choke points once you kind of get past the spawn and get into more established fights. Mori down this left-hand side, looking for just a few shots onto Meow. Maybe he can get a quick little snipe off and a finish, but so far he's not really had the most luck. Choking out with his homemade recipe out. He's waiting for Maru to maybe make a connection so he can pinch out Jiro. Gets the shots off and forces him to jump back, which means they're going to have a bit of control this mid now. It's a 2v3, but he's looping around quite quick because he's healed up. Mari struggling to find too many tanks so far. I think that was the first shot he's hit so far onto Meow. Another jump back from the Brock. He's been burning through his gadgets. Only one left now. Interestingly enough, not playing the break as well, which you would kind of expect on this map, just to get easier access to the mid. A nice pickup, though, from Garrow onto Joker. It was stuck in that awkward corner. Now we will find Maori, and that's going to be the team wipe here for Zeta Division. Zeta, for the first time in this match, now taking over the lead. It's only by one round so far, but it's the lead nevertheless. Yeah, there's the wall boat from Joker, so we can actually retreat a little bit further than where he got to last time and pinched off. Mori, some good follow-up shots. Homemade recipe goes towards now. He would actually misses regardless of him popping that shield. Wasn't necessary, but you always have to be cautious. And you're against a Piper with that kind of ability. Meow just trying to push this to right side now. A little bit of a swap. As Maru really hasn't... I don't even know if Maru's hit a shot this entire game. Never mind. Really done too much. Wall was placed up quite high but instantly brought back as Jiro threw a super onto it. Very defensive on Zeta's side. Positioning looking a little bit better for Totem but I'm just not entirely sure about their comp. Joker looking to jump back and he will open up the walls which again i'm not entirely sure about we'll remove some bushes which is definitely useful as meow gets tagged up quite heavily this has to end up in a kill as mari is pushing forwards and yeah that's a moment where the second form comes in he splits up and helps the rest of his team pick up that team wipe now we're all even again one round each and both teams one away from taking the first game of knockout Mario just looking for some shots around the left-hand side again, and Mario actually has control of this right -hand side now. I'm not sure if he's got any jumps left. He does still, but... Meow is marked up by one of these RT shots and doesn't actually get hit before it runs out, so just has to replace that one onto him as well, but... It's good control from Totem. Zeta Division really aren't able to push too far out of this spawn, but they've still got to be cautious about overstepping. Yeah, it's still very very slow totem do know that if it comes down to the gas closing out the map the rt is gonna be at its deadliest they showed that in the previous round they want to get to that situation again and not give anything away until then the rocket rain is a bit premature from garo but it does create some space maru getting knocked back and the rt out of the mix meow finding some beautiful connection it's only maru left alive surely he should get shut down here, and that is going to be Zeta Division picking up this first game of Knockout. Quite a strong one as well on their end. 
some opportunities for sure on the set of reply totem but so far again the rt just missing the mark a little bit to my eyes yeah and no, i do think the same you know it, it, when it got hit it pretty much just keeps on getting hit especially when sprout established that wall he can't do anything and then he just gets pinched in whilst trying to pinch with joker and it just didn't pay off whatsoever a little bit of a swap once again as jiro comes towards this left hand side and mario going straight back over towards uh, meow so this seems like the matches they want as they're not the ones rotating but maury's kind of moving away and they've pretty much just given zeta so much control yeah to be honest i am bashing on the rt i think the biggest problem was the Janet, as it was just not really finding any value, which is a rare thing to see when Maru is the one rocking it, because he's been such a fantastic Janet in the past, but he's getting outranged by everyone. So it's a bit of a struggle to that extent. And the fact that he has piercing shots and AoE damage provides little to no use in this uh, particular matchup, as there is no utility to destroy or nothing that uh, can really get in his uh, way. But Garo is going to be so low. Mari following up, and that's a beautiful kill there. Great team synergy as well from Fly Totem to single out that player. But Maru is giving himself away. It got a little bit scary for a second, but they should be able to dispatch of Naui with ease. Still a little bit closer than I would have uh, liked to see here, all things considered. Joker looking to open up the walls and provide an easier access to the mid for this round and even for the next one. Yeah, well, we kind of rotated back over to see Maru versus Meow now over the left side. And Joker, oh, what a homemade recipe there. He finds it out. Jiro doesn't have any gadgets left by the sounds of things or just used it. Wasn't keeping a close eye on that right hand side, but Mori now finding himself in a great position down there. Doesn't want to overextend too much as now he can clean, clean him up quite nicely with a little gadget, a little super onto himself. So it's going to be a little bit cautious, but for now, they're in a great position. 3v2 and safety division not really able to move anywhere. Yeah, let's get a wall. Now he has a shield as well. They need to use them eventually. Now we're going to be jumping back to safety. He's, he's using the jump rather than the drop to base gadget. Joker is so incredibly low. He still stands for now and it should be smooth like butter here for Reply Totem, but they're giving away a player. Sprout wall is going to be placed again and it's a 2v1, Meow, and oh. oh my goodness, Meow hits both with just a one shot, and what was the freest round ever turns out to be around for Zeta Division now. Why didn't they just spread out? <laughs> they, they, they could have just took, I mean, even if it took one shot for each of them, it would have probably died to the zone rather than actually be able to get the kills. So definitely a little bit of an issue there for Apply Totem, and now it's only one round away from them being two sets to one. And in a terrible position from there, Joker now one shot for the Sprout, but managed to retreat and had his jump anyway. But if he is forced to jump away, he's not going to have the best control of the greater map. Now, looking for a little wall down this right hand side by the looks of things, and Jiro can't aggress too much because he is marked up by that RT and uh, doesn't want to feed him another shot onto him just too yet. Just coming back to that play for a second, Joker had this super as well, so he could have just flown up and hoped that the gas would do the rest. Not sure if you would have had time either way to land back. And I mean, it would be very expected where he would land. Either way, getting back into this round. The gas is closing in. Gero getting aggressive. Shield to helping out. Mari low HP, but he gets in, finds one. Gero is in a 1v2 and one that he will not win as Reply Totem do end up taking the game in the end. That means we are back to an even scoreline 1-1 in sets and 1-1 in this particular set I'm, I'm i'm genuinely surprised how long the rt actually survived in that last fight there he should have been killed way 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 before that one shot to sprout one shot to ghost one shot to pretty much everybody on that roster of zeta division but they just couldn't get him down and homemade recipes popped by joker early on but looking for the prime connection right now and doesn't really want to waste it so might want to do like a little combo play with mori onto jiro Well, again, Joker going for that homemade recipe whilst hiding in the bush and trying to escape from, or like not show that to his opposition so he can get that free early tag. 
it's not quite gonna pay off as Garrow just gadgets away anyways. Now placing down a, a wall that will be isolating Joker, but he's forced to play some more defensive one after he gets tagged up. At the end of the day, that's gonna be quite nice for Reply Totem value-wise. That's another gadget is used by Meow. I think he only has one left now. And Mario is very low HP, so is Maru. This is looking rough for Reply Totem as Joker is left in a 1v3, and that's one he shouldn't be winning, but he will break through the wall anyways, which is going to be useful to get back in the mid quicker in round two. Yeah, definitely. So they should be able to have better positioning, at least going in the early portion of this one, but pretty much just provide it to Jiro anyway. Let him go around that side. And, uh... Not really taking advantage of what they broke up. Meow in a great position now, though. Pretty much free to just wall off what they've already broken up, which is probably a smart thing to do. But in comes the jump from Mario and straight away walled, and they're looking for the pinch, but Joker covers nicely for his teammate. Mario going aggressive against Meow, able to find one shot off, but the rocket rain is a problem. And again, Mario falls early. 2v3, and this is a chance for Zeta Division to lock in a set and take the upper hand as they did in the Motley Finals of February. Mari in just such a troublesome situation ends up going down. Joker in a 1v3, and that's one he's not going to be winning. And that means that Zeta Division take the set here. A bit of a wild one all around, but a well deserved one. And now Zeta Division are up by a set. Well, Zeta Division are coming out swinging just like they were last month, and Reply Totem, they're not going to want to lose to him again, especially when they can establish such a point lead. Getting first and then possibly first again and second is a great, great thing to have for Zeta Division. They just need to take down one more set to move on to that final to face off against AR. And to be honest, they're in a good position to do just that. Ring of Fire up next. It is a bit of a totem speciality, I will say. Expect to see Mega maybe banned out by Zeta Division because you don't want to be reaching for that or you don't want to see your opponents reaching for that. But at this point, Zeta Division, they're looking really, really strong, I will say. Uh, and I just don't know if Totem can do it. Yeah, I, I don't know either. I don't know either. I think it was quite a sloppy set here. I mean, uh, draft-wise as well, I feel like they got zero value from the Janet pick. I think the RT did all right, to be honest. I kind of liked it. But really, for me, the Janet was letting down the, the, the entire team. And then afterwards, execution-wise, it was just mistake after mistake. And I feel like they messed up in uh, a lot of uh, different fights. And they, they lost a lot of opportunities as well to try to capitalize on this one because I didn't feel like uh, it was a lost cause either so a bit of a disappointment uh, in, in this knockout set and I agree with you I don't know if they can come back from this especially now that Zeta Division is just a set away from the Grand Finals yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely going to have to be, as you say, a bit of a good draft from uh, from Reply Totem here. I'm not sure about how that like, Janet was meant to work, really. Yes, they kind of brought in the jump gadget, uh, probably trying to play a left-hand side rather than right-hand side, because when you're playing right, it doesn't really get a lot of value, but we saw it playing right-hand side pretty much the entire time, so definitely needs to be a good draft from Reply Totem. However, it's a map they're familiar with. It's a map that's, you know, not really going to be uh, too much of an unfamiliarity for them. Whereas out in the open, you know, it can be a little bit different. Our team might be a bit of influential brawler. And to be honest, again, it might be through the mid, but I'm not sure if they're going to put their faith in it once again. Well, it's only going to be one way to find out. And this draft process is going to be crucial if Reply Totem want to have a chance at seeing those grand finals. They were able to make it to the Grand Finals last month. But they lost them to Zeta Division. This is a chance for revenge here as well. As our bands on the side of Reply Totem, I believe, are going to be uh, the Meg as well as B and Sue. Zeta Division banning out Squeak, also banning Stu and then Max. And the first pick will be Penny on their end, as Reply Totem now have two follow up picks to try to counter it. Yeah, well, clearly didn't want to let that Meg slip over to the Zeta Division side, regardless of how strong they are with it. It's definitely better to not have it in play at all rather than have your opponents play it and you not be able to at that. 
Lola's going to be their first pick, though, and surprising to see Lola picked into Penny. Definitely a little bit of a weird one for a reply totem. Can splash through it pretty easily, and even with that freeze frame, doesn't survive too long, especially if you go down, it's definitely not surviving. And they're going to go with Janet as well. Janet, definitely a versatile brawler. Didn't pay off for them in the last one, but as you said, Maru's very, very capable in that brawler and can make big things happen if they get the right chance. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Janet per se. I think the problem was the matchups. It just was massively outranged by literally everyone. So it wasn't able to get any supers. It wasn't able to give any value. But in the right settings and already here against a Penny, I feel like it has a much better shot, especially if, you know, there's a Salty Barrel or a Mortar that is uh, also in the vicinity. It can be a quite nice value. Turn that Janet pick, we'll see Bell as the follow-up here for Z Division. Always like Bell, it's a bit of a plain pick in my opinion. It's the most standard sharpshooter in the game, I guess. And it just doesn't have all that much to it. Bouncing shots can be nice though, especially if your opponents are playing a little bit too close up together. And obviously, Bell is a pretty fantastic counter to Lola. So it was already two counters to Lola. Uh, that is a little bit of a scary prospect for a play tour. I really like what Zeta Division have got here, I must say. If they can establish a penny turret, if they can get these bell bounces, the penny splashes, the mutes off on the aggressive side as well, then I think they're in a wonderful position. Obviously, Z uh, Reply Totems still have this last pick, and there's always going to be the possibility of them kind of bouncing back and being able to bring something that counters them all, but... Uh, as much as I like Carl, I still think Zeta Division have kind of got what it takes to close this one out here, especially with this composition. I think Zeta have the better comp, I genuinely do, and I think there are ways to make their comp work on the side of Reply Totem, don't get me wrong, and they are a team with incredible mechanics, more so than Zeta as well, but they are gonna need to bring them all out now if they really wanna be standing a chance in this one, because to me Zeta have the momentum and they have the comp, let's see if they can actually close out the match here in four sets or if reply totem want to bring it all the way to a fifth early on already a couple tanks towards joker it's very low hp now and eventually taken out was able to get a little bit of an early start but with that kill, Zeta quite nicely catch up. Meow placing down an aggressive turner, turret, but it will not be able to find all that map value early on. It is Zeta Division, though, that have very nice control so far. And slowly but surely, Joker is trying to push up, but now that he's marked up as well, it's a bit of a dangerous process for him. Well. Joker's marked up. He definitely will be seeing them in much longer, but Jiro misses an auto in there. Nice of him to follow up with the next two, though. Drop the base very, very far back, but Mori's going to pick up this right hand side and might be a good idea for Jiro to focus back on that as Maru picks up the left as well. Got a good 12% lead, but it should quickly be taken away. Joker going to walk over both of these nest eggs on purpose, there, but let's think so. Very good of him to know where exactly they were. Drop the base providing so much help here. Just scouting out this bush, but another mark placed onto Joker. Meow finally getting this knockback with the turret, but not getting the finish off just yet. And Reply Totem are in a great position. Yeah, what a comeback from Totem. They struggled in the early stages of this game. Now they have a 15% lead. There's Garrow all tanked up and Murray having a super on the right lane. They won't be dislodging him from that position anytime soon. They're not really able to create the space they need down in the mid. Joker just juking so nicely. Garrett will be falling and Reply Totem will be locking in the first game of Hot Zone. Their chance now to double down and lock in this set. Take us to a set five and I mean, we wouldn't have this series any other way. Definitely so. And I mean, at this point, Zeta need to fight back, so I feel like if it goes to that set number five, Totem might be able to take it. They've kind of got the momentum on their side at this point, but if they lose this set, then they're definitely not going to be in a good position. Need a much better start and kind of hold it off from there. 
Joker's just playing this mid so, so well, regardless of this range kind of deficit that he's got. He's just duking flawlessly, not getting hit at all, and just staying on the zone time and time again. Very nicely done by Joker. There's a strong early start here for Reply Totem. Yeah, we're going to place down a trap in the mid. Mari going aggressive and claims the kill with the flying hook. Always something fun to see. He will get marked up, but better him than Joker. As he has more mobility and isn't the mid player for Totem. Already passed the 50% threshold and now we will find Joker. So at last something going right for Zeta Division. But they're quite a bit behind by now. Yeah, the mortars eventually there as well. Nest egg thrown quite high up from Jiro up there on the on the point, but flight is going to be used by Maru. Might be able to find Jiro here, but he actually gets the heal off in time. Now he trying to get the takedown onto Mori, and he does just that. But it's Joker still sitting on the zone. Throws an ego out to the side, so he can't even get hit by the splash either, and that is so, so smart from him. Can't even miss a shot at that point. It's a great stuff. Now we get in the mute again, but even though he's destroying the side, Toma still on the mid, no matter what happens. I, I love it. I love the implementation here of the Lola as well, considering how tough the matchups he has. He is doing just such a fantastic job with it and using Diego in more creative ways than we're used to. Mari locking in the final couple of uh, percentages there, and actually it will be Joker that is the one to close this one out. And that means that we are going all the way to set five here between Reply Totem and Zeta Division. Convincing set here from Reply Totem will be carrying over some momentum towards that fifth set. Yeah, you know, this is what we're talking about. It's just being so confident on a map like Ring of Fire. It could not have been better placed in this series. 2-1 to Zeta Division and now 2-2 thanks to that map and thanks to how well they play it. Joker was just playing so, so well and the lanes were winning what they needed to win as well. He was able to avoid so many shots, probably like eight in a row at some point. It was just absolutely ridiculous and kind of more of the same with Bridgely Far. We got that with more long range brawlers where Jukin's going to be a big, big part of who's going to be able to take home the win. And regardless of Zeta Division having, you know, a bit of a say in that first game, you can see it here in terms of percentages, they were 46 35 up. Then it all kind of just fell apart from there and couldn't do a lot after that and that's kind of the issue that they did have and reply totem you know they're a team who's going to persevere who's going to play the long game and be able to make it that far even if they're down they're going to fight to get back up yeah that was a strong showing from reply totem exactly what they needed a convincing set in order to build up some confidence again getting into set five Stats wise, Mari is the one shining the most here. Most skills, most damage, but overall it was still very close and both teams actually have the same exact amount of kills. It's just that Rob Light Totem, they were non-stop in the zone. Joker was very much just there non-stop. Even when he was taking some damage, he wasn't giving it up and he was still making sure to apply enough damage to, to keep his opposition away. And even though he has a little bit less DPS, the bell that he was facing in mid has less HP, so, you know, it, 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 eventually the bell would be low HP and forced back rather than himself. Bridge 2-4 for, for Heist is going to be our fifth and final set here between those two teams, and that one is going to be the map to settle it. Well, I do like this map. I think it's quite a good one to settle as well. Bit of a long range affair, as I did just mention. He's going to pretty much rely heavily on Duke, and if Joker can bring the same Dukes he brought to the last one, then he might be able to do just that and take this game down. But still, Zeta Division, I believe they've already played this one just a little bit earlier on. I think they played it in their first quarterfinal game. And Bell's going to be the first pick from Reply Totem, taken out of Zeta Division's hands this time. And honestly, after the performance in the last set, you could have just left it and just dodged. Waiting for Zeta Division's pick now. 8-bit going to be up next. And nice pick from Zeta Division, I will say, as well. Got that booster on the road. And obviously going to be able to do such a good job. But it's not the best, I will say, against a Bell. So quite surprising to see it being picked into that. And uh, with, with Bell being able to bounce the shots back and forward off the 8-bit turret, it's going to be a bit of a difficult one to, to use. But Nani on top of that as well. Taking the range and taking a lot out 
pretty much indirectly taken out a lot of these long range brawlers. It's probably the right thing to take. And, and the mid range high DPSs as well. It's uh, pretty much good against all of them. I like this approach from Zeta quite a bit, to be honest. I think a bit can be quite strong here. And as you said, it does get countered a little bit by uh, the bell. But I wouldn't say it's necessarily the hardest counter either. It depends on how you play it out. And we'll see the mag brought in by Reply Totem. You mentioned earlier how much they like it. And it seems like they like it enough to bring it here on a map where I don't necessarily love it the most. We'll see the Bonnie as their final pick. And I think this is a pretty competent uh, comp here from Reply Totem. As Zeta Division have one more Brawler to bring to the mix. Let's see what they do, do decide to bring. I like what Reply Totem got so far. They've got the range. Penny's going to be the last pick of Zeta Division. And yet again, I'm going to say, uh, th I like both of these drafts. Zeta Division, they seem to have a pretty convincing one. They're just going to be a little bit cautious about the 8-bit with the bell. Uh, if if Meg can make these pushes towards safe, which is going to be difficult to do, don't get me wrong, uh, then a lot of damage can rain down. And the same with, with the Bonnie jumps and stuff as well. So got to be a little bit cautious if you Zeta Division on that side of things. But if they can keep control, they should be good to go. Yeah, well, let's see how this fifth and final set is going to go down. I feel like both teams can definitely work. Both comps, rather, can definitely work. But it's going to take this fifth and final set to set those two teams apart. Send one to the grand finals and knock the other one out in the semis. Yeah, well, Meg without uh, anything's not really going to get a lot. They're all stuck in the left-hand side, trying to leave a 2% del, and at the moment, that's enough. 5% now, and trying to pinch back, get his mech, and get even more damage off the back of that. But at the moment, the bounces are just going in between them as Joker hit a shot. Going to see the big peep come out now, but mech up the other side just getting so much damage, and the strategy just has not paid off whatsoever. Yeah, I, now that he has a mech, it's it's a whole different story, very much so. Mari went for a jump in, one that a little bit awkward, and Joker luckily is there to help out and make things right. Now we're able to just get more and more damage onto that safe. Eventually, though, he's gonna get out of the mech, and now he's not nearly as much of a problem. A peep as well, looking for Joker, the TP, but doesn't pay off. Mari connects the shot, and he goes down. Garo is next in line as Murray already has a nice two-piece and might even complete the team white. Doesn't seem like he needs to for the team time being. A safe approach will also do and the peep is going to be dodged by Joker. TP behind him, he gets marked up and somehow that ends up being a one-for-one -one trait. It's a bit of a choke here as that surely should have been a free kill. Yeah, at the moment, Totem are quite happy to just chill. Got a nice little jump in there from Mori. As I say, they're happy to chill. They just go aggressive. But now some damage coming in from Gero over this right-hand side. Bounces coming off that turret, but just not yet. Now he's going to go over a nest egg and might fall down because of it. But a miss shot from Joker. He's going to be sped back up again after being slowed from that nest egg. Looking to creep up as Gero places down the damage booster. Gero is going to be out of the mech. Uh, has all given a bit of a chance for Zeta to go for a comeback, but they're still not quite there, and they're not going to be defending Meru. He's not going to be able to close out the safe unless he gets his mech, and he does get it now. Surely they'll be able to hold on to that lead. I'm saying surely, but it's quite close. 14% in it, but it is Reply Totem that gets the first match point of this match. Let's see if Zeta Division have what it takes to fight it off. Yeah, I will say that Reply Totem, although they won that one, it was pretty much just off a, a slightly questionable strategy from Zeta Division off the start, pretty much all stuck in the left-hand lane and just Maru getting that mech and getting some damage off the start of it. So if they can play this one just a little bit more strategically, a little bit better, and not try these questionable strats, then they might be able to bring this one back to a double match point. It was an early mech this time around as well. Mari nicely winning the left lane was a pretty much wasted damage booster to jump in there. A nice TP from now. We know we're looking for the two piece, but it's going to be Garo to find the second kill instead. And 
the division is still going to be very happy with how that played out because it nearly became a disaster early on. They managed to save face for the time being. As they still double stack that left lane, leave Joker free to get connections onto the safe. And to be fair, he doesn't do the most damage on safe, anyways. Maru is going to be knocked out of his mech and means that there's quite a bit less trouble on that right lane. You know, even giving up on the lane for now. Yeah, there's a lot of trouble on the other lanes, though, as Mori's in a bit of an aggressive position, but not back thanks to that turret and a takedown. They all might fall here, but he gets straight back into that tank form as soon as he can. More long-range gameplay. They are a little bit behind on the side of Zayt's division, but nothing. A few shots on safe from an 8-bit or a nanny can't fix. Only 5% now, and Joker just trying to push through mid. Maybe throw a few more shots onto safe, but also, he really does need to pinch as well. The bell shot is going to bounce the one time. Now he finds a nice pickup, a little bit cheeky there, onto Joker, 3%. They got only one, and eventually it's now he's a division in the lead. It's Maru, he's gonna get TP'd on. He does have his mech again. We saw how valuable that is. He needs to find the most value with it, as he managed to do in the previous game. This game so far, he hasn't been able to shine nearly as much. Maru gonna oh. get pushed over by the peep, and I mean, you know, you gotta improvise sometimes, and Maru does that very nicely here. Still Zeta Division with a little bit of a lead. Joker and Maru trying to get some damage onto that safe. They are able to catch up, but is that gonna be enough? Because there's three players from Zeta Division, make it two, sorry, that are pushing downwards as well, and surely they'll have enough damage to make the difference. We are going to double match point. Would not want it any other way. Zeta Division managed to take this one. And as I said, you know, if they just play it a little bit less scrappy and straight down one lane and try to do these complicated tactics, then they should be fine. Like, they spaced out a little bit more. 8-bit was holding the right-hand side really, really well. And they might have doubled the left at certain certain circumstances, but that's just because Maru is pretty much fine to be left alone. Uh, but Joker going to be playing the left-hand lane, and it seems like we might have a little bit of a little bit of change of strategy from Totem here. And Joker... Overextending his welcome there, and how he gets to pick up as well. And very low HP across the board, but they all survive on the side of Zeta. They are taking quite hefty damage onto their safe as well. As Maru was able to get his mech and find some good value onto that red safe. Mortar is going to be placed down, and they are going for a base race on the side of Zeta. But it's not working out whatsoever. It's only now he left alive, he gets dealt with as well. And it's a 14% advantage for Zeta Division, but the positioning is going to be better for Reply Totem now. Yeah, Meg going to be looking for this mech as well, does find it. That's going to be Meow down, surely. Solid Barrel in front, but still not mattering too much. Connection from Joker onto Jiro will go a long way here. Needs to bring him down, finds one, but he guts to heal in between. Not the best position for him to be in. Going to see that peep hitting him as well and bringing him down 1% in the lead. Maru's going to be soon out of this mech, and uh, they're going to have a much, much more difficult time. Yeah, the mech running out now. Maru is uh, back to its regular form. Still, Totem was ever so slight lead for the time being. Garo still holding on nicely to that left side as well. The TP there from Naui is going to be a free kill. That's the chance to overextend that lead as a damage booster. Thanks very nicely for Garo. And that might just do it here for Zeta Division. A single bullet connecting onto that safe will secure it. Reply Totem aren't giving up just yet. However, that kill should very much settle it. They get in range, they get the connection. And Zeta Division are going to the Grand Finals again as they will beat Reply Totem just like they did last month. This time around, it was a whole lot closer. A little bit of a choke towards the end from Totem. But Zeta Division looking incredible and making sure that they are still able to try to double down and win their second monthly final of the year potentially. 
I think we might have found Reply Totem's kryptonite this year, to be honest with you. They've stuck with the same roster that seems to be succeeding for the most part, but every time they face Zeta, it definitely doesn't start to succeed after that. We're going to see them take down them in the finals last month and in the semis this month, extending their lead over them even further and solidifying themselves in first place, I believe, because a and I don't think they can overtake them even with a win. It's a really nice positioning for them to be in. Definitely, definitely where they want to be uh, right now. And just Totem don't look like they used to. They're not as scary for a team like Zeta Division anymore. And Zeta, I mean, they're on top of the region at this point. Yeah, they're looking very, very fierce. And it, it does feel a bit like Enzo, you know, has the inside information as well to make sure that Zeta have everything they need to know to try to deal with that Reply Totem team. Because to me, I still think Reply Totem might be the best team in the region. I just feel like Zeta Division, you know, when it comes to this matchup, are, are just better at it. I don't know. It's a bit of a weird one. But Zeta, they're on top of the world right now because this is also, no matter what, even if they were to lose the Grand Finals against ANR, uh, this would really help solidify their points in the region. Our MVP here is going to be Meow. Very much deserves so as well. He had a fantastic match all around. But props to Zeta Division for just winning twice in a row in monthly finals against Reply Totem. I mean, it, it genuinely is deserved, you know. Uh, Zeta Division, they just look so good. Meow looks good. And as I said about pretty much every roster at the moment, they might be an MVP, but the whole team just played as a, a great cohesive unit. And as you say, Inzo might have these insights, but even with the insights, you've still got to play it really, really well. You've still got to draft really, really well. And at the end of the day, Zeta Division move on to the finals arc. Yeah, really exciting stuff. Honestly, that was a joy to watch from the sidelines. But uh, yeah, really, really convincing. Still Zeta looking so, so strong, aren't they? Let's be honest. But uh, Reply Totem gave them a really good run for their money. Could have been either one. But uh, what a day it has turned out to be. Let's take a look at the bracket really quickly. Just kind of revise our memories of how this all went down. a &R had a flying performance in the upper stages of the brackets. And I already dropped that singular set the foot esports and that was also a very exciting match as well to watch for me uh you know for, for you know Zeta division it's been pretty smooth sailing until that semi-final stages against reply totem that big three two there so now we've got our grand finals set it's a and r versus zeta division and that is our next match to come up let's take a look at our predictions i mean guys in the semi-finals one you know you you, you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take right so i kind of went in there for third didn't pay off nonetheless but uh you know ted he just to bring things back around for circle did say before any of the predictions started today that a and were going to take it all the way i think trav you might be taking away your crown as the predictions master if you ask me that's just not factual at all like i think i think you'll find rawsales.com a and r was submitted before bsc stream even started and i'm feeling good about how i am yes i might have had you know zeta division against them in the finals and i went to reply to him on the stream but we don't talk about that because they lost anyway yeah, it's all, right. all I'm hearing is excuses, excuses, Teddy. Well, let's line up our matchup then. It's going to be, again, a &R up against Zeta Division. Let's first start with a &R. What a fly performance this team have honestly had, Teddy. You know, looking from their journey so far this year, Rama, Mavis, and Nob have just been going from strength to strength. And, and some may see them as the underdog. They are not that to me, Teddy. They are the big dogs in this grand final. Yeah, to me, I mean, I, I said it a week ago when I recorded the video. It, 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 I, can, I can show proof, Trev. I can show proof. I said it a week ago, in our <laughs> winning this monthly final. Now, I might just jinx it now, but even if they don't, like making it to the grand finals and, and eventually looking at, at minimum a second place, I still think is an amazing achievement for this roster. And they've impressed me so much so far this year. And I would even dare to say they might be the best team in the region. I genuinely would be one to tend to agree with that at the moment. They've just been coming out on top in every circumstance that they face in tournaments. And again, you know, I, I've got to say, you know, they are looking to me like the better team in this situation. But Zeta are the current reigning monthly final champions. That cannot be denied. They had a phenomenal performance last month in February, looking to do the same for Marge, Gero, Naoi, and Meow Trav. This is, at the moment, the team that are, you know, flying out in front in terms of points, but a and obviously are hot in pursuit. I mean, they are looking really, really strong. And obviously, you know, with a first and a, a worst, a second place position this month, 
they're looking even better than ever. Like, their, their position on, on this region is just so, so good. But I will say, I'm going to have to third what you said. I think A&R might be the best team in the region at this point. We saw them in Snapdragon Pro Series. We saw them in other competitions. And I just don't know if Zeta Division have got what it takes. Yes, they've just taken on Reply Totem. So it's really, really weird to say this. But I don't know if they've got what it takes to bring down a &R. Well, back to the Zeta Division boot camp. And again... And so still wearing the Shatampo jersey that he was wearing earlier. Has yet to remove it. And uh, showing some love, of course, to the regions around the world. How but, does that fit you know, him? Again, it's... I, I mean, yeah, that is a really valid point, to be fair, because Shatampo plays on, on a pretty big <laughs> box to be able to get the, the height diff that he needs to compete on the world stage. So, uh, yeah. And Inso is not a small guy, might I add. He is uh, towering over most. So, definitely been uh, doing his best to squeeze. And maybe that under, you know, sort of uh, garment that he's wearing is designed to kind of suck him in a little bit, in all honesty. <laughs> but, nonetheless, definitely playing the key role in the Zeta Division unit today in terms of the drafting telly. That's what I kind of observed from the sidelines was that, uh, for the most part, Zeta are just kind of keeping things quite traditional in the way that they do, but playing it kind of a bit safer than most, and it is paying off for the most part so far. Yeah, in my opinion, kind of what I said earlier as well is, I think Zeta are good, right? I think they're really good. I mean, they won the first monthly final, right? Uh, but I do feel like they're not necessarily the most dominant team in the region. I just think they do really well against Reply Totem, and then they, they do, you know, all right against other top teams. It, it's just, you know I mean? It's not like Totem last year that were dominant against every team. I feel like Zeta is pretty good against every team, and then somehow against Reply Totem, they just beat them every time. And I don't know if that's going to be enough here to take down ANR, really. I mean, they might prove us completely wrong in the following three to five sets, but I feel like ANR, to me, are the favorites coming into this one. Yeah, Trev, the way that I've kind of watched this go, go down over the past month for me is that A&R have just kind of stepped up their game a little bit from what we saw previously to last month. Zeta, last month, looked absolutely on top form. And, like, I just feel like they've dropped down just a little tiny bit. But uh, not to take anything away from them, of course, but A&R have just kind of stepped on the gas and have really made a leaps and bounds from, from February's performance. I also think the same, you know, it's weird to say after they've just beaten Reply Totem that they've stepped down, but let's not forget last month they swept them, and this month it was a very, very close double match point. So, I mean, Zeta Division, they've definitely not done as well as last month, just in terms of score lines, that is on the table, 100%. But A&R, from where they were last month to where they are now, is undoubtedly a much, much better team. Yeah, and again, you know, you both, you know, yourself and Teddy were with me for the uh, Snapdragon Pro Series. Watching A&R stay in that upper bracket from the entire duration of what was effectively two weeks, four show days of uh, performance, Teddy. Um, you know, that's not an easy thing to, to do in any shape or form. And they have been able to just knock down every boundary that's been standing in the way. You know, what can Zeta bring out of the pocket here to shut them down? Because they've got some serious momentum behind them now. Yeah, I, I think that draft-wise, Aenor like to keep it rather safe. So I'd like maybe for, for Zeta to try to use that pred predictability to their advantage and maybe uh, find s some weaknesses here and, and there that have been systemic in ANR's approach to draft. That is what I think they could do the best because mechanics-wise, I think ANR are a, a better mechanical team than Zeta. So really, for me, the draft is where Zeta Division can make the di biggest difference and try to really uh, build a big advantage if they came in well-prepared for this matchup. I think you raised a really valid point there for me because a and are just so twitchy when it comes to their thumbs. Uh, they like a lot of those speedier comps, those more aggressive ideas, and that can overthrow quite quickly. So yeah, I think that Zeta absolutely need to take a, a really good handle on this draft and you know, look ahead to try to pick those uh, those holes in A&R, Trav. I mean, th this is what it all comes down to in this region. It's become so competitive. This is, in my opinion, the most you know, competitive year that we've had for EMEA. You, know, you look at how many teams have not even made it to monthly finals now. You know, this month, Navi, SK Gaming, and you know, Humble. Who's it going to be next month? There's too many teams to squeeze in. But as we line up our next match, our final match for the day, is our grand finals. It's A&R versus Zeta Division. Trav, we're going to come back to you the end me and Teddy are gonna take the reins is 27 percent over at events.brawlstars.com in favor of a and r the 73 the majority signing here teddy with zeta division yeah i, th I think people 
just, you know, didn't quite watch my predictions guide for the EMEA uh, monthly finals of March. If they well, did, well, they you are the predictions master, Teddy, uh, so I'm hoping that they would. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, Zeta are still Zeta, and they still have a very good chance at taking this one. I would say it's a 45-55 or something along those lines. And I'm being quite nice towards towards Zeta here. I, when I said 45, I meant 45 for Zeta, right? Uh, it could be a 40-60 maybe in favor of uh, a &R, but it's going to be a close call either way. And the, the first pick of Max on the side of a &R is already exactly what I want to see from them. Yeah, this is very straightforward a &R, just getting in there early with that Max pick and kind of would have liked to have seen maybe that banned out by Zeta for the same reason, but... I think the penalty ban is wise for them. Going with a Sandy as well is a very underrated one still, but one that we've seen coming really to full front now in terms of the meta. And it's one that people are not banning yet. That, that's the thing that I've noticed a lot about Sandy, but that basic attack damage increased the buff going from 860 to now 900 damage. It has just brought Sandy into a much more viable place. And as we saw earlier with Reply Totem, who are kind of the team that have been playing it the most in terms of play rates, just that one Sandstorm can bring back an advantage. Otis now to follow up. And now back to AR for the draft. And you know, they're going to be a bit concerned about the potential of some tankier ideas here. You know, with Zeta with that final pick, they can turn a surprise if they haven't got uh, a response and answer for it. So I want to see something that kind of shows some awareness to it, some preparation for it, because at the moment they haven't really got a counter for it. Spike coming in next then. For AR, and again, that was pretty much in line with my thought process. Also, making sure they've got something to uh, have in the back pocket in the eventuality that Zeta's bring out a Sam or an Ash as those final moment picks, but still uh, aggressive options still available. There's Stu Lane uh, potentially there as well, and I think it's a bit risky to go over tank. They've got to have something to accompany those other side lanes ready. Yeah, I I, I kind of like the Otis, uh, to be honest. Or not. The Ash is <laughs> Yeah, I w <laughs> Well, here's the thing. On paper, it deals quite nicely with the Ash, right? But the Mute, say there are rats in the mix, is just not going to be an option in the first place. And even if you do manage to, to mute the Ash, usually he has enough range to kind of just fall back a little bit and then heal back up and then come back into the mix and he lost five seconds and you have an Ash full HP facing you again, you know what I mean? So... <laughs> So I don't know if it's going to be enough. That's what scares me a little bit. But they will go for Pam as their final pick, which is uh, an interesting approach. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be their mid, which Pam mid on Hard Rock Mine, it feels like a little bit of a throwback to me. Yeah, I I'm kind of surprised to have it not be 8-bit. 8-bit's a fantastic mid. Um, I feel like with the Ash now looming over the sides of Zeta, they're going to have to be paying a lot of attention to whoever's playing that particular brawler because ultimately the Sandy's going to struggle a lot in that particular matchup. Sure, it can take care of a lot of the robotic rats relatively easily, but nonetheless, it's, uh, it's a very scary comp that a and here are running. I mean, they've got the speed, they've got the uh, really, really heavy HP takedown brawlers like Spike combining that with heavy HP on the Ash as well. It's... It's looking like a very scary comment. I'm curious to see how Zeta are going to start off here. Already a scrap sucker there from Garu, and it was a well-placed one of that. It was Rob who actually picked up the three gems, but not already pushing himself up deep into this top left-hand side pocket and eventually gets stunned down. Staying alive, though, somehow. Eventually, it is Meow who gets the takedown and much needed speed to get everyone moving on the right-hand side. That's an aggressive start from ANR. Let's say the division with an early Sandy Super, able still to find a lot of value and eventually a pickup as well onto Rama. Maybe this is actually gonna go for one of the gems. Not entirely sure if that was useful at all. But either way, it is Zeta with full on control of the mid now and sending up quite nicely. This knob is gonna be aggressive with the robotic rads. Garrow, low HP, ends up falling. Rama able to take a couple gems, but the poison will take him down. As Nob is able to still pull back with the gems, and the ANR are back to eight gems, but three of them are on Nob and five onto Mebius. Not exactly ideal considering they are the lane players and not the gem carriers. They'll still get a countdown started either way. 
Yeah, what great teamwork that really was. There's not going to be much that Zeta can really do to contest this situation. Not at all. I mean, they're not even moving. They know there's not enough time to go up the map. And what a great moment. I was a bit concerned that Noble had the gems because simply it's not the best brawler to have. You know, when it's the natural gems, he's not really a gem carrier, but ultimately was able to get the pickup just in the nick of time to be able to gain those gems away from the Osis. And that was a very, very solid start there from a &R. It's still early days. But this comp so far is looking the better of the two, in my opinion. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. Let's see if they can repeat that success. Getting into game number two. Let's see if I can hold their ground a bit firmer. As they did have the lead for the majority of the previous game. To a nice pump off from a &R to really turn things around. No way. Now he's going to be aggressive on the right side. He takes two players to pinch out, but eventually... Oh, he actually just ends up in their spawn. They'll take care of him at last. It took a very long time, and the lack of mid-presence meant that Nob struggled on the left in his own 1v2, and Garrow was free to just roam around the mid, pick up five gems, make it six now in favor of Zeta Division. Yeah, it's doing fantastically well. He's pushed back now on the right-hand side, but did have a and in a really difficult conundrum to get out of this spawn side. Seven gems now to eight in the pocket for Garu. Just trying to keep Nob suppressed and aware of him. Pretty sure the vision gear being ran by that Garu is the right way to go for it to keep the uh, awareness of it. Can they, though, get this takedown of Nob? Maybe it's pushing forwards really deep here as well. It's pretty good defensive work in all. Sirius is here from Zeta. Now he's so low as well. The healing station coming in clutch. Can they get his final gem? Can they get out to countdown? Or will a &R start to claw this one back? Push now. Yeah, Rubber's got to go into the mid. Gets the gem. Face shifts out. That's the right play to make. The pressure is still on as Zeta are really getting close now to the match point. A beautiful mute onto Rama. Just slows things down. Reduce the pressure a little bit. Nob is aggressive, nearly takes down Garo, but not quite able to close out that kill just yet. And it seems like he's gonna be the one falling instead and or have brought it back to eight gems for themselves. Garo is able to find number 10 as it spawns literally right below his feet. 12 seconds left. And ANR, they need to stand in the mid for just a little bit longer, find the next gem. But it's going to be challenging. It doesn't spawn on their side. They do get it just about in the nick of time. And that is still going to be 10 10 now as Mebius is able to somehow find the gems. A slow one to Garrow. Mebius might have single handedly won them the game, but Garrow still manages to live on. Doesn't mean that he needs to fall back. And now AR in full control of the mid. What a reset. I mean, that is as close as it gets. And then to almost get the takedown of Garu, bring back the gems to make the steal. a and are doing it with seven seconds. The push is going to be now from Zay, so they can't stay firm in the mid anymore. And no one they're going to be able to make that happen. Oh my word, they have. It's 12 to 12. There's one still sitting there for a and They pick it up now. This is so back and forth, and I cannot call it. Oh, there's another gem that already spawned. So there is time here for Zeta Division to try to turn this one around. They'll get gem number 14. That means that gem 29, the final gem to spawn, spawns now and it spawns for Zeta Division to pick up. Now a &R, they will need a kill no matter what. All three players are carrying gems. Either one going down would be enough to interrupt the countdown, but it's not meant to be. And this 29 gem game is going the way of Zeta Division. What a game. I mean, how often do you see a first set go this way so quickly? It's neck and neck all the steps of the way here and still up for the taking. It's just unbelievable stuff, really. I mean, that, that's how sets end, not how they are moving on to the deciding phase of. But let's see now who gets the first upper hand, who wins their lane. Who gets that early utility that they need to enforce upon the opposition? Gary, there's a scrap circle there onto Rama. Not a bit out of position, but does their chop pop a chill pill to bring his health back up to scratch? Meanwhile, on the left, Meow is getting hit heavy there by Mabius. He's able to then force back on his position. So far, just both sides dancing it out. There's four gems in the pocket for AR. I've just got that early lead.
Yeah, even though Nock went down without finding a kill, he was able to create so much space for Rama to get that early lead. Garo is uh, equalizing the gem count now. Four gems for each side, and with his presence in the mid, might be able to extend it furthermore. Maybe it's using fertilize to his advantage, making sure that he remains healthy for as long as he can. Still, it's a one-for-one one trade, but with the current HP count, NR have to respect that and reset. Slow things down just a little bit before going back and going back aggressive as Nob picks up a nice pickup on the right-hand side. Rama pops speed and destroys the healing station. Nob looking for Garo and he's gonna find him. Yeah, he's gonna take those gems all the way back to the spawn, I think, at this rate. Still got the HP advantage, the fast blast is there from now, he will reset his healing, but nonetheless, he's away. 11 gems in the pocket. It's just Gary now against the might of the world here. a and R will take the first set. They fought hard for it. They got it. Beautifully done by a and R. And every time I see a smile on Rama's face, I start smiling myself. Because you can see the passion and the love that goes into it. a and R one set up. It was an incredibly close one. It really felt like it could have gone either way, but a and they had the upper hand for the most part, able to win that first game was a big steal. The second one was a steal as well, but they weren't the lead until then anyways. Uh, when I say the second one, the second one, day one, the second did go the way of Zeta. And even that one, a 29 gem game that ended the way it did. Just beautiful stuff across the board. Just a lot of fun just in this opening set. I love it when gem grab just causes that much drama early on. It just makes you aware that we're in for a bit of a treat, doesn't it, really? Beautiful stuff from both sides. I mean, it, it really, really was, but I just felt like a &R just had that little tiny bit of an edge. The comp, I felt, was just a bit more rounded in that respect, and just you can just see the way that they played it. I mean, maybe it's on that spike. I mean, the amount of survivability that he showed with that first life star power was immense. So much DPS across the board, let's be honest. It was now he was just ever so ahead on that front, but pretty even stats, not gonna lie. Eight kills for both Nob and Aoi. Six kills for both Garo and Mabius. Just that tiny differential between Rama and Meow, but oh my word. Uh, I mean, this is just so, so close to call. We're already in the first set, moving on to the second now. It's, 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 it's tough to not think that this could go all the way, Teddy. I'm hoping it does. I genuinely am. Golem Gulch is going to be up next here for some knockout action. And this might be a chance here for Zeta to slow things down a little bit. But, I mean, I, 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 I think ANR, they have no intentions on slowing things down. Looking how aggressive they were playing before. It's going to be a tick first pick on the side of Zeta. So, very much going for a, a safer, further up approach with uh, that tick pick. I don't mind it, I think Tick is very strong at the moment. I think uh, that it does decently as well on Gordon Gulch. Just don't really want to get to the very late stages because then it's a little bit scarier to bring in, in those sort of situations, in my opinion. Questioning a little bit the Sam Ban, actually, on the side of Zeta, if I'm honest, because if I remember correctly, Tilly, with me and yourself, the last time we saw it played, actually, was by uh, Navi in the Snapdragon Pro Series. And, you know, despite having, I think it was like about 200 supers for the, the entirety of the game, it didn't provide any value whatsoever to Gold on Gold, just a map. So clearly Zeta have got something in mind which they want to bring to the table, which the Sam could potentially contest, I assume. But I don't know whether that's the best use of the band myself. The picks, though, don't necessarily say the same story for me. They're pretty decent. Tick coming in for the control. Otis as well. The nanny to finalize things up. And that is a pick which definitely Zeta played very, very well. But I do like the way that a &R's comp as well is shaping up to be. Bonnie's we've seen time and time again, especially versus that Tick. It's going to have a wondrous time in that matchup, especially in the later stages. The shield from Gus. Spooky Boy definitely going to be bringing a lot to the table there as well to keep everyone's survivability in check. And the Sprout to add to that control, to be able to force themselves through the map and hopefully push back that tick and give themselves back a little bit more control along the way. I feel like for me, it's actually quite a balanced draft. Um, it's a bit of a tough one to call. I think Zetas can come down crumbling down harder, faster, but if a and play it slow, they've got a much better late game comp in my opinion. I prefer a and comp personally, and especially when we know what a capable of doing with Bonnie. 
uh, I, I feel like they're one of the teams that utilize it the best. And combining that now with a Gust Shield, which we didn't always see them do in the first place. They were happy to just play Bonnie on its own very often. Uh, I can see this being a big problem for, for Zeta to deal with. But either way, let's see how it plays down on the battlefield. As we jump in for set number two and it's going to be max range playing for tags on both sides for the early game. Well, both sides being very cautious in their approach, which I think is wise. You don't want to feed off anything too soon that you don't need to. But a bit more clustering on the side of A&R. We'll spread out our Zeta. It's working out pretty well. Nob now pushing himself forward just a little bit. The shots are duked pretty well. Gary down the bombs will be aware because maybe it's yeah, was considering to go in deep in that bottom right-hand side pocket. No supers on anyone's front at the moment, which just goes to show how much Awareness, both sides are showing for it, but now the people coming in. When it connect, Nob's low. He might go down, but a big miss there, big blunder. Now he misses, and Nob will finally go down there to the tick shots, but that could costly cause a problem here. Maybe it's will go down. It will be Zayt to take this first round, but a couple of mistakes there to iron out for the next one, for sure. Yeah, no super scared over either. It's going to be a bit of an ouch here for Anar. Zeta, do have a tick head. That will be available off the bat and it's quite a valuable one as well especially if there is a jump in from Mebius and he ends up going down immediately it's a one for one trade in the end but not will fall leaving things in a bit of an awkward situation but Rama should be going down is able to survive nevertheless it's a 1v2 and not an easy one to win yeah really little you can do in that scenario Zeta starting to gain back a little bit more control over the situation. And good for them. I mean, again, that first set of gem grab was so close to call. If you're just joining the stream, I mean, the scoreline at the moment is far from certain here as this could well be the sort of game mode that does cater more towards Zeta as well. So bear that in mind. Going back in though. Let's see if they choose to swap lanes or choose to stick. They're actually going to side on the same side of the map here. Definitely going to be a troublesome start. Maybe it's getting a couple of taps there, but the clustering is, for me, a little bit worrisome. But the takedown there in favor of Zeta will bring things back into order. And it feels like there's some overaggression from ANR getting punished again. Maybe losing patience a little bit or getting overexcited. And Zeta Division making sure to punish them for that. Two supers already at hand as well. They can nicely carry over to the next round. And this is uh, looking troublesome for ANR. Zeta Division are a round away from equalizing and taking away the advantage that ANR fought so hard to build up by taking Gem Grab. Oh, it's going to heal up here a little bit. Quite easy to do, but the tick is a problem. We'll be considering has got super as well. Tick head, of course, will come into play. Normally the later stages, unless Meow is getting pressured to do so, that mute as well. Gary's going to be holding on to that dear life, and he knows what an advantage you can bring in those later stages. But for me, a and I've got to push forward, and they are going to be doing that now. Maybe it's in the top. It does get the return to send it to the face, but nonetheless, did have to make a play. Pops the gadget peep coming in. Is it going to connect? Be coming back around the piloting here. Now he's in the testament, and he does get double value. Nob goes down with Mavis as well. Weak, what a great connection. What a disaster there. It would have been better if just one player tanked for it instead. They gotta play out this round as well and return to center here, locks in the kill. Maybe it's because of his jump. He's gonna go for it now, but he gets greeted by hell on earth as soon as he lands. And that means that it's gonna be Zeta to take this game, take this set with it, and even things out once at each. Wow, this is looking even more likely <laughs> to go all the way to that fifth and final set. We're certainly going to be going to a fourth, and that excites me greatly. But as we saw there, you know, they have got that resolve. They've got that ability to stay calm under the pressure. It's never easy in a grand final when you want to sit down. Sometimes that can just be the start of a downfall and escalated situation. But that was exactly how Zeta had to respond, and that they have. 
certainly that that was a strong strong showing from Zeta. They are looking very, very good in this set. And honestly, I thought the draft was on the side of ANR. But I think that even then, Zeta Division were able to very nicely adapt and prove me wrong. I'm finding so much value as well. I, I think if you compare just the, the Tick versus Sprout, the Tick was able to just cons consistently arrest them. And would you look at that? That is quite a depressing thing to look at if you are an ANR fan, fan. My goodness, zero kills and in total uh, something along the lines of 120 DPS for the entire team. That's less than Meow, both in kills and in DPS. That's a double edge trap, if I ever saw one. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, A&R there, which really didn't hit the mark, did they? In terms of the takedowns, pressure is one thing, but in knockout, takedowns are everything. And that's what Zeta brought to the table over them. And yeah, they will prefer to have just kind of like, you know, go GG, go next for this, uh, this set and try to put their stats out of their mind. And that's one advantage, I guess, you know, from being on the other side of the playing side is you don't necessarily have to dwell on statistics of your downfall you can just look straight ahead leave the past in the past and sneaky fields is where we're going next for brawl ball this could definitely be the set that turns things around a little bit more in anr's favor but zeta with that momentum of the back of knockout definitely going to be feeling a lot more better about the situation yeah, this draft has got to be important the bands are filled in this particular map carry so much weight and they are primo surge and m's for zeta m's spike and poker for a and r some very big ones there for me and, and absolutely on the money there's still a great deal of potential for some tanky brothers to come into the equation ash sam rosa nita i mean the, the, the list goes on and on when it comes to sneaky fields in all honesty yeah it kind of feels like zeta will want to go for a tanky approach right because primo is mainly used as a, as a way to counter other tanks as well like the Ash, like the Sam, and I'm betting out both Surge and M is also very much indicating that they want to go for something tanky. We'll see though, as Nita is going to be the first pick here for a and R. I I don't like Nita, uh, just in general. I, I like it in Heist with Hyper Bear against the safe. Besides that, I just don't really like it. Sometimes it works, but most of the time when I watch it, I just feel like it doesn't. So I, I think it's it, it's an interesting first pick, in my opinion but we'll see how Zeta Division react to it. I, I really like the need to first pick myself. Uh, I mean, it's just got such a heavy win rate in Brawl Ball and now Crow coming in for Zeta, not a bad one at all, but they do need to apply something of a tank counter or just a heavy counter. To some of the big HP Brawlers here, some big DPS be quite pleasantly welcomed, I feel. B's probably on the cards here as well, but the spike band's really smart from A&R, honestly. It's kind of like what you'd want to have in your back pocket for these kinds of games, but, you know, Rosa is going to be coming in. Yeah, I, I, I've seen this brawler coming back a bit more and more into Sticky Fields recently. The unfriendly Bush's gadget is just such a great way of scouting the bushes immediately. That's slow as well. You have some speed to hand. That's kind of where I'm thinking. Both sides have got to be considering this. You need a bit of a max to get everyone moving in and out of harm's way. If they don't pick it on the side of A&R, Zeta surely would snap that up in a heartbeat. Yeah, a little bit scared of this double slow comp from Zeta. It's quite scary because, I mean, just a Rosa is always a threat on Sneaky Fields, but when you have three other slows potentially from the Crow gadgets, it gives you a lot of opportunities to shine in. And are you gonna go Frank? which used to be a, a fairly common tank counter, but it's not really used that much at the moment, and I have no clue how well it's gonna be doing here. They've gotta counter this out, or choose to go with another tank, and I, I just don't know how I feel about that, if they were to consider doubling down on their odds. I, I mean, you, you have to be able to deal with this Frank, you know, that, that. Yeah, I feel you have to go Otis there. I mean, it's not, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I wouldn't be thinking, right, let's go with Frank on Sticky Pills. It can get some great results. It really can. But ultimately, there's definitely more favorable ideas there with what was banned. You know, Ash, Sam was still on the table. They went with Frank. Uh, the key there, realistically, for me on the side of a &R was getting the, the B in early so that they would be able to deprive it from Zeta. But 
you know, it's definitely a, a pick from the side of A&R that's got a lot of confidence behind it. You know, you, you don't go in with just a frank into sneaky fields unless you try and test it with it. But I do worry. Otis can suppress it out so, so easily and basically cycle off the back of it. So I am kind of going a little bit more on the Zeta side of this comp. I think I was more on the side of A&R until the, the Frank showed his face, but let's see how they can make this work. Well, so far it seems like it's going to be with a very, very cool, <laughs> um, in favor of Zeta. I hate Nina. I think Nina is terrible. It, again, it's there. It dies two seconds into the, the, the game. I hate Nina, okay? You heard it here. Uh, uh, first, I absolutely despise that brawl. I only like it on heist. As I said earlier, we are not on heist. Why is it here? Either way, it finds a very nice skill now, which should probably result in a goal for a &R. I just need to rant a little bit, you know, to uh, motivate Rama to prove me wrong, and he did exactly what I wanted, so rant over. Great to watch. That's like just you were just digging yourself that hole for, for all that entire moment. Oh, hilarious. I, I mean, personally, Nita here can get some great results. It just depends upon your opposition. You know, in the uh, monthly final qualifiers, I think you believe it was Foot versus uh, Humble. It was, uh, I think it was one of those two sides that were really aware to not feed into the Nita. And that's how you have to handle in, in this kind of situation. If they can just keep the distance from Rama and, and, and not feed into the Bruce Bear, it will help them out massively. But Nob is on an absolute tear on his left-hand side. They might not even need the help of that because Rama could just probably walk us through the amount of Frank stuns he keeps landing and he keeps going. Incredible stuff from Nob. Does not quite manage to get the follow-up, however. Now we low HP. It's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. Maybe just needs to be careful because Mel has to jump in, but not did respawn. He's able to defend this time around. Really would like to open up that right side as well, but Rosa is staying away from him, which is gonna be quite nice considering that in the open, she's a bit of a sitting duck and Mebius was able to take her out. A beautiful kill from Meow with that jump in. Is that gonna be enough here for Zeta to try to find any sort of opening over time is definitely gonna be challenging for both sides not entirely sure who it would be favoring to be honest it seems like knob is gonna go for another super finds the connection with it another stun now as well and this one will claim the kill but the poison will take him down as well and it looks like zeta should be able to slot this one in just before overtime kicks in and that means that zeta take the upper hand again so little was in that. I mean, just a couple of HP here or there to determine who was going to stay on their feet or not. I, I felt as well the way that Nob plays this Frank. I mean, they kind of deserve a bit of a win here or there in, in this set, at least somewhere along the lines, because he's getting so much value. His DPS at the end of this game is surely the statistics side is going to be through the roof at this rate. But this B pick really is holding the whole cop together for me on the side of A&R. As much as I know you hate the need to tell you, I feel like it does bring a lot of value with the ability to keep the heals rolling in. But look at this big, big push. Very much the same as what we saw in the previous game as Zayta don't hesitate to spend any time wasted to get a goal in 25 seconds. Yeah, it's as good as a start as the previous game was. The stun from Nob is going to miss. Nicely baited out by Naui. We'll get another, but... We don't have time to pump it. Meow with a jump in, and that might very much be the set already. The shield on the bear gonna be useless as this Nita pick is. And <laughs> and AR will be dropping the set. It's gonna be Zeta Division up 2-1 now in sets. Well, when the cards started falling down, they tumbled and escalated quickly. Zeta now are in a Prime spot. I mean, I mean, that is how quickly the tires can turn, honestly. I feel like A&R, when you compare how they were playing at the very beginning of that set, it just didn't look the same towards the end as they started to maybe doubt themselves a bit more or just kind of uh, underestimate the uh, the might of the Zeta comp because it is a really scary thing. I think Rosa now, for me, kind of got to be a, a go-to ban in, in Sticky Fields because just simply that slowdown is very, very forgotten now as we haven't seen Sticky Fields for quite a while in the competitive map pool. When it comes in and just is able to do things like that, you can just win your lane so, so incredibly quickly. But 
This is now scary for A&R and what's turned into a really great day in set one is starting to trickle away from them. If they're not careful, this has to go all the way for them to the fifth and final set. If they're going to be able to claw something back and take the month of March. Zeta looking to extend things more so into having back-to-back -back wins in the BSC of 2023. And they are surely feeling good about their performance so far today. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking at A&R, and you mentioned the DPS from Nob, it's definitely by far the highest out of anyone, but he did feed off so much uh, from, from his uh, interactions against the Rosa. I, I think it was just a, an interesting draft from a &R. I didn't mind the Frank nearly as much as I minded Anita personally. Uh, but let's see if their draft can be just a little bit more on point. Maybe this fourth set can be theirs and we can go all the way to a final uh, fifth set to set both teams apart. I do think that they deserve some praise for, you know, bringing Anita and a Frank on sneaky fields in a grand final. I mean, especially uh, as players that haven't, you know, really won any monthly finals before besides Alex. It, you got to have some sort of confidence to make that happen. And I will appreciate that. I'm kind of surprised. I think Anita is quite a common pick on sneaky fields, in honesty, like in terms of I the pick rates. I, I mean, hate it. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't like it. <laughs> That's what I'm sensing, Teddy. Definitely, definitely not one for Nita. Oh, I'll make a note. I'll make a note. Shooting Beatles <laughs> up next, then for Hot Zone. And this is where Zeta are looking to close it out. Hopefully, no Nitas on their side. <laughs> I'll stop. Uh, but uh, certainly, surely some mech bands here or there have got to be on the cards. Poker as well. Long range ideas. Collect I can have moments in this particular map too. So that's worthy to consider. But. Definitely Penny's gonna be up there. So Meg, yeah, Crow, Penny for Zeta, Sam, Squeak, and Carl for AR. Let's see what the first son of a brewer is on the side of AR who won the coin toss. Stu is gonna be our first pick here for the side of AR. And it's a brawl I do like here. Matches nicely with uh, their way of thinking. Very aggressive brawler, and that's usually the playstyle they would prefer. Say that division is better than Mag, which I think here is an absolute threat. Same for the Crow, so I do like their bands a bit more, to be honest. But it makes sense considering NR had the first pick to remove those very strong options and NR focusing more on banning the best last picks. As Meow is going to be locking in the Gus for Zeta division. Still in a pretty good place overall. Not as good as it once was, but it can still find a lot of value, especially if you combine it with some more aggressive brawlers. The shield can really come in clutch. Janet is going to be paired with it. Not necessarily my favorite, but it is uh, one of the maps where I like it the most uh, compared to how many Janets we've seen today on maps where I don't necessarily like the brawler pick. I feel like it, uh, it does quite all right on dueling beetles, so I'm not going to be disappointed there. Definitely lacks some hard-hitting utility, though, for Zeta so far. I do like the stew here from A&R. Keep everyone moving, and it's just got a bit more of an aggressive taste to it. Pam going to come in, which will be very much appreciated, in my opinion. Wouldn't mind to see even a poker double down on the heels myself, but going over the bell, having a bit more lane control, and hopefully some shots to bounce between the situation. But for Zeta so far, I feel like this comp is definitely safe in their hands. They can definitely make it work, and Gus still move, moving anywhere in terms of the meta, staying very, very firmly put, and I don't mind it. But I just, I just, I prefer the way that A&R's comp is going to play out. It's going to be a bit more enjoyable to the eye. Let's see what their third and final pick coming in now will be to finalize this off. But it's going to be Lola. Yeah, that's going to be tough. I mean, it is picking ultimately Lola into Bell, and that's never a great thing to do, but. I mean, it does have pretty decent matchups against everything else. So I don't mind it necessarily at all. I think Lola's not a bad shout to have at all, but I just like the a &R comp. I would like them to win this set just simply to see this go to the fifth and final. Yeah, same. And also because I like my predictions to be right, to be honest. Uh, but well, that's it. you are the predictions I, master, so you know exactly. That is true. I have I've got one wrong today, though. I'm a little bit disappointed, <laughs> but. Everything is good. Everything is good. 
Uh, looking at the draft, so I do personally prefer Zetas just a little bit. I like the ideas from ANR2, don't get me wrong. The double uh, uh, spawnable setup as well with uh, both speed zone and the healing station I think can be very, very strong. But getting to that situation can be a little bit scary as well. We'll just see how it plays out here. So far, so good for ANR as Nob is finding so many great connections on the left side. He does end up being taken very low HP and Meow finds a nice pickup onto Ram. And now suddenly Zeta Division are uh, going to be able to build a little bit of a lead with that good early start. Oh, speeds are down now, but Gary does pull the nest egg, and that's going to be the role. We'll pick up the scraps on that one. A very swift takedown there after they drop the base, and Meow, very, very close to going down himself. Nup comes in, and now this is where that Lola pick is going to thrive at the back of the ego pop, but when those gadgets deplete and there's nothing left, Nob is going to be able to surely get a much more favorable transaction there. Now he's marked as well. It's exactly what you want to be doing on that right-hand side lane if you're Nob. So... I like the way they're playing it. It's very, very close in terms of the scoreline, though, and AR have got to start to play this. Yeah, the utility has got to go down, but look at how many marks they are placing. The accuracy is pinpoint precision here from AR. Yeah, very nice shots from Nob. He's been playing fantastically so far this game. They will be able to take over the lead again, only by a couple of percentages. They still need to be very careful about how they approach this. Healing station is so useful though. Every tag that Meow connects, Rama doesn't even really need to carry. He'll heal up quicker than he takes damage. And if not quicker, at least it will definitely extend his state down in the mid. Ego, not really gonna find any value. A bit of a missed opportunity, I think, there from Naui as he is low HP himself. And Meow will have a super. So if he doesn't really wanna leave the zone, he's gonna pop it either way. But that instantly creates a huge weakness in the mid here for Zeta Division and ANR now a couple percentages away from taking this game. Oh, I love that placement there from Mavis. Just going super aggressive there with the healing station and the moment squeeze now. Just 1% there remaining for them. And they will seal it. Lovely stuff. And now we have got a match. We really do. It is starting to get a bit more even out. It's not Zeta looking as strong in this fourth set as they were previously, so an opening door potential here for ANR to bring this one back and rein things in. We're going into the match now, and this is really make or break now for them. They've got to get a good start and land these shots as they were previously because, as they know, Zeta have got really great utility to hand. They've been looking to exacerbate a lot of it early on as they did previously. They've got to try to draw that out as quickly as they possibly can. Ramos has been dancing around this whole entire game, but now pretty low and gonna go down to Meow. Let's drop the base. Nob and Mavis will be staying firm here, but the positioning control very much with Zeta in these early moments. Nice gadget from Garrett, getting Mavis low HP. The ego there from Naui goes down pretty much as soon as he placed it. Now he's very low HP again. Rama trying to get out of there is able to do so successfully. And Art kicks things off with a pretty nice lead. A healing station now as well. And it's been such a big problem for Zeta Division to try to deal with that healing station. And so far, I feel like that's the biggest problem of that Lola pick. It was their last pick. And that should have been something to deal with the healing station because so far, as soon as it's placed down, it's just such a nightmare for them to take care of it. Well, gadget pop there from Mabius. It's getting so much value. And again, another aggressive healing station, but quickly and swiftly taken care of by Zeta. Now he low, Meow low as well, but will they be able to stay standing in these moments because that mark is going to be crucial now. Meow takes the skies and Nob does go down. Meow somehow is getting so many taps. Rama 715 HP and a dream trying to heal himself up with the back of the gas to heal and doing so magnificently well. He's still juking it, allowing Nob and Mavis to come back in. And 71% was captured over that period of time. Great delay strategy, but now Zeta got complete mid control. All three players on their feet. So what is a crucial moment? They're now even out 71% on each side. And who is going to take this game? Yeah, potentially a bit of a fumble there as well with Mavius using his healing station when nobody was really there to capitalize from it. 
Yarrow with some great jukes and some great connections from Zeta Division. They'll take this one, and that means that now they have a match point in their hands. Zeta, a single game away from taking this match. What a turning point. I thought that that was going to be a set sweep in all honesty for A&R, a and R, but let's see how they respond. This is going to put them to the test now because Zeta have been in these positions before many a time over, and they know how to handle the pressure of the situation and get it tied up. But as we go in, speed zone down early there for Rama. We're connecting shots from Nob on the left. Maybe it's just trying to whittle down Naoi a little bit, but it's Rama who's the weakest of everyone. Has got the gas to heal, but 120 HP. Needs to be a little bit, a little bit more reserveful there. Take down off the drop the base is important, but they've lost control on the side of AR and Zeta now are in a commanding position with 20% of a lead. Yeah, nice gadget found by Garrow. Pretty much gonna be a free kill there and make it a double. What a terrific start here for Zeta Division. AR so far don't really have an answer. Healing station gonna be placed down. Some good damage onto Meow, but he's able to just fall back and heal back up. Now he was the ego enough to create so much space so much pressure zeta already past 60 percent captured and anr have got so much catching up to do great way to set from rama to pick up the kill because meow would have been staying there but a lot of catching up to do, like you say they've got to keep this positioning power get it low now great from rama he's playing out of his mind at the moment he does not want to be going home at this stage they've come so far not trying to get the taps into the ego there to put pleasure onto now, what a great turnaround this is turning to be, but one slip will prove to be potentially the downfall here of a and as Meow pushing forwards now. Big shots bouncing between both Naoi and Gero and everyone on the side, but oh, what a kooky pop that was from Gero. It's 80% lead now for Zeta, and what a world of confidence they've got now. 10% to go. Surely this is it, Teddy. Yeah, this is their chance to close it out, and with only Nob left alive, they'll do just that. Zeta Division will be winning not only the first, but now also the second monthly final of the year and the smile on the player's face, including Enzo as well behind their coach, says it all as Zeta Division will be locking in the February and the March monthly final victories. And Rama still seems pretty happy after all. I think he knows how much it means to just get this second place because we'll see it later on, but I'm sure this is quite big for the leaderboards as well. I'm just going to bring things back around there to that smile from Rob, because it was almost a year ago to the day that he went face to face with Tribe Gaming EU and went to match point, match point. That would have been his first monthly final win of his you know, career. And a year later, and it comes to that stage of the competition, but he can then still smile at the end of it. I think it just displays such incredible competitive you know, spirit. We don't see that too often. It's normally all doom and gloom, but he's still smiling at the end. And I, I've got to shout that out because that is truly commendable. Not to take anything away from Zeta at all. Far already deserved, absolutely so. Absolutely smashing it this year. They are the team to beat in this region. But nonetheless, to come that close a year later and still leave with a smile, that says a lot to me. To his old teammates as well, robbing him of this yeah. uh, monthly final. Uh, and I don't think they left in bad turns, but I would assume that he would have liked to sign with Zeta as well. Wasn't included in that deal, but he still managed to have a phenomenal performance today in Zeta Division. They will still be the better team today, but I am so excited to see the development for ANR for the rest of the year. As to me, they are the team that has shown the most potential so far in this region in 2023. I mean, I will take the MVP that you voted for at an event, not brawlstars.com. And again, what a day has been for Zeta. Far already deserved. Again, just going from strength to strength, really, aren't they? And despite that semi-finals moment, it was getting a little bit tense, let's be honest, against uh, Reply System for them earlier today. But against a and towards the end, they just started to really iron out everything. Looked a lot, lot stronger. Going to bring back in Trav now as well from the sidelines and get his thoughts on what just went down in that grand final. I mean, genuinely, as you said, you know, I feel so, so bad for a &R, especially with the run they've had today. But Zeta Division, they honestly, honestly, honestly 
deserve the absolute world. They've won two in a row now. Had a bit of a tough uh, tough time in some third-party competitions this month. But as I said, when we were just getting into their first game in the quarterfinals, they seem to always show up for BSC. And that's what matters. You know, I just want to touch on what you said as well, because we had an interview with Rama on, in Snapdragon Pro Series. Generally, might be the nicest guy in the community. And, you know, all these good results that A&R seems to be getting, no one deserves it more. I absolutely second that, and I'm sure Teddy will third that also, Trevor. Let's take a look at the bracket as well to revise ourselves and how today all went down. A&R with a flying performance, let's be honest, only dropping that singular set until the grand finals, where, of course, they met with Zeta, and that's where we've just come off the back of. And Zeta, you know, let's be honest, against Emma Fantasy, were not really put to the test too much, but different story with Reply Totem all over, taking it all the way to match point, match point, where they just managed to scave it through and you know i've got to say honorable shout outs especially for foot esports who just couldn't quite make it to the grand final here today and already did put them to the test in that semi-final stage but mr dosar as well despite that being a 3-1 they were the first team to get that first set under the bag and it could have been a different story as well but reply to them looked very good today they'll probably be looking back and reflecting a little bit upon not making the grand finals but i'm sure no doubt we'll be seeing them again next month and moving on to the predictions and i'm sure travel have a lot to say about this one but I, I, i'm gonna swing it towards teddy because teddy you put out your predictions earlier this week onto the uh, social media side of things and uh you know you came very close to being completely correct on all accounts let's be honest yeah i'm a little bit i'm a little bit sad to be honest because like not it, sometimes you predict what your heart also wants to predict you know what i mean like your your predictions are also what you hope for and we nearly got exactly what i would have loved to see for this monthly final just not quite but zeta division they still massively de deserve this victory so i couldn't be happier for them and again i'm so excited for anr and how far they even got today in the first place i was scared they would lose to bhs in the first round and then the entirety of my predictions would have been wrong so i'll still take it very much so <laughs> I can, I can tell that Trump's biting his tongue. I'll, I'll come back to you about your predictions later, Trump. Don't you worry, mate. Uh, maybe you can talk us through the regional leaderboard, though, in the meantime. Well, sitting in the top three spots, who, if Worlds was tomorrow, would be going. Zeta Division, Reply Totem, and ANR. Zeta Division with a massive, massive lead now, uh, about, about an 80 point lead, so it's huge for them. And after that, now or never down there in fourth place, sitting nice and tight over there. Mr. Dozer down in uh, in fifth, sixth, Ammo Fantasy, Footy Sports in seventh, and then Team K, so just narrowly missing out on these uh, last chance qualifier spots down in eighth. Uh, and multiple, multiple more teams like SK Gaming and Navi, who aren't even appearing on this leaderboard, still have a lot to say this year as well. It really does blow my mind, doesn't it? I mean, to think of that, you know, the fact that SK not there, you know, Navi, Team Kesso, Humble, there, there, there are so many teams that we're not even seeing so far on the regional leaderboards because that's just how competitive things are in this particular region. But my goodness me, Trav, go back to your predictions. I'll let you get a word in. Do you still think yourself as the uh, predictions master? I would consider myself like, yes. Maybe if someone had done better than me today, then they would have taken taken the title. But I think five out of seven, in terms of predictions for a region like EMEA, is pretty solid. Yeah, uh, clearly you have one, I guess, sometimes. But, uh, you know, hey, that's the way it goes. Teddy, uh, you know, give us your thoughts on this region as a whole. You know, we watched this competition now over the past two months. How have, have things been shaping up for you? You know, what is the team to be? I mean, Zeta are primarily looking to be, like, in that sort of title, right? But there are so many teams that I think might be able to topple them in the long run. So where do you see this region kind of going from here? It's very tough to say. To be honest, this start of the year has been very erratic and, and very chaotic, uh, to be completely honest. But out of the two first months, there's been one constant, and that's Zeta Division winning the monthly finals. So, so far, as much as there's been, you know, some of the teams that historically were the best in the region, some of the players that were the best in the region, they didn't manage to qualify. Zeta, they've won both monthly finals. So, um, yeah, maybe I should give them a little bit more respect for that as well. Uh, because I, I said earlier that to me, they, they were not the best team, uh, but they might just be because, yeah, they are winning the matches that really matter and they're the ones looking at the most points out of any team in the MEA region when it comes to qualifying for Worlds.
Yeah, and I've got to extend a similar question to yourself, Trav, because ultimately, you know, looking at the way that this leaderboard is shaping up to be, it seems like Esker that haven't actually qualified for a single monthly final yet now run the risk, a big risk, in fact, of if they don't get qualified for the next month to come, they might be out of the running entirely, completely. We've got six months of monthly finals this year. That's actually not that many. So, you know, kind of where do you see things going from here? Do you see teams like SK, like, you know, Navi, really rising to the plate? Or are they just kind of now you know, at a point where they're in a bit of a rut and might be falling off as before any, uh, our very eyes? I mean, it's really, really is tough to say with, with all the competition that goes on and the, the longer they wait and, you know, if they're not able to get these results, the longer they wait to make roster changes, the harder the roster changes are going to be. Because if, if you want to pick up someone like Lenane, he's going to have a load of points on his roster. Why would he leave that for a team who uh, who doesn't have any points whatsoever because you're not qualifying? The earlier you can do these roster changes, if your teams aren't making the big moves, the better. But I think at the end of the day, you know, there's always a chance of them coming back. Like, especially SK, Navi, Team Queso, big teams like this who have the biggest names in Brawl Stars, you can never count them out. Very well said, got to say. Well, guys, that is going to wrap up the EMEA Region 4 today, but we are back tomorrow uh, for the conclusion of the SA Monthly Finals for March, starting at 3 p.m. UTC. I could be wrong, but I believe there might be a time change overnight as well if you're a European base. So just bear that one in mind also. But 3 p.m. UTC for the SA Monthly Finals of March. Before we close out the day, Trav, any final words from yourself? Honestly, massive big shout out to Zeta Vision once again for being able to take down not one but two monthly finals now as well. And a, a huge commiserations to AR uh, and Foot and Reply Totem, especially for, uh, for, for being able to give us some great games today, semi finals onwards. Well said. And Teddy, anything from yourself before we start out today? Well, uh, again, you know, big shout out to everyone that makes uh, this show possible and, and to the teams as well for, again, providing us with an incredible uh, show and some really amazing moments uh, uh, through in and throughout the day. And yeah, I'm looking forward to next month. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, congratulations to Zeta Division and a big thank you again to all the teams, all the players, all the organizations as well. The, the music at home as well in the Twitch chat. A massive shout out to you guys too. And for Esports Engine in the background, along with Supercell for putting this show on for us all to enjoy. We would not be here without all those people in the background working tirelessly. And that time again for tomorrow for the SA Monthly Finals for March is 3 p.m. UTC. We'll see you then. Until then, goodbye for now. So far, so good for now and ever. But continue the aggressiveness here. OPE with a chance here, but great work from Lu from Luki. But oh, he's self defending. Really? This one is just all out domination from Zeta Vision. Looping round that pipe is going to have to get the jump away. Does avoid it, but actually goes down anyway. So it doesn't matter. Gene pulls there. Still got this extremely good soup for armor when it starts to close down the gas pinches in, but we might not get to that at this point. There's Nob, he sealed him in. He's throwing out two shots, three shots on the connection. A and R are going to win it. Reply to them on, giving up just yet. However, that kill should very much settle it. They get in range, they get the connection, and Zeta Division are going to the grand final. Pops the gas, they keep coming in. Is it going to connect? They'll be coming back around. The piloting here now is the testament, and he does get double value. 80% lead now for Zeta, and what? A world of confidence they've got now. 10% to go. Surely this is it, Teddy. Yeah, this is their chance to close it out. And with only Nob left alive, they'll do just that. Say that the Vision will be winning not only the first, but now also the second monthly final of the year.